watching Poindexter Lounge. You already know. You're watching Poindexter Lounge for the unity. And now I'll make the point better. This joint's clever in the lounge with Poindexter. So Poindexter Lounge, you know that we can get it in. And now I'm headed up like I'm Led Zeppelin. Are you kidding me? I've been muted that whole time, right? <laughs> Cyline, you're funny. You're funny. You're funny. Okay. Can can you hear me now?
That's awesome. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Uh, okay. So as I was saying before, uh, we have a contest going where you can submit your ideas for an emoticon. Everyone who's a member of the channel can, uh, uh, can use these emoticons during the, uh, the live streams. You all know that. And, uh, so what we have here for you is an opportunity that if you would like to send us some artwork, we'd love to, uh, consider your artwork for, cause we have a spot for two new emoticons. So I want to give you guys a chance to uh, do that as members and as, uh, people here at the at part of the community. And so all you have to do is submit that to, uh, 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 Poindexterlounge at gmail.com. Just poindexterlounge at gmail.com. It does have to be square and it has to be under a meg in size. All right. So that's that. That's real quick. And then, like I said, with this, this is our giveaway that we're doing. We'll give one of these away on Wednesday night. Uh, so uh, be looking for that uh, because uh, Wednesday night we'll give one of these great Victor Koo posters away. H Bart's got one uh, and that will be going out tomorrow as long as well as uh, a bunch of. Uh, of other things, right? So, um, you know, yep. You guys, you guys know the shtick. If you're a nerd, blah, 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 blah. You're all good. <laughs> Just do a cover of the sound of silence. That's, that's what it is. That's what it really, really is. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Um, so real quick, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because, uh, it, it just really doesn't warrant a bunch of time. Uh, but I do want to say just a couple of things right off the uh the top here uh obviously it's been kind of a, a crazy couple of days here at the channel uh you know we had a, a crazy stream last night uh but you know I, I just want to first of all say thank you to all of you who support the channel thank you to all of you who support me and you know me and you get me and that's why you're here and i'm grateful to all of you and you know what it's all right we got our place this is a place for nerds this is a place for you and me um, and so, uh, just a couple things though, off the bat, and this is all I will say about this. And then we'll, we'll move on into our format for tonight, uh, which is a call in show. So, uh, the link is in the chat. It should be a pinned, uh, link there in the chat. And, uh, all you have to do is follow that link and you can come in here and we can have a conversation and I would love to have a conversation with you tonight. Uh, so, uh, make sure that you try to get in, uh, uh, as soon as you can, uh, because uh, once we start getting, you know, a lot of people in, we kind of know where our night's going, you know, and uh, I want to make sure that uh, everybody has uh, some time uh, for sure to be able to talk about whatever you want to talk about. This is your night to be able to talk about whatever you want to talk about. And that's that's a kind of a cool opportunity. And uh, and, uh, you know, I like doing that. Uh, let's see. Uh, H Barts with two dollars. Super chat. Thank you, H Barts. Uh, <laughs> I love H Bart's uh, mentioned to uh, me and Matt Jarbo again today that uh, <laughs> his bank keeps calling. Him. He gives so many super chats, uh, which is which is great. And I, it's greatly appreciated, obviously, but uh, gives so many super chats that uh, his. Um, uh, uh, his bank keeps calling him thinking that, you know, there's suspicious activity. So uh, it's kind of funny, uh, but uh Yes, H Bart's with a two dollar super chat. Can't wait to get it. He says I'll be in the poster. Uh, I can't wait to send it to you, man, for sure. I can't wait to send it to you, and uh, and I hope that you enjoy it, and uh, that you have a good spot for it, and uh, I hope that it becomes one of those items, just like my Boba Fett's, that uh, you never risk. No way. I will give you all my Star Wars guys if it is. Wait, wait, wait. Except Boba Fett. No matter how sure I am, I never risk the Fett man. That's right. Never risk the fet man for sure. Uh, H bars with another five dollars super chat. Thank you so much. Says uh, you being muted. Thought my new work speaker broke. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Well, um, no, we're working. It's working. Hopefully, everything's working, and uh, and we're good. Larry Bird for three from downtown. All right. Um, like I said, uh, yes, it, it was a it was a crazy. Uh, <laughs> Crazy uh, weekend for sure. Stuff happened that we'd never thought would happen here. And uh, you know what? Sometimes stuff happens. You have these events. You have things that happen. Kind of, you know, stirs things up. And then the, then the, the the room has to settle. The dust has to settle. And that's and that's where we're at. Um, 
I, like I said, I thank you all for your, for your support. You guys are, are awesome to me and you guys are just an awesome community. Uh, and, and, you know, the thing is, I know there's a lot of people who are upset. Look, when, when, when Jeremy and I had our conversation, you know, Jeremy and I had a couple of offshoot conversations from that and it was, it was very respectable. Jeremy actually did a, a, a live stream the next day where he talked about us, you know, in a positive way, you know, and he even said, he even said that he thought that the community that we have here is great. And, uh, you know, and so look, if, if even people that we've had disagreements with can see that about you guys and can see that about our channel. then I think we're doing something right. And, you know, and that's that. Now, obviously last night there was some controversy, there was some stuff going on and, uh, I'm not going to, um, address that, uh, in, in like some huge way. I will just say this a couple of things, case in point, sometimes people get information and it's like the game of telephone. Remember telephone when you were in school where it's like, Somebody tells somebody something, and then that person says something, and that person says something, and that person says something. Um, I want to make very clear, uh, my friends are great people. Don't, don't, please, please don't reach out to my friends and say, well, what did you do to Enosh or anything like that? Don't, don't do that because they didn't do anything to me. I'm, I'm not mad at my, at my friends. We're all good we've we've had a disagreement but that's what family does families have disagreements friends have disagreements and i never stopped talking to my friends and i never would um so there's misinformation you know and sometimes people feel strongly uh that they that they have to share things but i will just say this one uh it just it just should go to show you because i'm not a children's minister never been a children's minister um that's not my forte. You know, I like kids, obviously, but uh, I'm not a children's minister. Bad intel. And then uh, as far as the infamous now slow clap uh, that I did, I addressed that that night um, because there's this thing about me that you guys will see. And I think that you guys see if you know me and you've watched the channel long enough. I'm able to self correct. All right. Uh, I'm able to see when I do something wrong and I can admit it. And that's not a prideful thing to say, oh, look what I can do. That's just to say, I can admit when I'm wrong. And I did it that night. And so um, this is the last thing that I'm going to say about this. And then we're going to move on to our wonderful people who are already waiting. But I just kind of wanted to share this with you because, again, bad intel. People should watch the materials that they talk about you know i do so there you go and that's why and, and as a pastor you guys know i'm a pastor as a pastor first of all um i don't feel like i'm gonna melt if somebody does something wrong around me uh or says a bad word or does something crazy uh but also being a pastor i i think i think i think sometimes people they, they look at pastors or ministers as like like we're not people Right. Like we shouldn't have like uh, an overall opinion. Um, I do. I do have opinions and I have opinions about fandoms because I'm also a big nerd, you know, and I have I have strong opinions about how people should conduct themselves, how they should act, how they should treat others, how they should do things. And when I see things that aren't right. Yeah, I do speak out against it. Does it always make me popular? No. Mm -mm. There's apparently whole fandoms that don't like me because of it. Right. Uh there's other, there's other YouTubers that have decided that they don't like me because of it, right? It's kind of low-hanging fruit to try to bring my faith into it and to try to somehow assume that you know how I should act as a Christian or as a minister based on, I guess, your worldview or your ideas of what that means. Um, I don't see my role as a Christian as being a passive role where I just watch bad things happen or things that I think are wrong and just let those go. So I will speak out at times. And I think that we all should. Those are things that we shouldn't just keep our mouths shut just because we're a particular religion or we're a particular race or we're a particular background. Okay. I've been called a lot of weird names in the last couple of days, which I think are really funny uh, because that stuff just doesn't really bother me anymore, but names that I never really thought I'd ever be called. Uh, 
And look, it's par for the course. It is what it is. But you know, like I said, I am a minister and I do have my own thoughts and my own ideas about things. And I will speak out at those things. I'm not trying to get into fights with people. There's sometimes people take, take offense at things that I say. And, um, you know, sometimes that spurs the conversation, right? And, uh, and sometimes we've been better off for it. We've had great conversations that have led to good things. And sometimes people have taken a, you know, a completely different route on that. Uh, but this was something that was brought up uh, to me the other day. Well, well, tonight it was brought up that uh, because Jeremy, when he was here, he mentioned a stream where they raised money for um, uh, human trafficking. And uh, here's the thing. And I, I said it then and I'll say it now. I was frustrated at that point. We'd gone three and a half hours in a debate back and forth. And I was frustrated with a lot of Jeremy's points when it happened. And uh, yeah. And so when, when he mentioned it, I still say that raising money for something does not negate, uh, you know, wrong actions. And uh, maybe what I perceive as wrong actions, maybe other people don't perceive them as wrong actions. But, you know, that's my prerogative. And uh, that's why I said what I said. And when he said that, when he talked about how they raised all this money, I slow clapped to that ironically. And, uh, I knew when I did it, I knew why I did it. I was slow clapping his, his remark. I wasn't slow clapping about what the people had done in raising the money towards, uh, going towards human trafficking, but I understood, absolutely understood how it appeared and what I had done. And then later on in that stream, that same very stream, I didn't need somebody to make a video or try to make some kind of expose. I mean, I don't know how it's an expose when it happened right here on the channel, but this is, uh, this is what happened that night, that very night. When we talked about it later, What? you're probably right. And it's going to take a long time for that to pull up. I, I wish you could see how long it took for that to pull up uh, for me. Uh, it says, you know, she were great, except maybe for the slow clap, LOL, that didn't present the real you, I think. You know what? And you're probably right. I was frustrated at that point. And you're right. And I can admit when I'm wrong. You know what? Here's the thing. I still don't agree that just throwing money at something somehow negates other actions, you know? But I do know this. You're probably right because the people who gave that money are just good, well-meaning people probably. You know, and um, and I have to admit that. And so I'll, I'll gladly admit that and I'll gladly admit when I was wrong and I shouldn't have reacted that way. So there you go. So thank you. Thank you for holding me accountable. We talk about it a lot here on the channel. You all know that accountability is greater than entertainment. So, yeah, where it was probably entertaining for me to just give the slow clap and and kind of, you know, be sarcastic about it. And I still believe at the the heart of that comment. When you really look at it, it's it's people who believed in that cause enough. And and that is an important cause. And it's not the cause that I was that I was doing that. It. it was it was the feeling behind it. And I think I let my emotion get a little bit too much of me at that point. So um I thank you all for being here tonight. I know Johnny would be thanking you as well. So, so there you go. That's what I said the, the very same night in question. And, uh, and even somebody brought it up later and I, and I even talked about it again and said, yep, I completely agree with that. So you got me. That's, that's who I am, but I can, I can, uh, I can do self-inflection and, and see when I, when I make a mistake and I made a mistake at that point and I owned up to it. And that's the exact same reason why, uh, if you question why I uh, can um, be friends with somebody like Matt Jarbo, for example, that people want to throw in my face a lot. I've said it before. I'll say it again. And if you watch the if you watch the show, you know it's an open book. That there, there's no exclusives there. There's no gotchas. There's no exposés there. I've said it once, and I've said it many, many times. I think it's funny that you want to hold me to this thing about being a minister and being forgiving and loving, but maybe when it's not the person that you want me to forgive. So there you go. You know, uh, I do believe in giving people a second chance and I believe in people also owning up to what they do. 
And so that is, that's my, that's my uh, two cents for tonight. All right. Uh, real quick. Ryan Hartwell with the $2 super chat says, how about them Oscars? I slept. <laughs> I did not watch the Oscars tonight, Ryan. I apologize, man. But you know what? Um, I think that I, I, I hope that, uh, that you got back in here. Um, and uh, hopefully your internet's working tonight and you can tell me what you uh, thought of um, uh, the Oscars. All right. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, do, 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 do. H parts with a $2 super chat says, can you release the Jarbo cut? I, I don't know that that's my cut to release. I, I don't know. I don't know that that's my, my cut to release. Um, and, uh, I, I guess, I guess we'd have to ask the man tonight and, uh, and I think we can, uh, but yep. Yep. I li listen, it, it, I, I don't understand this thing's been, and I'm going to let the man speak for himself. Cause this, it, that polar bear video has been around for 10 years, uh, almost, almost a decade. He's publicly apologized and, and admitted that he does that he, that it was wrong, that he did wrong by it. And I have publicly told him right here on this very program that I understand who he is now as a person. And you know what? Does that mean that I, th does that mean that I agree with everything Matt Jarbo says? No, I've, I've butted heads with Matt Jarbo on this very program on many topics. Okay. But it does mean that I think that Matt is trying and I think that he's a good guy and I don't, and I don't have to defend Matt Jarbo to everybody uh, or make you like Matt Jarbo. That's not my job. That I, that's not it. But if you're wondering why, uh, I can be okay with him as a person. It's not because I condone what he's done. I've, uh, I've very much, uh, explained the fact and told him right here on this program. Look, yeah, he made that video. That was really stupid. It was really dumb. He's owned up to it. He's admitted it. He's moved on. We've all moved on. And if he does it again, you won't, you won't see, uh, me respond in just like a, Oh, it's, you know, I'm not, I'm still not responding in just like, it's an okay thing to do, but I've told him, I'm like, yeah, probably would be something that I'd be very upset about. Right. And I would, I would make sure that he knew that and everybody would know that. And, um, so it just is what it is, but Hey, speaking of which we got, we got a bunch of people in the back. We're going to get to them. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're going to bring this guy in just because, uh, he's fun and people like to talk to both of us sometimes at the same time. And I don't know how long he's going to stay, but hopefully, uh, hopefully he stays a while. This, the, the ever present and ever popular Matt Jarbo. What's going on, man? Uh, not much. I just woke up. It, me too. So, I just a little while ago myself. Yeah. I was just looking, I was checking out the, uh, the Oscars and not caring. Yeah, I, I know. I, I feel bad as a movie guy, man, but it's like none of that stuff ever seems to, uh, well, it's lost its me. it's lost its luster in recent years because it doesn't it shows you the disconnect between what the audience watches and what Hollywood pays to be profitable, you know, and or what they pay to get in these award ceremonies because it's all money based, right? It's all about uh, who can put up the most billboards and who can run the most advertisements and things like that. Like there's there it's not like it's not meritocracy, and when it comes to the Academy Award, um. It quite frankly is just like, you know, the, it's all about who, this is okay. You know why Harvey Weinstein won so many Academy Awards? It wasn't that he produced the best pictures. It was literally that he spent the most money. He was aggressive in how he spent money during Oscar season. And like, so think, go back to uh, 1999, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Shakespeare in Love won best picture over Saving Private Ryan. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong. I think Shakespeare yeah. in Love is a fine movie. I, I love that movie. But yeah. Saving Private Ryan, that opening, you know, f that opening battle sequence leaves you speechless still over oh, 20 yeah. years later. Heck yeah. And that was, and I think, you know, that and Schindler's List were basically Steven Spielberg's magnum opus. I don't know uh, I, I believe I'm right. On, I could be wrong on that year, but I, I think Shakespeare won over Saving Private Ryan. But Shakespeare in Love did win. And it, it, that to me ultimately wasn't like what you would call a best picture, you know. But what got, what got me was when um, in 2000, when Trey Parker and Matt Stone were up for the uh, Blame Canada as the best original song. Yeah. And it lost to Phil Collins, uh, whatever song he did for Tarzan. You know, oh, yeah. you'll be in my heart. Wasn't that? Yeah. The like, yeah. yeah. Right. I'm like, I'm like, wait, Blame Canada is a funny 
irreverent, hilarious song. Well, and it's just a well arranged. It, yeah, song it, as well. It, plus Robin Williams performed it at the Oscars. Did he really? Yeah, I yeah. I didn't remember that. Yeah, he actually performed it because the lead actress uh, who played uh, Kyle's uh, Cartman's mom. Uh, no, sorry, Kyle's mom. She had actually passed away. And so uh, they got Robin Williams to come That's out and, right. and play Sheila Broflovsky. So, That's you know, right. they put that That's on the right. It, it's really good. Now. You should watch it if you haven't seen it. But that performance is great from Robin Williams. But it's like that's still lost out. And I'm like, really? And ever since then, I've just been I haven't cared. You know, I just I, I, I have so much trouble. And this year, especially because I, I haven't seen any of the films that have been nominated. Yeah. You know, and uh, the one that won, and this is funny, the one that won that everyone thought was going to win was Nomadland. And it's a movie about a woman who loses everything and limbs at her van, right? Yeah. You know how many YouTube channels I actually watch that are of that exact same scenario? <laughs> a ton. I'm not even making this up. No, I'm not even making this up. Over the pandemic being locked in, I started watching all of these, like my girlfriend found them. So we started watching all these guys who like live in their van. And these people that live in their van and they live in Canada and they live in parts of the US. I, I watched one about a dude who like lives in his Tesla, his not Tesla, sorry, his Prius. And it oh. like and he travels around the southwest United States because it's warmer. Um and, and he lives in his Prius and like all the knickknacks he has to live in his Prius and save money. And it's like, wow, that was really interesting. Those are kind of cool. And I'm like, but this movie kind of about the exact same thing just ended up winning Best Picture. And the only thing I'm gonna say about that, because I haven't seen it, so I can't speak to its quality is the fact that Chloe Zhao won Best Director and that won Best Picture, we're going to finally get an Eternals trailer tomorrow. That's my prediction. Because she directed The Eternals, and we you know, we haven't seen anything on that, and it's apparently coming out like in yeah. November or something. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's again, it's like, what what is it that people are going to be talking about? They're going to be talking about the Best Director. Oh, no, we want to see what her next movie is, right? Because that's the big uh, Marvel movie that we've been waiting for. And, uh, and because, you know, now she's on everyone's mind, now we're going to show you that. And that's all anyone's going to care about. It, so it just shows you there's a massive disconnect between the audience that is and the audience that they believe that, they, you know, and, and the insular crowd that is Hollywood. Yeah. No, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Blame Canada. It, <laughs> that's what we just, just, we'll just blame Canada. That, I, I like it. I, I think this is funny. Uh, H bars with a $2 super chat says our Lord and savior is here. Meaning, meaning you, I guess. Jaro. No, no, <laughs> no. Uh, trust me, I'm no one's lord and savior. All right, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a bad person according to a lot of people. I've been Does deemed it, a lot of, I've been deemed a lot of things uh, lately. It's just kind of funny to me. Well, but, what I, know. what I find to be funny, just because my name was brought up before I came on, and I saw I was asleep during that stream. Like I was laying in bed, I passed out because I was really hurting because of my back and. uh so I didn't really, I didn't really pay much attention to it, but I get, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I wanted to make a joke about it because at this point, that's all I can really do. Sure. And I was just like, you know, cause I know fatal Jay was coming at me, right? Like he was, this is the thing. And this is just what I'll say about this. Like, like Jay, I don't know what the hell his problem is. All right. Like he got mad at me because I called him out. All right. Cause I'm going to defend you. You're my friend. And he was attacking you for no reason. And I don't care that he wants to bring up that old school shit. That's fine. All right. Everyone knows about it. It's not like this unknown thing. Yeah. of my stupidity that I have completely apologized for and believe me immensely regret. And, and the thing is, is that like, I'll never be able to get away from that. Right. But the thing is, is I'm not going to stand by while someone baselessly attacks my friend and not say something because to me, that's a bully tactic, you know? And that is that it, it was it was completely disingenuous and the way he was acting on it was like all sorts of nonsense and you're my friend and i'm going to defend you and and what sucks is then because of that he takes what i did stupidly and then he and you know he was trying to lump it in together oh yeah so so he's trying to do that whole birds of a feather thing which is the furthest thing it could be all right like my attempt at really stupid comedy in 2012 is not what dynamic you and I have. Mm -hmm. And and the fact that that's what he would that and that's what he chose to attack on a stream was just him looking for extra ammo. But I'll put it to you guys like this. And I posted this on Twitter. You can find this on my Twitter feed. In I think it was like late February early March. Uh, I criticized how Sean O'Connell was uh promoting his book, right? The Snyder Cut book. 
Mm -hmm. and and i stand by that ethically but jay hit me up and was uh was going around also trying to smear sean behind the scenes because he felt that sean was just doing it to make money and wasn't worthy of of being behind the movement and the reason why i'm bringing that up now and the reason why i posted those screenshots was because it shows you the mentality of this individual who is not trying to to see this thing through to, to keep it whole and pure and whatever if he deems you unworthy for whatever reason then you're cancelable that's what i'm talking about here that's the uh, that that is the situation so that is that is who jay is and i'm not going to say any more than that and i don't want to steer the conversation yeah, no that no i know i know but i mean that's the whole situation you can like me not like me i trust me i don't care i would prefer to have a conversation with somebody rather than not but i'm not going to sit there and like you know beg for everyone to to throw me a bone i i've dealt through more crap than any of you could ever imagine uh in the last three years on this platform so if you want to talk i i have open call-ins like this all the time yep. so no, that's it that's, and, that's and, my and, statement and, on you know it, so. and matt and matt that's why i've gone on record many times saying that's why i respect you uh it's not because i think you're some perfect human being or that i think that you do make all these right choices or you do all those things and that's not what anybody has to do to befriend me or or anything like that um that's never been what i'm about and the stances that i take against things that i see are things that i'm i'm passionate about because yeah why why have i taken a stance against things like the fandom menace is it because that i think the people in the fandom menace are all bad evil people like i've had a lot of people comment to me uh, on that video, for example, you know, like, well, I'm a fandom minister and I'm a good person and I, you know, and I, this, 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 and this, and I'm like, yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. You know, what I'm talking about is I'm not talking about being a shill for Disney or just agreeing with every Disney thing that's out there. Just don't ruin it for everybody else. Um, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing stuff already. I mean, like I, I was talking to somebody today and, you know, like we were talking about solo and the thing is, is solo the perfect star Wars movie? No. Did I ask for Solo? No. Did I think that I even wanted to see a young Han Solo movie? No. But I but I hear from people every week, Matt, who are like, wow, I finally watched Solo because I put it off and put it off and put it off. And I really enjoyed it. It was fun. It was a thing. Yeah. I wish I had seen it in the theater, actually. I did. I went opening night, yeah. the preview night. And because uh, the thing was, is like when that movie, I was mad at The Last Jedi for like a while and uh and a lot of people were like starting to turn that negativity towards solo and i will admit yeah. i did in the beginning because mm -hmm. it, it's at that point like it was uh I'll, I'll put it to you guys like this i've never had anything be as algorithmically gold in regards to return financial returns <laughs> than <laughs> anti La that. last jedi content and i'll be no i'll oh, be yeah. honest in September or in december 2017 through the last half of the month because of all my videos on the last jedi i made over thirty five hundred dollars in the last in, in the last two weeks of that month that is how big and crazy that was the last jedi sucks i've been sitting on this for all this <laughs> yeah you know, i'm saying no, no no i'm saying but the thing is the thing is though like that's i started to realize i yeah that's what that would be clipped uh you know but i'm but i mean by that is it was a situation where like you don't you, you don't think about it at the time right you're looking for more things to get you mad because you're getting a return and, and yeah. that is one of the hardest things that as YouTubers, uh, especially when you're talking about things that are sensational, that it's difficult to do. Because how many people just run? I mean, how many videos on the Snyder Cut have we made? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. we want to talk about it. We like talking about it. But after a while, you're like, am I, you know, do I need to, like, do a video on this one little, like, one right. tweet thing? Right. right. It ends up being this, like, a weird to describe situation. But it, but I remember in January of 2018, there was a report that came out that said that Luke, like a rumor that had come out that said Lucasfilm knows Solo sucks and they're just gonna like, they're just gonna dive bomb the movie. Mm -hmm. And so in January of 2018, they started, there was already the attacks on Solo. Then that first trailer dropped and everyone was kind of going after that. And and then but and then people were mad about Phil Lord and Chris Miller being removed and, the Ron, and then Ron Howard coming on in. So all of yeah. this stuff started to kind of take place. And then I, I got to the point where I was like, you know what? I just, I'm still going to go see it, right? Like I, I, I crapped on Ghostbusters 2016 for like four months before it came out, but I still went to go see it. Yeah. 
and that's how uh, I am, man. I, like, yeah. I, I still want to see the movie. And so like I did, but like I said, I, I have people all the time, you know, tell me like, I, I saw the movie and I enjoyed it. And, and I guess that's, you know, like when it came to Indiana Jones and this thing of like, okay, so they, they hired this woman who's, who's, you know, uh, you know, very, you know, liberal leftist, you know, whatever. Uh, so we're just going to hate this movie. Like, I don't look Indiana Jones five could absolutely suck. You know what I mean? It could be the worst movie. Like, like literally, I mean, it, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of concerns there because Indiana Jones is going to be very old in this movie. What is this movie about after crystal skull? It almost kind of had this great ending, even though people didn't like the movie, maybe as a whole, I like the movie. I enjoy it. Cause I, can I loved look past, it. I, Cause I can look past its flaws. There's a couple little flaws in it, but but besides that, I really like it. And I know that people hate it, but like, regardless, it does end on a, like an up note, but I think that they just wanted to end maybe on this huge thing. And so, well, they weren't expecting, they weren't expecting solo to make as little as it did. Exactly. Right. Like, and exactly. the thing is, the thing is like, I saw it opening night, like I was the only person in the theater audibly making noises, like gasping at the very end when mall shows up. Oh, I right? know. Dude, like, I, I lost it. I was surprised yeah. that they kept that a secret. How I was, do they keep yeah. that a secret nowadays? You know what I mean? I didn't like, know either. It I because it gets to the end. It gets to the end and you see the hologram pop up, right? And then uh and you see the I saw like the the leg. And I went like, no. Yeah. Like oh no, you see the robe and then you see the leg. And I'm like, no. And then I'm like, wait a minute. And I hadn't seen Clone Wars. I hadn't finished Clone Wars at that point in time. Oh, so I yeah. didn't know I knew Maul had come back, but I didn't know that it was Sam Witwer who voiced him. So I didn't recognize the voice at the time. And so, but I'm like, no, no. And my girlfriend's like, she's like, what? And I'm like, no, they didn't. They didn't. She's like, shut up. You know? And then I'm like, they did. They did. You know, like they told, I was totally geeking out in the theater and I was like the only one. And I'm like, oh my God. And the, like how, how people here not get that. But yeah. did you notice that you saw the, the Clone Wars uh, final season, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you notice um, that Dryden Voss made an appearance, had a cameo when, um, when, where, yeah, uh, that was I, I when Ahsoka, so. when Ahsoka got down into the underworld of Mandalore. Yes. And then you had uh you had Maul talking to the other crime lords. Okay. Dryden Voss is there. Is he? Yeah. Go back and watch it. Yeah. It's like it's it's just it's I mean, it's not like non but Yeah, yeah. But it's but it's a it's a great callback, exactly. It's like, ooh, ooh, that means that like they haven't forgotten solo. Because the thing is, uh when solo hit Netflix a few months later, uh I got a call from a bunch of people. That told me who finally watched it because it was on netflix and they went like oh why i'm so mad i didn't see this in theaters right right and that's see that's what i'm saying is is like that's what's like to me is like with indy with the new indiana jones movie it's like i that's what frustrated me about it because like don't just don't don't go creating a hate hype for a movie literally based on a casting that you don't even know who that person's going to be and that was that was my that was my gripe with that and, I, and i'm sorry that Look, I'm, I'm going to have an opinion, right? And I'm going to state that opinion. And, um, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of other reasons, okay? I'm not going to get into all those reasons. There's a lot of other things behind the scenes that I have issues with that um, are, are things. But beyond that, just even on the surface level, those those are things. Uh, real quick, H. Bards had a $2 super chat, said passion of the Jarbo. Uh, I'm sure some people will like to see me crucified. That is true. Well, some some people will just be yelling and screaming. Why did you say that? <laughs> Jarbo, Martha. Jarbo, be thy name. Andrew Christie with a ten dollars super chat. Thank you, Andrew. Says the Oscars was so weird. They set it up for Chadwick to win and end on touching uh, tribute, and Anthony won. Who wasn't there to accept? They usually end with best picture. Bizarrely anticlimactic. Hmm. Kind of like this. Then, dog. What the? F there goes Santa. Oh. oh. <laughs> that guy had a I, bad day. <laughs> oh, that's just how I feel about it sometimes. But yeah, no, I know that's kind of why I stopped watching the Oscars. It's like it's just so long, and I. 
I just feel like it's it's information that I can just go back and and like, oh, this person won, this person won. Okay, okay, got it, good. Uh, do I care about this one? Do I? No, you know, probably not. Uh, Frank E with the four ninety nine super chat says, "What's up, everyone?" Or, "What's up, everyone?" Let me get that right. Uh, someone, uh, excuse me, showed my family the shout out from William yesterday. My wife said, "You really are a nerd. I love this community." Hey, Frank, we love you too. And, uh, and, uh, we get excited when stuff like that happens and, uh, William may be stopping by later. So, so maybe he'll give you another shout out. <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess people are really mad about the, uh, the whole Anthony Hopkins winning best actor. Really? Yeah. And huh. the thing is like people, people are, uh, people are, are, are upset. Um, like a certain person we know from a certain planet um who's you know that they're like oh but but why why you had one job why didn't you give it to chadwick and see that's yeah. that's and that's the thing right this is well the thing. it's not it's not a uh it's not a it's not a popularity contest either you know like i mean it is but it's not just i i don't know man you know what i'm saying it's you yeah, know what i mean yeah. it's like it's like it's like i get it you know but like, do you just give it to Chadwick for that reason? Like, I, I want to, um, these are great conversations and I'm sure we'll be having some more of them. I just want to get a couple of people in here, uh, and kind of start this. Are, are you cool? Maybe to, to stick around. I can, yeah, I can hang out for a little bit longer. I took answer my muscle relaxers. So yeah, a answer some questions. People always love to pick your brain and stuff. And I like that. Uh, H bars with a $5 super chat says crystal skull. I like, but it feels like two thousands because of Shia a little bit, a little bit. It's a little weird. Shia pulls me out of it a little bit. Actually. I still, I still like it though. I yeah, still like oh, it. I still do too. I, I still do too. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, no. I, I will say this real quick. If you watch all four of them in sequential order, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, by the time you get to Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, you will see how much Sean, uh, how much Sean Connery is in Harrison Ford. Uh, there's a lot of like that dichotomy has yes. uh, the juxtaposition between like the performances yes. where uh, you see a lot of, uh, of, of Henry Sr., uh, then you would, and uh, then you see it's it's actually really funny, and I think it's a little layer that got lost on a lot of people. There's a lot to Crystal Skull that's actually really good, except the monkeys. Yeah, the the monkeys. Yeah, that that pulls me out. Uh, <laughs> Rel McMillan with a 9.99 super chat says uh, the next round of future hit pieces by this YouTuber will be that Bill cheated on Monica. <laughs> oh, I get. <laughs> Basically non-issues. Uh, Bill cheated on Monica. Uh, ch ch he cheated on Monica, not with Monica. He cheated. He on cheated Monica. on Monica with his on, wife. With his wife. The, <laughs> that the son, son of a bitch. The son in Psycho is the killer. Batman is Bruce Wayne, and the Superman snapped Zod's neck. Nobody, nobody cares about Clark Kent taking on the Batman. Um, <laughs> you know, here's the thing. I, I honestly feel that if the Snyder Cut was released in theaters last year. Uh, or even this year, it could have been up for a, uh, uh, for, for a couple nods. I do think that, yeah. um, cause it's, it's just, you know, I mean, they were going after black Panther really crazy a couple years ago and I think it's a great movie, but you know, yeah, no, I, I hear you. I hear you. That's why, but that's why they're mad about, that's why they're mad about Chadwick Boseman, you know, really is that cause he didn't get it for black Panther. Um, I don't know. It's yeah. all political. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, H bars with the final super chat says Sasha Baron Cohen was robbed uh, at the enemies at the Emmys last year for his serious role in the spy. So I didn't see the spy, but I tell you what, that guy is super talented. And I, and I think that a lot of times he may be getting um, kind of just because of his crazy roles, you know, like maybe not taken as um, serious. I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, but Sasha, Sasha, uh, Sasha's very, very talented for sure. Well, I mean, did Borat win anything tonight? I don't know. I don't because so. I mean, Borat too was like that was a big push for Best Picture. That was, was a big push. Yeah, I mean, that was a that because of you know the election and stuff and everything that's happened since then. Um, somewhere in in recent weeks, Nomadland kind of took over the conversation of what people were really kind of aiming for, and but before then, it was Borat too. Mm -hmm. be because of of the satirical nature of how it was made and stuff and sure and what you know and like so it was very topical and that was what everyone was talking about but then all of a sudden it moved over to nomadland uh, i don't know why to be honest with you um uh, i loved borat too i still need to, i'm gonna watch nomadland it's i think it's on i think, Hulu it's, I right think now. it's funny i think it's funny superheroes fandom is a new member welcome superheroes fandom it's good to have you welcome to membership it has its privileges i mean one might even say that it comes with uh, a bonus is there a bonus 
Get the bonus. Get the bonus. Welcome to membership. Thank you so much. All right. So I got somebody else who's going to come in here uh, and then we're going to take calls. Uh, we've got, uh, if you're trying to get in right now, um, I don't know if there's an open spot, uh, but uh, you can always try. If for some reason it kicks you out, uh, just remember that um, uh, it only allows me so many people in the backstage area. So then it just kind of pushes you out. We just won't let you in. It's not because I'm, I'm kicking you out or anything. Okay. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, you love her, you know, her, she, uh, she speaks her mind and I kind of like that, especially when she's speaking her mind for me. Uh, the gentleman, Miss Saggy Melons, how you doing Saggy? Ah, uh, I was good until I looked in my bag that, uh, Matt Jarbo dropped off my Chipotle and there's no hot sauce, Matt Jarbo. What the heck? They seal it with the sticker. It's not my fault. I am still blaming you. Like you could have like checked or something. I'm like, not supposed to look in? in the bag because of COVID regulations. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Take it to customer well, service. Okay. I'm, I'm just, to, I'm, I'm just a courier. I'm just a courier. I'm very upset with this. Order. Speaking of what no. sa saggy, saggy, <laughs> how, how, how much, how much did, did, did you like, uh, uh, and, and love the looks that Tiffany had behind me last night in that chat and in, in that stream? <laughs> <laughs> i had no idea here i was all focused on doing my show and stuff i'm like watching stuff back and i'm like Dang. dude your your wife put in work last night in the chat i can tell you that right now i was like dang don't yeah. don't piss off my wife i'm just saying I'm just oh she was she was going ham and i love i love tiff tiff is tiff is a boss Yes, absolutely. All right, so we got some great people in the back. They got some questions. Here's how this is going to go, folks. We're uh, we want to keep it. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to like uh, as always. We want we want to make sure that we get try to get to everyone. Uh, and there's a lot of great people back there tonight. And so, um, so what we're going to do is uh, we'll bring you guys in, uh, and you guys will have an opportunity to talk about whatever you want to talk about. And uh, you know, we'll keep it to about five. 10 minutes ish, you know, um, you know, maybe we'll go a little bit longer, you know, depending upon how the night's going, you know, we might ask you to stay a little bit longer. Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I always, I always say, don't, uh, don't expect too much. Then that way, if you get a lot, uh, you know, there's a bonus, right? <laughs> bonus. <laughs> bonus. No, I just, I want to be able to try to get to everybody. H Barts with a $2 super chest is Matt streaming later. Uh, no. No, no, I have to be up really early in the morning. Yeah, last night killed me. I was uh, sitting here for like four hours, and it just I didn't realize that how I I it was bad. So I'm only going to be on for a little bit, and then I'm just going to go back to bed. All righty, all righty. Well, Aww. um, we had we had our first guy who was supposed to be in here. Oops, where where did my uh, where did my list go? Okay, we had had the list. Uh, Geeks was uh, supposed to be in here. Um, it looks like he might have fallen off. Oh, there he is. He came back. All right. So hopefully his internet's working all right. And, uh, and we shall see what's up geek studio. It's been a long time, buddy. I always see you in the chat. He's one of our, yeah. great, he's one of our great moderators. He, man, you always do a fantastic job for us. And I appreciate you, brother. Thanks. Thank you so much, man. How are you? How have you been? I've been, been, been streaming a lot. I see that, man. You've been, you've been like, uh, you've been just like tearing it up, man. Thanks. Nice to meet you, Sammy. Nice meeting you too. Finally, how how are you? How's how's things? How's your streaming it's, going? I I I'm trying to catch it when I can, but I'm always working. <laughs> it's been crazy, but okay. That's, that's good. Hey Matt. Hey, what's up, dude? How you been? Good. I hope you feel better. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> So what's on your mind tonight, uh, geeks? Have you seen um, Falcon and Winter Soldier? Yes, we have. Uh, well, I have anyways. Have you guys seen Falcon and Winter Soldier? Oh, yeah. I, I have not. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh. I don't do okay. Disney Plus, but it's fine. I was going to ask about uh, Captain America Fall. But you think it was going to be happening or what on, Cap on captain america 4 um you know what i i don't know to be quite honest with you like i'm 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 kind of at a place with with the marvel movies where it's like i guess to me i feel like we're starting all over again 
in a lot of ways. And so um, I really don't know what to expect at this point. I mean, I don't know if they're, I feel like they're not going to do like what they did in the comics with, with Falcon and just have him be there for a little while as Captain America. I feel like they're like, they're fully committed to Falcon at this point being Captain America, you know? And that's great. Uh, yeah. And I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. I don't have a problem with it. I just, I, you know, like in the comics, you know, he was, he was Captain America for a while and the mantle kind of, you know, was getting passed around, I guess a little bit. And so, so I, I don't know. Um, I do have a feeling that they will eventually give it to Bucky. You think um, so? In a couple of years. Yeah. Like, but it will be one of those, like, you know, it will be at a pivotal moment is like, did something happen to Sam? He's out of the equation. We need a new Captain America. Here comes Bucky, but he'll eventually give it back to Sam because that's always how it goes. You know, it's like they pick up the mantle for a little bit. Um, but I think like this is the whole point with what Feige's doing is if you think about it, like both WandaVision and Falcon and Winter Soldier have now set up more films, right? Expanded, oh, the, yeah. expanded the universe yeah. quite a bit. And so then my question is like, okay, well, is US agent, is he going to be like, where is he going to pop up? Is that going to be on another show? Is that going to be in Captain America 4? I mean, clearly they're establishing more for the character. And, yeah. and you know, what about Zemo? Zemo has become kind of Captain America's Loki, where he's like an anti-hero that fans have fallen in love with because fans really loved uh, Daniel Bruhl uh, playing Zemo for the little bit he was in the season. Yeah. And, you know, are we going to get more of him? And I think we are. So like, there's a lot of like, I mean, you can tell that they have a plan and you can tell that they are building. And, and this is again, what he'd already said this about Disney plus where they're going to start on Disney plus, and then they're going to build into the movies. And, yeah. and that is a great way, a great way to expand the universe and then to expand storytelling, which is what I'm excited for. Me too. I, I think it's cool. I, th I think they've like, well, go ahead, yeah, man. I, I do think we're going to get more Madripoor. It looks so cool in the series. Yeah, I, I, um, look, I, I, uh, I think they've done a really great job so far with the two series, uh, on Disney Plus. Um, I don't know. I, I'm having a hard time deciding which which series I liked better, though um and is that a bad thing no no i guess not <laughs> i guess not but like but like i look i i want it to be captain america you know i feel like i feel like there was some there was even though it was only six episodes it felt like there was a lot of filler in there at times maybe well i can kind of explain that um this uh, falcon and winter soldier was the first show that they made right yeah um it got delayed yeah. because of covid that's and true. everything and but so i think what it was is i think that was the first one out the gate and you know they were just trying to get their footing for how to do it because they were trying to take a marvel movie and condense it or expand it into six hours is essentially what they were trying to do um and i think there's it's a little bit of a rocky road to get there but wandavision i mean that was almost perfection in many ways uh with the pacing and the length of the episodes and the story despite fans getting over over hyped for what they put in their own headcanon but i i think that they're going to learn how to make it work really well and it takes a little bit of time to kind of find that foothold um but it all depends on who the showrunners are and and what those people are going to be bringing to the table you know i gotta look at uh you know i i gotta look up who's doing um like uh, miss marvel but it's i think it's the guys who did bad boys for life uh are the mm -hmm. ones who directed that series oh wow so you know that should be something interesting but clearly Marvel, like, you know, they're putting all they're putting faith in Feige and it's been it's been rewarded, you know, I mean, flaws and all the shows have both hit peak popularity in just a short amount of time. Yep. Whoops. And when did I think of Shang Chi? Oh, Shang Chi? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait, man. I think that looks awesome. I can't wait for it either, or like the acting and everything, and the planning style of it, and the way they filmed it, looks cool. 
Yeah, I, uh, you know what? So, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be absolutely honest with with everything that I've had going on this week. I still have not seen that trailer. Oh, really? I haven't either. Yeah. yeah, I haven't either. It looks good, dude. It looks good. It looks like it's made it. like. Are you a fan of old uh, Hong Kong kung fu films? I mean, a little bit, a little bit. Um, what you should do not, is not, uh, not like huge, but like a little yeah. bit. Talk to H. Bart's complete. He's a complete kung fu movie aficionado, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's super into this stuff, and I think he really liked the uh, the Shang Chi trailer as well, because um, we were kind of talking about it on on my stream the other night. And uh, but it looks like it's it. There's a lot of wire fighting, right? A lot of um, a lot of wire work, which is mm -hmm. what we saw quite a bit from Hong Kong cinema. It looks mm -hmm. to me like they're doing a lot. Like they are trying to mimic that as as best that they can. Mm -hmm. uh, and definitely better than what we saw in Iron Fist. That is, that's true, but that's not hard to do. You're right. Iron Fist was an embarrassment. I look. I still think Finn Jones got done a raw deal. Okay, like I'm all for right. bring back Finn Jones. You know. I like but, the yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I hated Iron Fist. I I didn't even finish. Did you see season? Did, oh well, season one was like the thing is the thing is season one was uh was a oh, show run by a guy named Scott Buck. Scott Buck also did uh, the the uh, what was it um, the Inhumans. Inhumans. The, but okay, well, uh, Saggy, did you ever watch Dexter? Yes. Okay, did you ever notice a quality drop between seasons four and the rest of the show? Oh yeah. That was Scott Buck. After Scott. the Trinity Killer, after season four, uh, Scott Buck took over as showrunner, and uh, yeah, and that's where the show went down to hell for the final four seasons. Uh, that, that I, I never finished. The, yeah. I never finished the last season of the show. I was. I just was so. I was turned off by it by season seven. I only finished it because I needed to know how it ended. Oh, like, I just waited and had someone tell me. And I hate spoilers. And I just was like, I called my sister. I'm like, what happened? She's all like lumberjack. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm fine, <laughs> good. <laughs> right. Uh, you know. And I'm like, but then they're rebooting. But they're rebooting the show uh, now. And I think Melissa Rosenberg is coming back to write. And she was the head writer for the first four seasons. She actually left the show to go write the Twilight franchise to, to turn those scripts, uh, those books into movies. I think so. I think she took the money but did herself oh, a disservice. Oh, God. God. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, that does not make me feel good. <laughs> no. No, no, no. It doesn't. It, it really doesn't. Saying hi to William. By the way, did, did nobody's not going to say it. No one's going to say it. What? Honestly? No one noticed. N what? No what? one noticed. That you, oh, you put, oh, you have this obsession with me. Yeah. You have this obsession. You got to do the other one where you have my face on that, but put the glowing eyes on, on mine, and then we'd be twinsies. Yeah, I want to be twinsies with Matt Jarbo. That's, We're gonna that's, be, gonna you are, you are, you just did, just admit you have a crush. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> Matt Jarbo just wants me to have a crush on him so he can be like, I got this uh, girl named Saggy Bubbles crushing on me. It's all his little grub, his Uber Eats uh, buddies. Well, it's better than everyone calling me all sorts of names in the book, right? I'll take I'll take that. Uh, no, it's um. Uh, anyway, I I lost my train of thought. Um, so, geeks, totally. is there any anything else uh, on your mind? Do you think it was me that we got in pink tea before we caught off? Do I think it's weird? Yeah. Um, I don't think it's weird that we got Shang Chi before Eternals. I think they've been really waiting for the right time to push Eternals, because mm -hmm. the thing is, like, look, let's be, uh, and I, and I'm a Marvel guy, and everyone knows that about me. But uh, Marvel, Feige has a way of kind of sticking it to DC. He has, he does. He sticks it to DC whenever he can. So so remember, they announced uh, Ava DuVernay's The New Gods, and yep. then in like what March 2018, and then like May 2018. They announced um, the the Eternals, and here it is: the New Gods has been canceled, and the Eternals was shot, you know, in 2019, and and all through 2020 it was done. So the movie's been sitting for for well over a year, and and I think they were waiting for like Warner Brothers to actually start doing anything with it, but you know, COVID kind of pushed it, and then also they've given us like no marketing for the movie, none. So I, I think. Know. It, I think now with Chloe Zhao having won Best Director and Best Picture, um, you're going to end up. I think tomorrow morning we're going to see a trailer drop. Mm. Well, okay. I think. 
Well, oh, H Bart says a very interesting super chat that I can actually explain. Okay. Well, hey, uh, we'll get to that. Geeks, thanks for stopping by tonight, man. We got a lot of people fun. in tonight, and so and I don't want to be here till six in the morning, but uh, I do appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate all the work thanks that you do, man, me. to help the channel. You're awesome, guys. Go uh, subscribe. Yeah, Can, tell everybody. Tell everybody where you're at, geeks. I'm at Studio on YouTube and DC Film News Geeks on Twitter. Yeah, you post a lot of good information on Instagram, so check them out on Instagram. Yes, sure. we love. Thanks. I love you, geeks. You're awesome. Thank you so much love for everything you, you do. You're Absolutely. Welcome. All right, man. All right, buddy. We will see you later, man. Have a great night. Have a good night. All right. Always good to see geeks uh, here Aww. in the. Uh, I absolutely good. love geeks. Geeks is is an amazing person. Yeah, he's a he's a very a very good dude to have around. Like, and he's yes. he's knowledgeable as hell too. So he's a good yes, guy. He is. That's the thing I do like about this community is like there's a lot of really informed people. So you can get into some really fun debates like William. I love fighting William. It's fun. Speaking of William, he's going to be coming in here and right. joining and joining our stream. I uh, got a couple super chats and we'll have <laughs> some, and we'll have some more people come and join and uh, talk to us about what they want to talk to us about. I try to stack this so that like you get a good, uh, you know, I used to just do the call in shows myself. And I think that there's some value to that. And people probably do want to talk to me. Which is fine, but I think also I like to, I like to get some of our uh, popular people in here because you know what you guys have a l great amount of wisdom and I think it's cool to nerd out with people and give people that experience as well. Uh, Ryan with a five dollar super chat says during the Oscars they showed the trailer for Steven Spielberg's West Side Story. Hmm. Anybody? Uh, it, any no. I don't. No, I don't watch it. No, no interest whatsoever. Yeah, yeah I, I, I saw the original. Care. Yeah, I saw the I mean, original, but I have no interest. But, but, but like Ryan, but Ryan, Ryan's awesome. I mean, just because like Ryan, um, you know, he he likes um, like those old musicals and like more theater stuff. And so, you know, I, I was never like a big fan of West Side Story or something. Um, but I I do I do like it. I'm not a my musicals things and 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 things like that like. It, it's it's hit or miss, right? It's like either I really really like it, or it's just like I'm I'm kind of zoned out. So the only but, thing that intrigues me about seeing it is that it is Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I wouldn't have gone to see Titanic if it had been if, if if anybody but James Cameron was directing it, I wouldn't have subjected myself to that. So that's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, I don't know, man. I was a teenager when that came out, and uh, it was PG thirteen, and it had boobs. <laughs> So I'm just I'm saying there was a, of that, but that's funny. There was a draw. You know, I was I was 15 when that movie came out. Everyone hours, in my school three hours for for literally this was pre cable movie. Internet. One right? boob. It was fa it was faster to go see that movie than it would be to download a JPEG. Was it only one boob? It was mm -hmm. two boobs. No, you saw the you no. saw both boobs. Dude, you, had no, AOL no, you saw you saw you saw a boob and side boob. I was 13. Oh, okay. I remember. I remember. I was 13. <laughs> From a, from a well, you're older than me, and I was 15 really when that came out. No, wait, yeah, that's right. I wasn't 13 when that movie came out. That movie was PG-13. That's what it was. Yeah. I mean, One, you get to see Mila Jovovich's boobs in The Fifth Element, and that was PG-13, too. Okay, this is not Mr. Skin. Like, come on. Wow. <laughs> like, there's, there's, what? We're providing knowledge, you know. Oh, we are, is that what we're, we're providing now? We're providing that, knowledge. For, they, can Google, they can Google well, that and get the minute and second well, breakdown. If well, they we have to, to ask the professional, the, the OG. Uh, got a shotgun this bonus over here. Come on. So, so William, can you confirm? Was it one boob or two boobs or one boob and a side boob? What, what was it? I can't remember. It's been, I've only seen it. Hold that on, movie I'm looking once. it up. Oh, my God. Of course, it's you're looking it up. And, and that like I said, Kate, Kate Win Winslet has shown skin in everything she's been in. So, saying that in Titanic wasn't like, you know, oh, my God. H partner with a five dollar super chat. <laughs> Bring it back. Well, in. okay, so so why initially, it was, why was Inhumans changed from movie to TV? Is that was that was that, well. was that the super chat that you were? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so uh, if you go back to 2014. Uh, the Inhumans was planned as a movie. I'm just and I'm just going to bring in our next our next guest and we'll, we'll get to his question when he when we when he gets to because he's a great guest. So awesome. I'll I'll explain it real quick. So Feige was going to do the Inhumans movie that was going to come out in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, be, they started setting it up in the second season of Agents of Shield. In fact, season three was all about Inhumans. What happened was Ike Pulmeter and Kevin Feige had the fallout over Captain America um, 
the Civil War because of Robert Downey Jr. And that was when Feige said either I leave or, you know, I don't deal with this guy anymore. And then from there, Pullmutter took in humans and took it away from Feige and turned it into a TV show, started developing it as a TV show and Feige lost control. And then he basically ran it into the ground by bringing on Scott Buck and cutting mm-hmm. the budget with the exception of talking IMAX into spending 70 million for the first two episodes of the Inhumans because they shot in IMAX in order to put it in those theaters, trying to think that that was going to capitalize on the Marvel name and make all this money. Never mind the fact that it was god awful television. Mm-hmm. That was a big mistake. <laughs> Huge mistake. <laughs> it, and it killed it killed that brand. Like, and that's such yeah. a cool. But now they have X Men, so Inhumans are just gonna have to wait. I'm good with that. <laughs> I'm good with that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, let's see. Then H Bars with another five dollar super chat said that shot of Falcon carrying Carly, uh, Carly's body ripped right out of BVS with Superman. Crisis when he's carrying Supergirl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was very superhero y. Like when Bucky <laughs> got knocked off, when he got knocked off the uh, in the, uh, the construction and he landed and yeah. he did superhero pose. Oh, oh, we yeah. Did if, if, pose. You know, Tiffany yeah. said that right away. She's, he just did the, the superhero pose. And I was like, you, you just want to slow clap, you know? Like, ooh, guys, you're doing it. No, 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 no. We don't slow clap. Slow oh, we don't slow clap here? Okay. No, okay. Slow clap. Slow claps get us in trouble. By the way, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen, tonight's episode brought to you by pistachios, because he now shouldn't eat dinner. Chili roasted pistachios. <laughs> Wonderful. No shell. Enjoy them wherever you get so your They send you a check? <laughs> no, but maybe if I mention them enough, they'll send me some pistachios. That'd be awesome. should blur. You should blur them out. So you, they you should do that. Positive. Blur them out. We have it's the technology. Of- we had the technology. Yeah, there's there's lots of there was lots of superhero moments in in that whole thing. Like I I don't know. I guess I I guess I just want I want um uh I want him to take the to somehow get the super uh human serum or whatever super soldier serum. Yeah, you know? I don't think he needs it. I don't think he needs yeah. it. He got the wings and the shield, and he's doing pretty well so far. It's like, why does he need the why does he need the serum? You know. And he made it a point not that he didn't have it. I mean, it was a speech exactly. Game was completely perfect for what he says. I got uh, no blue eyes, no blonde hair, no super serum. The only power I have is uh, I think we can do better. I thought that was, uh, was one of the, well, that millions of dollars worth of technology on my, yeah. And I think, I think his wings were vibranium, right? Like the, aren't the wings vibranium. His entire suit is. Yeah. So it's like, you know, like we have the technology, but that's all I need. I'm really good. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, I love, I love that. I just, I've always enjoyed Anthony Mackie in the role and I just, when he gave that speech at the end, I yeah. was just like completely captivated yeah, so that on, I, uh, on top of like everything with Isaiah Bradley. I was like, oh, such good writing, you know, and great performances like this should be something that's Emmy nominated. That's just my take. But it was the most one of the most inclusive uh, uh, Marvel things I've seen since Black Panther. So, yeah, I'm yeah, you. no, and it, it, but that, it shows you that diversity oh, works, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. it shows you that like that's the great thing about it like and uh then they 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 show you they don't tell you or beat you over the head with it because that's what people get really mad at you know and they do it in a way that's just compelling and people get into it and then from there it's like you know all bets are off for telling good stories all right Jeremy, did you did you find out because maladdin it looks like oh yeah yeah yeah. so you get to see both boobs uh not you know um you almost get to see even a crotch shot because i'm there's like you know when she first takes off the robe it's like full full on i'm just saying it's Kate Winslet. So, it's wait, Kate Winslet. That is wait, the least she's shown. Is in wait, that movie. Oh no, no, no! I know. You just type. You just type in Kate Winslet Titanic minute, boobs. Though. Is it like? Was it? Does it count? Like, so if we saw the two actual boobs, and then he drew the boobs, wouldn't it be a total of four boobs? Well, I mean, somebody asked. I, a question, well, you, you get to see yeah. her butt, <laughs> and then you get to see both boobs, and then you get to see. I mean, there's the a lot of skin there for a PG-13 movie. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's the point. These are these are important things to talk about, William. Like, <laughs> oh, it's important. Not. Yes, they are. It's Absolutely. very important to know Absolutely. how many cinematic many cinematic history being made, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it was that yeah. Kate got naked. That's not cinematic history. Well, in Titanic, we wanted well, we wanted to count how many breast assists we saw. You know, there was four in total. Okay, there wasn't enough of anything to, for me to ever see that movie again. Listen, don't let go, William. Don't let go. William, don't let go. 
I, I like watch them. watch watching the ship snap in half, watching all those people freeze and fall. That's that's all right. But as far as like the love story, <laughs> I want to I mean, watch people die. Listen, dude, <laughs> William, you can make a love Damn. story out of anything. That that's the pathetic <laughs> things about love stories. Fuck love well, stories, right? Well, I want well, listen, well, listen. Oh my god, listen, that's the quote those of the are the night. easiest F love stories. I want to watch people die. That is the easiest thing to write. Everybody can write a love story. Everybody's got their own version of love story. You know what, what what's hard to write? All right, death, violence, and disintegration. Now that takes talent. You can save the love stories for the Lifetime Network. Man, William, you know? William, don't let go, William. Don't let go. The real look, question is, look, was there I room no... on that door for both of them? No, no. Because was that? No, there's said not. The real, said the real question is, was there room on that door for both of them? Because I'll tell you what, if that's me, I'm like, scoot over, woman. I'm, I'm getting out of this door. I am not going to freeze my... I mean... No, no. Uh -uh. That's what happens when you chase ass you just met a couple of days ago. You die. Oh my god. So, so what you're saying? So what you're saying is like, uh, he was the first Hi, incel, right? He was the first incel. First dummy. You know, because like he was, oh he was gosh. chasing it, and then he died. I'm loving, I'm loving watch, watching the looks of the people's faces in the backstage area who are just like laughing their butts off right now. Listen, and this smiling. I just stick romance in anything. What, what, what the hell? That's why it's, uh, why porn appeals to everybody. Okay, let, whoa, 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 okay, whoa, okay. Whoa, no, no, whoa, we're gonna whoa, move on. Whoa, um, wait, yeah, hold on, hold on. Go. I'm sorry, I heard the P word and I perked up. <laughs> you are already talking about it. You literally no, we were talking about tasteful porn. nudity. We were talking about tasteful nudity. All right, there's a difference there. Right. What a love story to I dropped my pistachios. I'm I'm a mess right now. I don't even know what's going on. Um. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. Let's reel it back in. Let's reel it Caleb's got a great line there, though. DL came on, and all of a sudden, it just totally like we just start talking about porn now. It's like what's going on? I'm trying to go to. I'm trying to go. So, are we talking like? I mean, you what? You guys want to go back to like Nina Hartley in the '80s, or like how you want to talk about this? Okay, right, like time out. Vince, welcome to the stream, Vince. How are you? Do you have a question, Vince? I don't even know what my question is now. Like, what? I don't know what we're doing, man. <laughs> How are you, oh, Andrew? Andrew Christie, uh, Andrew Christie with a five dollars <laughs> super chat says, "If Zach, remember him? Who? That guy who made uh, Justice League or whatever? Does he have boobs? I don't know. <laughs> um, if Zach doesn't get to continue with his DC moving forward, how do you guys want to see Superman handled, whether Cavill continues or not? So, well, on, on on in the cinematic on movies." Yeah, so I would say I would say this. Uh, so Andrew, I'll give you, I'll give you my take on this. I'll give you my take on this. Um, I would be okay. I, I'm I'm okay with with them doing multiverse things, but I but I really feel that um, if if they're going to move forward, they they need to establish something. Superman, like not just not just a version of Superman, but actual Superman, so that we have a baseline for going forward, and then you can then you can, you know have offshoots and multiverse, you know, versions of Superman, whatever you want to do. I'm fine with that. But I really feel that like that, that's why I want C Cavill to continue because you don't have to go through all that again. As far as I'm concerned, you you're, you're there, you're good. You, you, then you can, you can do other things right away. But if, if, but if to me, if, if you get rid of Cavill and you get rid of the whole thing and you just say, okay, we're, we're starting all over from scratch and you don't start from scratch and like give a baseline, I don't know. It just doesn't feel cool to me. Let's let's do this. The, one. Let's do this one quickly. But yes, yes, go ahead. The, the problem, the problem with that is, is if they don't complete what they've started, it's not going to matter who they bring on as Superman. It doesn't matter because you're either going back from the beginning and doing the whole reboot uh, virus, where people are like, okay, do I have the next seven years to go along the same path? I just was never finished the first time. If they were to complete the storyline with Cavill. I think I think it, it wouldn't really matter who they got because people would be more open to whatever tone. But right now, it just seems like they're they're jumping from one thing to another, and uh, doing. Who wants to see Krypton explode again? So you no. really need to. No, you really I know. Need to compete. You really need to complete what you have going. There should be no conversation of who's going to be the next Superman at this point until you complete what you started. Otherwise, it's it's you're just how you're going to do it. You, you know, you're just going to come in with Superman. He's going to be in year eight, year nine. Uh, I mean, it's it, it's just they put themselves in a mess of by not finishing what they've started, 
they've left so many things open. Every every question like that is is, is, is got to be answered with five more, you know, four or five questions about, you know, yeah. To, to what end? Ryan with a twenty dollars super chat. Thank you, Ryan, so much, man. It says to tell the truth. To tell you the truth, this year's ceremony was pretty dull, low energy. The highlights were uh, Daniel Kaluuya's acceptance speech and Glenn Close, Glenn Close twerking to debut. That was legendary right there. That was absolutely legendary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know like that. Like it's a, it's a massive thing. And yeah. so I want to see his thing. Yeah. <laughs> well put. Yeah. Well, there we go. Thank you, thank you, Ryan. Uh, appreciate appreciate you, man. Yeah, I, well, I'm, I'll I tell you, I'm, I'm gonna have to check that out. I mean, you know, well, we you got to watch blood. Harrison Ford's bit talking about editing, where he hmm. reads off uh, an edit a list of editing notes hmm. that uh, that came from Blade Runner, or you know that infamous that infamous sheet of the of the notes about why Blade Runner sucks according to the studio execs. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, like he read that off uh, at the Oscars tonight. Yeah. Hmm. It's a good, it's a good little bit. It's like Harrison Ford being very, you know, being his normal cynical self. Yeah. But it's a, you know, for a Blade Runner fan, William, I thought you would've been all over that. I don't know. The, the, Oscars oh, have, the Oscars no longer mean anything to me because they generally movies that nobody cares about wins. Right. Uh, they, the Oscar voters are reflective of absolutely nothing. I can, I, the last 10, 15 years, um, I've seen what they pick, and it's almost like they're trying to pick the most obscure human interest BS. I mean, right. that they can find. Yeah. And if, well, if I hear human interest, I'm going to find some place to go to the bathroom and stay there for three hours. Well, I don't want to hear "Call me by your name." What? What? No. All right. There's too much human interest stuff, and it's like they've shut out everything in favor of that. And I'm like, what the hell? And then this year was the same way. Right. You know, you had uh, some, you had, you had some biopics. Or something. Peter Rabbit's defender with the nine ninety nine super chat says, "Ed Enash, I'm I'm going to be back in the next stream because right now I'm so devastated and dis and disturbing, disturbed that Oscars uh, producer done something disrespectful to Chadwick Boseman at the Oscars. Stay strong, brother. Man, what are you doing? I didn't, I didn't watch a lot, a lot of a lot of people feeling like uh, Chadwick uh, should have won, including me." There you go. There you go. Oh, H bars. H bars with the two dollars super chat says William loves death confirmed. <laughs> it's an art form. It's an art form. Listen. And then, uh, listen. And then H bars with another two dollars super chat says Hong Kong romance movies are great. And then and then I love my good friend um, here uh, Speedo Kagan. What's up, Speedo Kagan? Says I love these call-in shows. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Release the boob cut. Sure. Why not? Um, Rel McMillan with a four ninety nine super chat says Jarbo was the type of kid who would have watched yeah. scramble channels, hoping to see some action back in his day. I, caught, I saw a boob. I can't. But, I can't argue. You, yeah, like I like, can't I, really. I can't. I can't just put that on Jarbo. Can we really just put that on Jarbo? I had to watch wrestling pay per views that way. So I Y'all so freaks. Y'all so That was freak. that was how I saw Pulp Fiction. Was uh, it was on one of those scramble pay per view channels, but the audio was there. So my friend and I just watched. There, right? Well, I've yeah. shared I've shared many times when uh, about how when I was a kid, the Christian channel at eight p.m. would turn into the Playboy channel, and so my grandma would have the Christian channel on, and like there you'd be it would literally be in the middle of some guy preaching or some lady singing some gospel song, and all of a sudden it would go scrambled, and you'd hear yeah the the noises of yeah. the Playboy yeah. <laughs> What? Oh, wait, wait, was that a horse neighing? I, I don't think that was the right channel, Saggy. Whoa. Oh, no, check this out. All of a sudden you hear, oh, God, oh, God. And you're like, wait a minute, am I still watching? So, <laughs> yeah, so, you're, so you're, check you're this getting out. into the room, you're, you're hearing Jesus' name be called, and you're like, wait, that, hold on a second. I don't think yeah. that's right. See, Where this is, this is to, to go back to the question I about the scrambled Matt stuff, Jarbo right? Here. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. So when I was younger, my aunt and my uncle ended up getting a black box to get unscramble all the pay-per-view channels. And I would ask her to, I'd ask them to record me movies and my aunt would just put it on and, you know, put the tape in and hit record before going to bed and let it run all the way through the night. Well, very often my uncle would get up and walk over to the TV after a couple hours and he would turn it over to like the playboy channel or spice <laughs> or whatever. So I'd be watching the movie 
and then like I was watching uh, Don't Be a Menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. It gets like halfway through and then it cuts over to the Playboy channel for the next like three hours. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> that wasn't just a one-time thing. It happened a lot. <laughs> so, Well, there you go. So, D. Al, welcome. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? I don't even know anymore. I got the my, '90s, baby. The '90s. I got, I got my pistachios right here, uh, sir. Here what go, is, what's on your mind so that we can uh, we can keep things moving? <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Where do I begin? Um, <laughs> I just say, yeah. I'll say, I'm Jenna sorry. Jameson. What are your thoughts on? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, she did really well in that cameo. The milk's in gone bad. Parts. The milk's anyway. gone bad. <laughs> nope. What's up, DL? <laughs> <laughs> by the way, that's a great description, by the way, Saggy. <laughs> the milk's gone bad. <laughs> DL's never going to get his back He's going to have to be able to get himself back together. <laughs> No, you know what? This is so funny. It's Tiffany and I literally just had like a 20 minute conversation about Jenna Jameson the other day because we were watching a commercial and something came on and it reminded me of something about Jenna Jameson from like back when I was a um a teenager because I remember watching the Jerry Springer show and this was like right as Jerry Springer was going from being like a legitimate show. Like I don't know if, if some of you are old enough to remember that, but like when when Jerry first started off, like he was like doing like the regular talk show thing right so he was like legitimate and then all of a sudden he discovered that formula of craziness and then it just went off the rails right but i'll never forget because the, the one episode that i remember where he went over where like it took a new thing was he had jenna jameson on and like this whole cast for some reason this is back in the 90s so i guess this was back when adult films were like you know this huge deal or something you know and now it's like nobody cares right like oh there's a new adult movie who yeah there's no, there's a billion other ones but um they had the entire cast of that movie on and so tiffany and i just had this whole discussion and we and i we were talking about about what jenna jameson looks like now and the many looks she's had over the years and uh so that was funny when you said <laughs> she milk. she's like a QAnon nutter now you know She's so she's insane. I, she's not right, nuts. We, de we derailed enough. Vince, this is your moment. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, we're talking about Jenna Jameson, who has right been now. derailed quite a bit. Dial? Has Go she ahead. been Dial? Derailed. <laughs> Poor guy. No, 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 no. no, no. He's not the, the, question, the question is, has, has Jenna Jameson be, been Dialed? What exactly does that mean? <laughs> D -Al? I don't know. There's a term for it, but I don't want to say it on this stream because it would be awful. Has she been? Are y'all trying to get me in trouble with my girlfriend? Like, what, oh, <laughs> what are y'all doing? Oh. What are y'all doing? <laughs> Dion's girlfriend's gonna be up here, I'm here like, who is this Jenna Jameson chick? <laughs> oh. Look at this guy. I don't know. One me. <laughs> I, I don't know what's going going on. You know, I should just talk about uh, somebody being D out, and I'm like, I didn't even make that term yet. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I gotta figure out what that Ooh, means. That's a, that's that's a great idea me. for a t-shirt for the channel. <laughs> yeah, you just got D out. You yeah, just got D out. <laughs> I'd probably do that for my channel, by the way. Subscribe, everyone. But anyway, <laughs> um, so wh uh, where was I? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I I'm, yeah, I'm giving you ideas now. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, I'll just say something real quick about the Oscars because I don't want to talk too much about it because I think the Oscars are shit anyway. But um, yeah, I think Chadwick Boseman should have won Best Actor, and it's not just because he passed away. I legit thought he did a really great performance in The Five Bloods and um, – Ma Radies. I thought he did a really good performance in both of those. And like, granted, I didn't see the movie that um, Anthony Mackie is in, so I can't say how good his performance is in that, but I just felt like he got snubbed mm -hmm. so bad. And it's like, that was his last chance to even win an award, too. That's what really just frustrated me. You couldn't give him that one thing, you know, before, after he passed away. So I don't know. That's just well, my old thing. Well, I don't know. The Oscars, you, you see how the Oscars, they do that makeup award too sometimes. Like Whoopi Goldberg won for Ghost, which was was, was hilarious because she didn't win for Color Purple. Um, Sounds they, like a they, fair trade-off. Well, I mean, yeah. didn't they give Peter Jackson the best uh, best picture for Return of the King? Because like they screwed him over with uh, Fellowship? Correct. Uh, oh. and, 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 it, and it's happened over and over again. You, you see like a Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet? Who I think is one of the greatest actresses of her era, one for the reader. It's a good movie. 
that's not what she should have won for. Eternal Sunshine on a Spotless Mind is her best performance, period, of her career. I, I, felt, I felt she had uh, a real good showing in Titanic. Maybe a couple of good showings. No, nah, she was nominated. It shouldn't have been. But she was nominated, but Eternal Sunshine on the Spotless Mind. That was a joke. Jim that, that was yeah. a joke, <laughs> William. We called Jim, a callback Jim joke. Jim, Jim Carrey, who I'm not the biggest fan of, that role he should have been nominated for it. But you got a bunch of old people. <clears throat> See, see, this is just, why uh, I don't you know, watch the Oscars, the Emmys, MTV Movie Awards. It's all just rigged in nonsense. So I really just but the MTV don't Movie watch Awards it. used to be that, cool. MTV is more reflective than Oscars Wait, are. A bunch well, of nine year old dudes. Well, I mean. well, here's the thing. The only reason why I would even watch them is for the performances they have in between because those are fun. But aside from that. The Oscars, I don't care who wins because it's not going to be anyone who, like you guys said, it's not going to be the right the right choice because you have a bunch of people in a boardroom making the decisions. And it's not us making decisions of, about if, if we believe their performance is the best, it's them. So it's just, I don't even bother. I will Damn only fast. watch them. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch the MTV Music Awards, not because I care who wins, because I like the music performances that they do. That's it. I mean, I know I'm not going to see Ridley Scott win one. I'm, I've accepted the fact that he, he's been screwed three times. I know Harrison Ford's probably not going to win one. But here's the thing that, that I, I came to that epiphany about the Oscars. Nine, about 70% of the people who've ever won for Best Actor or for Best Supporting Actor will never have the career that Harrison Ford did or has. Uh, right. They won't ever <clears throat> be in his – they won't even be able to hold his jock. They'll have that statue. But you see so many people that 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 have not won that award that are icons, and I'm just like, you know, it'd be nice to see Ridley Scott win one. You know, granted, you know, you know, he almost won one for Thelma and Louise, which was absurd. But uh, they found a way to give every award to Gladiator, but the one he should have won. Uh, so yeah. I'm, 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 well, I'm, you know, here's the thing though. Oh, I was just gonna say, like in 20 years or 50 years, people will remember Ridley Scott. No one's gonna remember Nomadland. Yeah, well, I was just gonna exactly. say to Street Corner Becky. Uh, Street Corner Becky said it's all opinions anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I would say yes and no. It does matter because people in Hollywood look at these winnings as like part of their resume. Like, oh, I, I, I'm i like a five-time winner, Grammy, Oscar winner person. So I, I would say... It yeah, sense. It's it, it, yeah, it it's does. Funny. It does count. It's it's opinions, but it's also opinions that you put on your resume to to move forward in the industry. Like, oh yeah, of course, if you have somebody who won a bunch of Grammys and Oscars, you know, they're they're an A list celebrity now because they won all those awards. Hey, yeah. I didn't I didn't de wrench it one step too far. I don't know what that was about. So I'm that we fixed that. Anyways, um, so yeah, we yeah. talk about Andy Circus never getting an award either. That's one thing just pissed me off about the Oscars. Andy Circus can't even get one award for any of his performances, and I think he's one of the greatest actors working today. I mean, the problem is not? he's in movies, but he's in movies that they don't they don't give attention to. Lord That's of the it. Rings, Lord of the Rings. You couldn't give him an award for that. Since no, the not for that performance. Now I agree with you, but their mindset there for that type of performance they weren't going to give a, a performance for motion capture or anything like that i think that's bs i think if you you either perform the role to, and, and compels me to, to love it or you didn't period but their mindset at that particular time was they don't that's just not a classification now human interest they're all over it boy they, they drop their drawers for that you know if it's coming of age oh my goodness you you, you may as well just craft your own statue but um, one of my biggest problems with the Oscars is like they have such a bias against genre films. It's yes, like, yes. <sighs> and, and, and what's crazy about that is they keep going on this whole every year. The Oscars have been trying to be more, uh, you know, diverse and inclusive, but it's never about the type of movies that they bring into the fold. You know, I mean, look at uh, I mean, they, they were trying with Black Panther. And then when that got kind of laughed at by the general establishment, do you remember what they did? They they mentioned. Oh, well, we might do a uh, the most popular most movie popular award. Movie, yeah, and like, then everyone, <laughs> it was like everyone's like, you're just going to give it to Black Panther, you know? And then they go, oh, oh, no, no, and then they dropped it, but they still nominated Black Panther anyway. So I don't know. I think what it is is if you look at the the viewership of the Oscars, it's been dropping like crazy. They no longer have a host because they just keep getting called out online for it. The last good host was Seth MacFarlane in 2013. Uh, he, Chris Rock. When when did Chris Rock do it? Was that the next Rock, year? Uh, yeah, he did. Do you remember he made the uh, the comment uh, about who? Um, he made a comment about somebody, and then Sean Penn came out and got pissed at him. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, well, it was, I mean, it was well Chris Rock it is was great. Very awkward, but it was hilarious. Yeah, Chris Rock is great, but I mean, like you know, they just they got scared. They tried doing the du- dual host, you know, with James Franco and and Hathaway, and that bombed. And then they brought out Jimmy Kimmel, and he's not funny, and you know, they not just for that. He's funny, but not in that setting. He's not. not he's not he's he. If he would allow himself funny. to be funny, he would be funny. If he would allow yeah. himself to go back to like kind of like the man show era of raunchiness, he would be a lot better. But he's so corporatized now; it's like it's very hard to watch. There's yeah, nothing gonna, real about him. The only way you're going to make the Oscars relevant is if you get rid of the geriatric people that are currently doing the voting and get people that are currently going. No, to they are. The they are. They absolutely no, I mean, have been. Faster, faster, no, faster enough, they, you know. no, no. Here's faster the thing. Enough. Here's the thing. They they actually ha- now have a rule where you have to be active in the industry. They will start you cutting you in, in 80. So, but it's like, but, but that doesn't, what, what we're talking about, there were like legacy, like legacy members, right? Cause remember there was like over 6,000 voters for the, for the Academy. And so a lot of those, like if you win an Oscar, you're always in, if you're nominated, you're always in. Um, but they, but they also want you to be working in the industry. So they're trying to get rid of those older voters that were maybe active in the eighties, nineties, early two thousands that yeah, haven't been active. Give them an executive producer credit and they'll stay on like mold. But that's, but that's I not good. Know. But not everyone's going to get the executive producer, you know, uh, like the, the, you know, the line producer for some movie that's in the Academy, they're not going to get, if they're not working they're you know, like did, should they vote on it? I don't know. I think it's, it's, they've done everything they can to make it so convoluted and, and people just stopped caring. We we now like to bitch about who wins rather than celebrate who wins. That's yeah, true. because it's 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 unrelatable. Like I said, the only way that that, that the the people in, in our demographic uh, get a movie in or get something that we watch if it's if it's human interest or coming of age. And I'm like, I'd rather drink out of the toilet than watch some of those movies. <laughs> wow, wow. Um, Andrew Christie with the ten dollars super chat says, uh, I think we all agree the awards session or award seasons just get less and less relevant each year. Tech is making incredible filmmaking tools accessible to everyone, which is starting to change the game. Exciting times. I think that that's what happened for music. Unfortunately, at the same time, you get a bunch of kind of bad stuff, you know, flooding the market as well. Uh, same thing happened with music. Um, so, so I agree with that. It just, it just, I remember there was a day in time, man, where I, I had to watch the Oscars. I wanted to watch the Oscars. I really, really cared about the Oscars. And it just seems like over the last few years, I've just cared and cared less primarily for the same reason that William just said there is like it, it the, the Oscars never seem to reflect anything that like I care about. And I'll tell you where they lost Tiffany. I can tell you right where they lost Tiffany. And this is, might be controversial for some people. Birdman. Tiffany hates Birdman. She hates that movie. She hates that movie with a passion. And it should be called it should be called Board Man. Oh, oh my that, god. That movie wasn't best movie. His performance, if you judge it against everybody else that that was nominated that year, his performance was worthy of an award. The movie, it's like um when uh, Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman won his Academy Award for a movie that I wanted to tear my eyes out when he wasn't on the screen. But his performance was worthy of an Academy Award. A lot of his performance. Wait, which, was, which one was that one? Um, Darkest Hour, I think it was. It, it, it was, and he played. Uh, he played Churchill. He won for playing Churchill. The oh, movie wasn't right. that good. He was excellent in it. You know, he was excellent in it. And the last time I cared about an actual actor who actually won for a role that he did that year was Heath Ledger. Because, be, I, be honest with you, outside of his his appearances in the movie, when I watch Dark Knight, I only watch his, his scenes. I, and you have you have three other Academy Award winners in that movie. He drives that movie in a way that you knew when you were watching him for the first five minutes. You were watching an, an, an a Robert De Niro, Martin Brando level performance. The first time that you see him on the screen, he drives that movie. So he is the best supporting actor. He's the last one to win that I thought won it for the year for that he was. Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, the Reverend was that was that his best movie? No. No, it's a good movie, but well, but he was like, "Oh, well, we took screwed him down. you." I, get an award. I, I got a yeah. hot take for you though. I I agree that Ledger did a good job, but it should have gone to no. Danny Jr. It should have gone to Danny Jr. What was he At, nominated for that year? He was nominated for um uh, Tropic Thunder as no, Kirk Lazarus. No, 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 no not no, Tropic, Tropic, Thunder. Tropic not Thunder. Tropic Thunder. He lost to Heath Ledger. He, no, he, lost no to Heath Ledger. he he didn't lose to Heath Ledger. They gave it to Heath Ledger. Let's be fair. Heath Ledger did a great job. But mm. that, but if you think about it, like mm. if you think about it, if you think about it in the in the process of how them accepting superhero movies at the time, they would not have they would not have given a Best Picture nomination to The Dark Knight as well. 
if I think has, so. I think if that, Ledger that would not have died, performance. If well, that was uh, a transcendent performance. Yeah, look, that look, wasn't look. just a comic book uh, performance. Yeah, look. yeah. Um, Tiffany, yeah. what did what did you think of Kingsman? I thought Kingsman kicked butt. What did you think of Birdman? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry. That's a meme. Oh yeah. But, um, oh, yeah. oh go, yeah. go ahead, Dia. This is about you, Dia. This was supposed to be your time, and we've totally. <laughs> de- you just feel like a part of the regular cast, man. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just. Yeah. Oh well, I got to be on more streams then. You, you do, man. man. You, you know what? We need to. We need to have you more on more streams. Uh, real quick, H Bart, so with his final super chest is itchy. The killer should win for William. Lol. Why not? Why not? <laughs> it there you wouldn't go. be any more absurd than anything else. There you go. Uh, so, yeah. Dia, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I, I have to disagree with you on that, um, Jarvo, because like, and, okay, this is coming from, okay, Here, here's my hot take for everyone. Everyone, strap in. I did not love The Dark Knight. So this is coming from a person that didn't love The Dark Knight. But Same I, here. Same yeah, here. But um, I thought Ledger's performance was, and this is coming from someone who lo- who really enjoyed Tropic Thunder, and I thought Robert Downey Jr. was the best part of that movie. Definitely. I think, I think Ledger's performance was better than Downey's, to be yeah. honest. Because like, there was a part of me that when I was watching Downey in Tropic Thunder that I still was being reminded that it's Downey trying to do a performance. With Heath Ledger, I didn't see Heath Ledger at all. I only saw the oh, joke. Wow. And I didn't think because I don't think I didn't think Heath Ledger was that good of an actor up until I saw The Dark Knight. And just seeing his transformation in that, he turned yeah. into a completely different person. Downey, while his performance was very entertaining, I it's not like it's it's more you don't take it as serious, you know. I still enjoyed his performance, but it just as far as the transformation to a different person, Heath Ledger, I think, did better. I felt the chill. I felt the chill while I was watching it. And like I said, you just knew you were watching something special. And like I said, Robert Downey Jr., that's the only comedy I've paid to see in the last 20 years is Tropic Thunder. I don't pay to see comedies. That movie, that movie is amazing. But right. I paid to see that movie. That's how good I thought he was in it. But Heath Ledger was one of those top five performances. He, I, I, he, there's only a handful of performances that you can put that Joker in. And for as morass as that movie was, to to for him to drive that, it's like like Silence of the Lambs. Uh, Anthony Hopkins is on screen for 17 minutes, and he drives that movie. And that's what Heath Ledger did. He wasn't in every second of the movie, but he hangs over that movie. Uh, kind of like Dark Side does in Dark Knight Justice League. He's not in it all the time, but he hangs over the movie. But I think more so with Heath Ledger, he deserved that award, dead or alive. I'm um, so I got to disagree with you, dead or alive. That was Heath Ledger's award, you know. And it's unfortunate that he passed before he had a chance. Only two people have gotten it posthumously, you know, and they've both been Australians. That's kind of oh, Peter Peter Rabbit just said actually Tom Cruise. I I forgot Tom Cruise was actually fantastic in Trump oh Les Grossman. So, so, yeah, Les Grossman. I didn't know that was him. <laughs> When I was in the movie, I di- I'm sorry, I did not know that was him because I saw it on a preview. Right. Uh, I, I saw it on a preview first, and I had to host people, and then I, I I went to go see it the next day because I couldn't. There was not enough people. There was not enough seats for me to watch it, so I gave away tickets for it for a movie I couldn't see, and I, I but I could hear him, you know, cussing because I was standing. So I go and see it the next day because nobody told me, and I did not know that was him. He had his mm-hmm. giant hands, and he had all the ball. I'm like, holy cow! And that, that Tom, Tom, this is, this is another one who doesn't have an Oscar. Tom Cruise has got a career that you know most of those people would melt their Oscars down and, and give them away if they could have just a bad movie. If you could have Magnolia, they right. would. They were probably better than most of these uh, best actors. So you know, that's just me though. Yeah, I I completely agree. I'm I'm a big Tom Cruise person. I know that's not a popular thing to say, but like I love Tom Cruise, boy. Yeah, he commits to every role that he's in. You got it. Well, well, that. well. You know what? I would drop both of you if I wasn't afraid that I wouldn't be able to bring it back in. No, I'm <laughs> yeah, I know you're not a big fan. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a big Tom Cruise fan. There's I love I love him in in Tropic Thunder. I mean, I think he's great in Tropic Thunder. Top okay. Gun Maverick. I cannot wait. I, I'm looking forward to Top Gun Maverick. I saw Top Gun for the first time uh, a couple of years ago. Well, now, dang, it's, I guess it's been like three years ago. Uh, but uh, that was the first time I'd ever seen it, and I, I enjoyed it. Hey, I'll tell you what. Why don't we do this? Um, you know, I was well, I got I got to get going you, you anyway. Get going? Okay. All right, Yeah, man. I got to be well, up early with the kids. So how, I'm gonna... how, about we, how about we drop Jarbo DL? Do you want to stick around for a little while? Yeah, I'll stick around. All right. We, we were joking about you feeling like you're part of the regular cast. We'll, we'll – uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stick around. All right, we'll, we'll get stick glowing around. eyes. 
Hey, yeah, man, getting Matt, going, Matt, yeah. Matt yeah. In, all, in all serious though, seriousness, though, man, you know what, dude? Thank you. Thank you uh, for your friendship and thank you for uh, for sticking up for me. And, you know. Oh, yeah, no I, problem, man. I, 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 I appreciate that, man. And, and you know, I know who you are and I always got your back, you know. Is my yeah, twinsie I, leaving? Yeah, I got to go. I got to go and uh, uh, get some sleep. So. Oh, okay. I'm my still. Twinsie. Yeah. Oh, did you change your avatar? No, you didn't change your avatar again. No, you got to do gonna. the right way. You got to get the old avatar, then put the laser eyes on that one. So it's my face on that body, which I'm not against, actually. Uh, <laughs> look, you're being a little thick in the back end. Nothing wrong with that, you know? Did you Holy just shit. say that you wanted your your face on that body? Have See, you seen that body? We, that body we, is tight, dude. That body is not avoid the sexual talk. <laughs> listen, like, listen, listen. You cannot avoid it. I'm, it's it's after dark. Yes, yeah, true. That's All right, it's somewhere, after dark. Somewhere it's after dark. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Matt Jarbo. I'll see. Good night, I'll see Matt. everybody. Right. Uh, be sure to give Enosh all your money. Oh, but real quick, real quick, uh, Ryan, I did get the package in the mail. Thank you very much for the graphic novel. I'm looking forward to reading it, oh, nice. and uh, I will talk to you guys all later. All right, buddy. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and, Jesus. And, 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 he, and just like that. Matt Jarbo Oof, was gone, but the children say that he would come back next time someone grabbed a polar bear. Um, all right. All right. Uh, we're going to move right along. Uh, next we, uh, so, so we, I, I want to get everybody in and we have, man, who we got it. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people to get through still. So my goodness. Okay. So, um, so let's, uh, I, I, I know we've spent a lot of time and I apologize for this uh, up front. Uh, I apologize for this. Sometimes with topics we get on, we, we go a little bit longer. Uh, so please just, just have what you want to talk about, you know, down and, and we'll, uh, we will do our best to stay on topic. It's all Matt here. Jarbo's fault. It is it, mostly it's Matt Jarbo's fault. Matt yeah. Jarbo's I mean, fault. you know, we all know that, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, this is not to cut anybody off. I want everybody to have their time and everything, but, uh, let's, uh, Let's try to make sure that everybody else uh, has their time as well. Okay. I just want to make sure. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, coming to the show now, uh, Mr. Anthony Chobot. Uh, we're so glad to have Anthony here. And uh, so uh, are you are you uh, ready, my friend? Okay. We're going to bring him in uh, real quick. What's hey, up, everybody? Anthony? What's up? What's, What's up, up, man? Anthony? What up, Saggy? Cool, What's up? I'm How doing are you? great. It's good. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. cool 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 good to see you man good, good to see you thank you thank you good thank you so much you. uh anthony anthony shouts us out a lot on uh instagram and other places yeah. so it's uh it's always uh yeah i got a hundred and something subscribers on my youtube channel 196 wow nice. wow Sorry. cool oh cool, man keep grinding mm -hmm. yep what what's saggy yeah i was uh, telling you keep grinding for those those followers yep i'm trying to get a youtube award <laughs> yeah, you're like yeah you're not gonna get it from the views, oscars right? Uh -huh. Oscars were, 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 were kind of crappy, you know. They they left out Naya Rivera. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, look at I got. Oh, for the memorial. Okay. Yes. Oh. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, I got that drift door. Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Party time. Excellent. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Queen with Bohemi Rhapsody. Uh, real awesome. quick, H parts H parts with a two dollars super chat says we lost our lord. Oh, Matt Jarbo was a good guy, you know. I'm still here, guys. Come on. Mm. I, yeah. we're... <laughs> and, and then Matt was gone. And Matt was gone. Yeah, yeah, missed him. So what's so, on your uh, what's on your mind tonight, Anthony? What are you, well, what are you thinking what's about? My, on my mind is the Oscars. They did. Oscars were boring and everything. I watched it and everything. It was a snooze fest. Did I add a lot of people because of the ongoing pandemic? Mm. I'm working on my book. I'm working on my memoirs for 2023. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, and I'm working on four part biopic with trauma. Really? Okay. Yeah, but 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 we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Unfortunately, Lloyd is busy right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, our lawyer is super busy. He's getting ready to do trauma dance in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Okay. I we missed our performance with him, damn it. Two, two trauma dance I went to. Hmm. Yeah, it was good. You know, I can't wait for a hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost in that movie. 
Really? Yeah, really? Gomez Adams. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Boy, it's a great I, news. I had a mustache. I had going ready, but they, they told me, no, you're not going to be in it, unfortunately. Oh. It was, it was you had a chance to meet him? Have you had a chance to meet Lloyd? Yeah, he's, he's super nice. He's he, we, yeah. we can't we we spitball ideas on Instagram and everything. Uh, he he's a very nice guy. Very nice guy. I met all the trauma people. They're very nice. You know. He comes out to Vegas all the time. When we when he comes out for AVN, we I get him to come him. down <laughs> and, and do okay. one of his movies. And he yeah, gave me, well, a, I got him on video. He gave me a trauma diploma. I was so I, 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 I love to get diploma. a trauma diploma. I love to get a trauma yeah. diploma. That's he surprised me with it too. I was like, I was shooting him in an interview, and then yeah. all of a sudden he he hands me this wooden plaque thing with a trauma diploma. But the thing it. is that I haven't got my trauma diploma yet. I, I'm, I'm that that's the one thing that's eluded me right now. It's cool. You'll yeah, get one. I'm, I'll get one. I'll get one when the time is right. And since pandemic's over, man. When this pandemic is over and Comic Con, New York Comic Con, I'm excited for it. It's my fifth one. Hmm. I've been to four of them. It's happening this year? Yeah, it's happening this year. Oh, Last year we didn't get it. You know, this year it's gonna happen. I posted oh, I, it on my Instagram and everything. I really? I thought wait. I thought it got canceled. No, well, San, NYC, Diego, San, San Diego. Diego did. San Diego. San Diego oh. did. Okay. They canceled NYCC, that. NYCC, you know, NYCC uh is happening. Uh, I'm yeah. NYCC's later on. That's why. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm excited to Good about G four's return. G four. G four TV. They're coming back with gaming. Yeah, yeah they're they're yeah, coming they back yeah. with um. It, yeah. And I, uh, I heard a rumor that that Jessica Chabot is actually my cousin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Wow. Yeah, but I don't know if that's true or whatnot. Well, you better yeah, do a, a, what do you call it? Ancestry.com. Ancestry.com. My, my uncle says Jessica Chabot is my cousin. That if she, if Jessica Chabot is my cousin, that means Blair is my cousin-in-law, and Emer his, his his son Emerson is my nephew. Hmm. So here's here's a fun thing that happened today. I was at mm -hmm. church, and this guy comes up to me after church, and he goes, "Hey, I heard that you're into big into superheroes and stuff." And I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "He's like, yeah, my son really loves Superman and Batman." I'm like, "Oh, that's cool." He's like, "Yeah," and uh, and I was in the uh, Batman v Superman movie. And I was like, oh, nah. what? Like, tell me more. I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a, I look like a superhero kind of guy. <laughs> and so uh, apparently, uh, because, you know, they filmed Batman v Superman here in Michigan, down in Detroit. And so uh, nice. he was he was an extra and he was part nice. of the thing. He was, he was telling me the whole story about it. Like, you know, there were thousands of people lined up, nice. man, nice. for uh, to, nice. to get into that nice. movie. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. I got a tons of comic books in my room. I got a yeah. whole bunch of comic books in my storage bed. Nice. You protect them? Keep them safe? Yeah, I keep them safe. I don't want to get fall into the wrong hands, you know. I got uh, I got this bad boy right here. Well, what do we got here? Hold on a second. Wolverine. Let me, let me, let me Ooh, pull it. Wolverine. From 95. Yep. Oh, there you oh, go. That's nice. Awesome. Nice. Thank you. Wolverine's awesome. Wolverine's Thank awesome you. and everything. Yeah, Heck Wolverine's yeah. one of my favorite. Wolverine's my favorite. Wolverine, actually. I don't think they treat him right, Pop. I hope Tyron Everson plays that man. Yeah. What, in the newer that, ones? Newer ones, yeah. That issue yeah. you had was part of one of their better runs from 75 all the way up to 95 was actually the Cooper run. Awesome, yeah, that was, that was that was actually a good run. It was after I got, of, and, I got yeah. a lot of graphic novels. I got in my room and everything. I got a whole bunch of comic books in, in my storage. Hmm. Nice. You read the Wolverine Frank Miller? Yeah. Read that? Yeah, 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 I got that in storage. I got that in storage. Good. Nice. Keep, that. Keep those forever. Yeah. No one is not going to fall into the wrong hands. And my mom said, don't sell your things. Uh-uh. -oh. They're going to be mm. worth money. Right. They well, you know what, though, Anthony? Those. You know what, Anthony? Even if they're not worth money, they're worth something to you. And that's what I find, like, with all the stuff that I collect and everything. That it's like, you know what, not everything is a gold mine. Not everything ends up worth being, you know, being worth a lot of money. But you know what? If you can look back on it and it and it brings a smile to your face it about does. a time about a time in your life or whatever that you, you know, bought that or had that or whatever, then that's uh that that means the world, man. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I'm trying you know? to buy a house, you know, one day so I can put all the storage stuff in my basement. Man cave. Get a man, man cave. cave. Yeah, well, right now, I got this apartment for now. I hear you, man. Where the heart is. I hear you. 
Well, hey, man, I'm, I'm glad you're doing well, Welcome man. To my YouTube channel. It's YouTube.com, Anthony Chabot. There you go. There you go. There's his name right there, guys, down at the bottom there. Thank you. You have a good night. Hey, you too, nice. man. Well, Thank you, Anthony, for stopping doing? by. Always good. To, always good to he see pulled, him. He pulled him at Jarbo. <laughs> he did. He did. He was here, and then he was gone. He pulled him at Jarbo. David Copperfield. <laughs> Anthony, it was a pleasure meeting you. Hey, I don't, have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen that? Uh, I'm I'm sorry. Just with the, with the way that the earlier the night was going. Have you ever seen that uh, that what's it like a meme video or whatever where uh, it's called uh, Dave, David Copperfield? No, I don't, I don't think get out your so, get so, out. so the guy, no, the guy, the guy is sitting there like he, he, he's like, dude, he's like, he's like, hey, you want to see a magic trick? To this girl, and and he's like, okay, here, you go. and he's got like a, a thing that he puts over his his hand and everything, and you can't see his hand. He's like, all right, and then I say the magic words, Abra Kadabra, and the girl standing there, and all of a sudden it's like, and then he goes like that, and then it go, then you hear this whisper and this like this tingly like looking uh, script, and it goes. David Copperfield. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Get out your stream. Get out your own stream. Uh, get, wow. out, get out my own stream. <laughs> get out right. Now I'm running the channel. How are you guys doing? My no, name is D.L. Vince. How's it going? <laughs> oh, good. How are you? Thanks for wow. having us. D.L., awesome. thanks for having us. Awesome. I have two channels. I have the original channel, which is D.L. Vince, and now I am taking over the Poindexter Lounge from Thou Odd. How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Very good, very good. Here are my compa compatri compatriots. Can't speak. Fellow geek. <laughs> geek. Saggy oh, Miller. Nerd. William, how's it going? Oh, it's, it's going, going good. Great, how man. are you? Thank every, you for having us on your show. Yes, of thank course. you for having us on our sh on your show. I appreciate this. I mean, I, I'm so honored to, and blessed to be on the Point Dexter Lounge with you, Vince. You, you, are, you are amazing. Thank you so much. Oh. I want a lot of <laughs> I, I love those. I just mean, still control the drops, even though he's not. <laughs> I'm just afraid of what he's gonna come back wearing. Because every time he disappears, he comes back wearing something silly. The, oh wait! Why don't you set aside an hour or two? We'll have a few drinks and a cup of coffee. I don't drink. Great, Enosh just goes streaming. Enosh comes back as freaking now. Joe Exotic all of a sudden. We're this I know his like... hands are doing something productive instead of. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, William, I mean, he's, he's, he's got to have both hands to do this. So. William, oh my god! Well, I'm talking about like getting a get up together. It's where putting on like a wig. It doesn't come out with Ultimate oh. Warrior magazine. It doesn't. You guys, 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 you guys. I hate the word content. When people say they're putting out content, it means they're putting out garbage filler material because they have nothing to say. With that being said. I have now completed my content for the day. Who is that guy? I have no I idea. No. I, I, I have no idea. All I know is, <laughs> uh, see, I no, knew it. My God. Exactly, exactly what I told you was going to happen. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's, that's miles for what I was expecting. Oh, there you go. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, oh. <laughs> that will go to bed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, okay, so we have we have our next guest. Uh, good friend of the of the channel. You guys see him in the in the chat all the time. Uh, Black Ops, JMB01. Was it is it Black Ops Jam? Black Ops Jam01. We'll see. We'll find out. What's up, Black Ops? What's good, y'all? What's good? I like I like that yeah, avatar. I love avatar. I like the yeah, yeah. I love that avatar. That's a that's a strong avatar right there. For sure, for sure. I was just I was just saying hi to that man. I was literally just saying hi to that man. Yeah. Dark side? Yeah, I just said hi to Dark Side. Yep. Did he not vaporize you? No, he didn't vaporize me. No, he loves me. Ray Porter oh. loves me. He loves Tiffany. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's be honest. Ray Everybody Ray loves, loves Tiffany. Tiffany. I am just I'm just here by default when it comes to that. Like Tiffany is, is the real star of the show. Yes, I run the day-to-day -day operations, but re the reality is is if everybody could just look at Tiffany all day, they they'd be fine. <laughs> is that why you have that wig so you can pretend to be Tiff so you can get all the clout? <laughs> I believe it. There goes that word again. What the hell? Are you wearing a pink? Never mind. Oh, boy. You haven't seen this, William? <laughs> oh, boy. William, you haven't seen this? Apparently not. I just... This this was uh, the first... Okay, so this this has to do with Ray Porter because uh, Tiffany got to interview Ray Porter first on the League of Mayhem, and that's how I met him. But the thing is, the first time that Tiffany ever met the Nerd Queens, um, I was streaming, and I had Nana and Cole on, 
And Tiffany was upstairs and I asked for something. I, I, I didn't get a grab my coffee or whatever. And I forgot in the other room. And I said, Hey, Tiff, can you bring me my coffee real quick? And she said, yeah, well, she came in wearing her Harley Quinn pink onesie. Okay. And so she came in with that and whatever, and kind of snuck up behind me, scared me. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Right. And she's right behind me. And so, uh, so then they interviewed Ray Porter and the girls had said, had jokingly said, Hey, Enash can come in and meet Ray Porter. Cause I had never met Ray Porter at that point and said, Enash can come in and meet Ray Porter. But, uh, jokingly said, but he has to wear the pink onesie. Right. You know, it was kind of a joke. Cause they, they really liked the fact that Tiffany was wearing that thought it was fun and everything. And, and, um, and so I took it seriously. I was like, I don't take myself seriously. So I'll, I'll wear the pink onesie. And so I snuck up behind her. And I was wearing the pink onesie and it was just kind of a fun thing. We had a good time with it. And then somebody ended up drawing a picture of dark side with Fatma, uh, cooking and, uh, and dark, dark side wearing the onesie. And, uh, so it's, it's been a fun thing. So that was, that was a, that was a great moment. So, so black ops, man, what's going on and, uh, how you doing? Pretty good. Uh, pretty late you know it's like three in the morning i got college classes tomorrow but it's always a party here so i thought i would drop by and uh boy i love the west coast up. private chat party private oh for chat sure party. heck yeah the private doing? chat the private chat, chat private, is, chat. Uh, private chat is uh is is kicking tonight yeah it for sure Wait is. For the public one to go to hell <laughs> <laughs> it's coming <laughs> Hmm. So what's on your mind tonight, Black Ops? Uh, nothing much. I've just been uh, watching like all the Marvel movies just because I need I needed some content to watch. You know, got finals coming up. I'm like, you know, I can't play video games all the time in my downtime. So I'm like, you know, I got to kick back and watch some series in the meantime. And I started watching them all. And I'm like, how I like watch them in order like they have a timeline thing on disney plus and so mm -hmm. i started watching them it was like the captain america and then captain marvel so i haven't seen that one previously so then i watched that one and then at the end it talks about like the tesseract and how like it was i don't know it was consumed by that cat thing i don't know what that thing is that thing is so weird but then like watching both of those i'm like how does it go from being in the cat's stomach or whatever that thing is to like the bottom of the ocean? So I was like, that was like my big question because I don't know everything about it. And so I'm like, I'm watching those movies. I'm like, so how does it go from this to that? Hmm. I'll tell you why, because they didn't give a shit about Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they, didn't give a shit. they just literally shit out that <laughs> movie. And it was like, continuity? Oh my oh, God. Continuity? <laughs> it's going to make a billion dollars. And we got That's Brie it. Larson, oh, Oscar winning or Oscar nominated. I don't give a crap because I don't like one. Larson. She's a winner. She's a oh, winner. yeah. Oscar winner Brie Larson. It's going to make a billion hey. dollars. We don't care about hey, continuity. Don't, don't tell it to. Oh, uh, what's his name? Mike Zero. Don't tell the Mike Zero. He might, he might, he might be offended by that one. Oh, can, can, I just say, all can I just say I found a new love for for D D L right now? I found a new love for him. I mean, he took over the stream, so I don't yeah, know. He, he was a host for a minute. Well, D L, you're next. You're next. <laughs> that Saggy usually finds somebody she loves new every week. And, yeah, she'll, uh, you, she, she'll be your. She'll have you as her icon now. <laughs> we'll be She's twinsies. Fakes. Wait, yeah. Wearing, wearing some glowing eyes. Yeah, we're gonna be twinsies, like me and yeah, my turbo. That's why I had to roll with the avatar when I joined the stream. I was gonna turn on the camera, but I mean it's dark as hell in my room right now. But uh Segi got the glowing eyes, so I'm like, I, I mean my, my avatar got glowing eyes, so I thought I had to roll with it. Yeah, we're twinsies. We're all twinsies. Yeah, for sure. Matt Matt Jarbo says uh Enash can't do the sexually charged humor like I can. Um, because I have, I have to like, you know, check myself, but, but I mean, but, but you, but you can't dress up like I can, Matt. <laughs> Probably he does. Like um, excuse me. Excuse me. Enosh. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to dunk on you real quick because, um, <laughs> I, I no, no, no. Go back. Go dunk, back to dunk. my, go Stay, back to dunk, me. Dunk, dunk, <laughs> go back <laughs> to me, sir. Cause yeah, I'm going to just dunk on you real quick and show you how <laughs> foolish so, you look. So, 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 so we just like, ladies, look at me. Now look at Saggy. Look at look at this beautiful, beautiful now look, Matt Jarbo. Now look at me. Now look at Matt Jarbo. Now oh. don't look at Matt Jarbo because it'll burn your eyes. Now, now look at Matt Jarbo. What is happening here? 
He's I beautiful. have no idea. <laughs> Matt Jarbo's I made him beautiful. Passing, and how dare the you? Field over online or something? I mean, well, going? no, Enosh just came with that heat trying to think he looked better than Matt Jarbo, and I just showed him, everyone oh. in the world that I made Matt Jarbo beautiful. What does that say? Zero sum? I'm Look still more him. beautiful than Matt Jarbo, though. How dare you? Look at that beauty. He is a, he is a, an angel. Come on. Come on. He is girl. a goddess. Get come out on. of here. You come can't on, girl. compete come with on. Matt Jarbo girl, right now. Girl, girl, put put my head on that thing and, and who's 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 gonna win that? Oh, I, whoa, you whoa, asked for your head oh, on release right. the Enosh right. cut. We are right. drifting. We give, are give drifting. Me, give into, me a few uh, minutes. Give me oh, come on. Right come on. You know, girl. You know, girl. Like, yes, I think yes, and make give me a few minutes now. Oh boy. You know. Hey, did Black Ops have a question? Matt Matt's so confused. Matt's so confused. Oh boy. Yeah, well, we were talking. We were talking about. Uh, we were talking about the tesseract, and uh, look, you oh, know, there you go. I, I no honestly, threat. yeah, and in the cosmic and, cube, <laughs> yeah, D, uh, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, like the the whole, um, man, I don't know, the whole tesseract thing. Like, I don't know, I I gotta rewatch some of those movies just because, like, there's so much to those. There's there's twenty some odd movies. Yeah, and like even though we all kind of know the story because we've watched it, it's like hard to remember some of the the finer details if you haven't watched it recently. All right, you know, I started rewatching all of them because uh, my girlfriend hasn't watched most of them, so we're rewatching all of them, and then um, we're eventually I'm eventually doing a ranking with my other friend who has a channel. But, but um, yeah, just re yeah, <laughs> Captain Marvel, man, I really tried to give it a chance. I really did. It, like it's stuff like the Tesseract and like the cat scratching Nick Fury's eye, even though we were led to assume that was a more epic story towards that eye. But no, it's this alien cat from Men in Black that just scratches his eye. And well, at least it wasn't the ball chinian. That was so. At weird. least it wasn't the ball chinians. I mean, hey, <laughs> we got scrolls in there. Why as well get a ball chin in there? Right. You know, that'd been better. Had been better. With Mm -hmm. yeah that movie was something else you know and here's the thing here's the thing you know what um uh i i don't feel like like captain marvel was like bad for the reasons why a lot of people thought it was going to be bad and i don't think it's like the worst movie ever it's just boring no, it's yeah. not thor dark world i mean thor yeah. dark world like i wish i could unwatch most of the thor movies yeah, it's Actually, just, I, I, I really like the first Thor film. Yeah, when I, I, well, I love the I love that first Thor really movie. Yes. Yeah. When I when I rank Marvel movies, I if I I already know what the last three are going to be. Mm -hmm. I already know what the bottom three and they're, they're they're all three of the Thor movies. So I I I, I, I it makes it easier for me to rank them because I know what my bottom three are. And Thor: Dark World may be one of the worst comic book movies. It's Howard the Duck bad for me. But oh, I, now you hush your mouth. That's pretty much you, how I feel about Iron Man two and three. I think they're god awful. You hush your mouth about <laughs> Howard the Duck. You hush your mouth about Howard the Duck and the Code Key. Like, I love, I love Howard the Duck. I, Howard the Duck is like one of my childhood favorites, man. I just loved it. I love it. It's like oh, wait a minute. The okay, Super okay, Mario. We, we had the same childhood as far as the years. The years we're only a couple years apart. What happened, man? Howard the Duck. Uh, I'll tell you what, what happened. happened. I, Leah Thompson happened. That's not. Um, mm, mm, I've mm, I've mm. hugged that woman. I have hugged <laughs> that woman. You can all just hush your mouths. I've hugged that, and not just hugged that woman. That woman gave me a a a full on like bear hug. Leaned her She's head. Lusting in after me. a duck. There's I'm, implied interspecies. Yeah, man. I don't like, care. I don't care. I don't what do you think it's going to look like? She leaned That's in. That's some bestiality right I, there. I, 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 I'm, let me tell you something. Ever ever again. I, when I hugged Leah Thompson, Tiffany was standing right there and said, I wish I had a picture because it was it was the sweetest thing I'd ever seen. I told her, we had a moment when we met her uh, with the boys, and I told her that my boys, you know, I, I watched her. I watched Leah Thompson with her fans and it was so amazing to watch her with her fans because she really cared. She spent the time. She really loved each and every person and just, and just treated everybody with respect and some love. And when I told her, I said, you know, I said, I just watched you. And I said, I just really like the way that you interact with your fans. And I said, my, and thank you for being the way you were with my kids. My kids uh, responded so well to her. I said, they love your movies. We had just watched Howard the duck. I said, oh. you know, I said we we you know obviously they love the back to the. Did she even own up to that movie? Did she? Oh yeah, I know a lot oh, of yeah. actors are like, oh yeah, oh my gosh, she was in I Jaws was three, dude. She was in Jaws three. Hey, in three D, don't in three D, in three D. Right, that but, had more entertainment value than her ultimately making out with a duck. 
Yeah, she didn't make out with an duck. awful soundtrack. That he, soundtrack. Listen, she she like, was Howard, messing with Howard. Howard. But it's implying that they had sex. Oh, no, it does not. Yeah, no, but, no, implied, no, no, no way around that. No, you all just hush your mouths for just oh, a second. Boy. It does not imply that at all. Yes, she, it does. She's yes. messing around <laughs> with him because he because he is there and he's supposed to be this like playboy kind of guy back on his planet. And when she's, she's messing around with him because he makes this, you know, comment about her about, well, maybe I should stay in, and you know, uh, um, she's gonna study. That duck, Hold on. Hold on. he's no, she's, he says, maybe I should stay and study the female anatomy here on this planet. And she goes, Oh really ducky. And like, she puts it back on him. She would, she's pulling like probably something like saggy would pull. If Howard, the duck showed up at her house, like no, kind of no. try, trying to, to, to flirt with him and make him feel uncomfortable. And she does that never intending for anything to happen. Nothing's yes, ever going to happen they went as far as they could in, the, in 1980, whatever. If this, this was is 2002, also this, yeah. Come on, she was gonna bang that duck. That's we like saying were, Wally Coyote. She was not gonna bang the duck. And never I would have. Wally Coyote, Wally Coyote was Lord. chasing the roadrunner because I, I he would was have. Wait, eat him. Hold on. Speaking of hotness, hello. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> hello. How are you? Oh boy. And, <laughs> and you're ginger. I like it. I'm not. Oh uh, Lord. Uh, it's, it's just the facial hair. You got a guy I'm blonde up here. Okay. okay. Jarbo's face. By, by the way, I want. I want uh, everyone Saggy to know. Saggy two in one stream. <laughs> By the way, I want everyone to know. Uh, Enosh, will you check Twitter, please? Oh boy, I oh, knew no. it. Oh, we're not gonna do this. Oh no. What's on Twitter? Oh, no. What's up? What's on Twitter? <laughs> I, I was making a hint of this and asking about uh, it in the private it's, chat it's, it's, oh, when she's gonna do these deepfakes again. And oof. oh dear Lord! Oof. Oh dear God! No! <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I'm excited to see this. I don't even know no, if I want to see Where's this at? <laughs> oh my god. I don't know if I want to see this. Is, I've already seen this video with somebody else's head. Why is it so much different for me? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I don't want to see that. Oh dear Release God. It. Oh dear Lord. No. Oh sweet Jesus. I'm scared to see what I'm, work I'm of art is. Oh no, this is awful. Awesome. Oh, okay. Hey, do, you do gotta take that down, Saggy. You gotta do not that challenge down. me. That is gonna ruin people's lives right now. <laughs> Oh That's worth the stuff on oh, humans. Jesus. <laughs> That's creepier than the whole reveal. Thing that like, here's my hip. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like it better with my Enosh. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I told curves. you, didn't I? Didn't I tell you? I That's told a you. Toss up of two horrors. <laughs> with night, pick your nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, hey, please, please, please. I can't. It's I, beautiful. I make men beautiful. It's fine. It's twenty twenty one. We can do this. Okay. I told I told you you would, I told you you would prefer the, the Enosh version over the Matt Jarvis. Th this version. is the Enosh Wait, cut. Tears into the screen is so <laughs> terrifying. Right this now. is the Enosh cut right there. So there you go. Oh, Ryan said Matt pulled it off better. Ooh. Oh, oh boy. we have some competition now. Mm. Wow. You're all not safe from the reason. We went, we went from the woman with sex with a duck to that, and I don't know if there's a big gap in between, to be honest with you. Boy, hey William, now. William, you're next. I want to make you sexy. Oh, oh boy. Impossible. No. Impossible. Okay. Yeah. I, I, listen, I've lived in this body for, for a long time. I know what's possible and what's impossible. What you just said is impossible. Well, that's, that's the best. thing. Is she's taking you out of that body. And, she's, uh, she's gonna do it. She's gonna do it. I have to now. He challenged me. What, I'll what, be what's back. The worst, what's the worst you could do? Oh, no. Make it's me look happening. like the sleeve stack that I'm already. Oh yeah. Cool. It's it's coming. Okay. You just open Pandora's box. The right? William first. It's been oh, open since I was born. <laughs> Come on. The William verse is yeah. happening. Oh, oh sweet lord. Oh sweet this, lord. This is getting ridiculous. This is getting crazy now. It is. It is. Snaggy, Snaggy Melons is 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 just crazy. I, I just, Dude, she uh, goes hard to those deep fakes. This is true. This is very true. What's I going on? What's in the water in Boston, man? What's going on there? Hey, uh, hey, hey, blackout. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hey, I live I, I live outside of Flint, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um uh anyways uh hey uh black ops do you mind if i bring one more person in real quick sure no all problem right. all right nice let's bring in luke what's up luke what up how you doing luke doing good doing good so far good 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 welcome to the party 
We're just look what uh, you walked into, dude. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we do not know what's going to happen after this point. Just let you know. You so just never know what's going to happen. That's the beauty of the Poindexter Lounge. It's unpredictable. <laughs> You're always going to get something new. Always a party. Always a party. There you go. It's like an online party for all of our hey, friends. Hey, put Jarbo's face on the plunger. <laughs> Um, so hey Luke, what's uh what what are you doing tonight, man? What's on your mind tonight? Um not well right now I have a, a beer can I might drink later on tonight. Um I might drink it late. I don't know. I might drink it just to settle down, play some among us. I don't know how I'm gonna be doing that when I'm tipsy, but it's gonna be um uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. But uh I didn't see the oxer the uh, oxers. I thought that that was pretty boring, to be honest with you. I gave up on it like two years ago. I was like, eh. Then um, I just got thought about the, like the what is it the DC. I was like, you think they're gonna do the multiverse thing? I think they're gonna try. I think they're gonna try. I, you know, I I I'm hoping. I mean, at this point, I think that they're gonna get the Flash movie actually made. Um, the question is gonna be how well that's received and. And how good that movie is! I think I think that I think that only DC could screw up that movie uh, to do something as big as bringing back uh, Ben Affleck, Ezra Miller, and especially bringing back you know a fan favorite like Michael Keaton. Only only Warner Brothers could mess up that movie, and we all know that they have a track record of screwing things up. And I, I feel like only they could screw that up. And I don't want them to, but they've already gotten off to the rockiest start that they possibly can. And so, you know, I'd be lying if I said that it, that I'm not worried. It, it'll be it'll be cool to see if Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller is running right to the Speed Force, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, then he sees himself vanish and see like, where is this going to happen at. It's kind of like lead up to like it's kind of like how Grant Gustin's Flash. They, they kind of, I don't know what they did to that show, but, you know, they kind of knew that he's going to vanish at some point, maybe in season 20. But uh, uh, just, it just, I don't know what they're going to do for this Flash stuff, though. I, I don't think, okay. I don't think the Flash TV show is going to get to season 20, though. <laughs> I, no, 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 not no, this no, case. no, no, I, no, 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 no. I, I'm just, I'm just making this, me uh, yeah. sarcastic because yeah, it's yeah. so, so long. And I just want this thing to end. I want him to vanish. I want him to just be gone. Me too, bro. <laughs> That'd be funny if he kicked here. off the multiverse in the last episode of Flash. If he kicks yeah. it off, and it's not Ezra Miller's Flash, it's him kicking it off. Mm. Uh, that would that would be a good way to do it. The problem is, is by the time the Flash uh, the Flash Point movie gets made, how much damage are they going to do as far as making it? By the time it gets out, is it going? What he does is it going to be relevant? I mean, are you going to care about any of these? You can only care. The multiverse only works if you care about the universes that are involved. And the fact that they're bringing back, see, you're bringing Michael Keaton and you're bringing, you know, other people involved. I'm like, okay, great. Um, what, 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 what's, what is, what's, the, what's the end game as far as that goes? What, what, are, what are you, what are you trying to reboot if in two years nobody cares about? your atmosphere to begin with. So they really have to do a better job in keeping people engaged in any of these universes. Otherwise, what are you rebooting? You Dude. know, if the CW, the CW is watered down right now. You're not doing anything with the Snyderverse. You're going to have Aquaman too, but all these movies are taking, you're, you're talking about a year within two years from now. There's a lot of apathy that can build up in 24 months. So to, that could hurt the flash, but the point movie too. To, to be honest, like the Snyderverse stuff, but like, I don't know. But I'm just gonna add on that Apocalypse War animation movie into the Snyderverse. You just say, okay, that's my, that's my four movies. Just right there, just in case if they don't really continue that verse, because the animation movie is basically like what Sex Night was was supposed to do. So um, I'm just gonna be doing that. But uh, the DC, they did like a graphic audio thing. And it's like an audio books, right? So it's different voice actors. Like one voice actor does Superman, one voice actor does Batman. It's like a lot of sound effects, and then there's slogans like a movie in their movie in your mind. So you like think about your imagination. It's like basically a movie in your mind. It's like an audible in a way. And it's pretty good. Please it's don't. 
<laughs> and, and, and it's a pretty good um, series because they, they made the whole, they had their own universe of that. So it's like, um, like after I listened to all that, I was like, I'm pretty good with the universe. I felt pretty satisfied after listening to all that because they did Infinite Crisis, Crisis on Infinite Earths, Final Crisis. They had like a, a storyline throughout the entire thing. Like they actually introduced these like main seven characters just league, and I thought it was pretty good. <clears throat> like I said, they, they they need to finish something in order to care about the next step. And they got a lot of stuff out there. They just need to finish. Like I said, I I if the Snyder verse doesn't go on forever, I'm okay. I just need to see it finished. You know, I just need to see it completed, and then it can be referred to for the next 20, 30, 40 years. But right now it's unfinished. It's unfinished. So all these things, the the audio books, all that, it's really hard for me to get excited about anything when we got this big elephant in the room that hasn't been finished. <laughs> they, they can make I'm a back. Oh, they, they, boy. They, they, they can um they, they can make like one movie off of that Snyder thing. This had the beginning of them losing most of it would be the nightmare <laughs> and at the end just travel back in time and finish it. It could just be, just be one movie. Just finish yeah, it out. Give, give me another Snyder book. Give me another Snyder movie. I'll sit through it. If, if you told me that we were going to wrap this up and my only option was one three to four hour movie, a really long movie like we got now, and that we're not going to get a bunch, but we're going to we, gonna give these guys a chance to end this right, I'm okay with that. I would take that. Wrap it up with one movie and then I'm okay. Because like I said, I don't trust Warner Brothers to complete anything, including the things that are upcoming. So it's like they don't have a plan. Feige has a plan that's shown it. almost, yeah, as almost as old as some of the people that are watching his movies. But right now, you know, these guys are just throwing things up against the wall and reacting to fanboys who aren't going to see their movies. All right, they reacted to to Rotten Tomatoes and fanboys uh, who are never going to lay down a dollar for a DC product. While we get screwed, we you know we buy the T-shirts, we buy the hats. We just we subscribe to these things, and we gotta fight and do hashtag promotions to get heard. So, yeah, if I one movie, like you said, I agree with you. One movie would be great. I would I would want more, but if you told me that we're gonna get a final resolution of Zack Snyder's universe in this movie, and I would I would take it. You know, I would take it in a heartbeat. And I think that would be the realistic option for them to go. If they don't want to do that much, I feel like it would just be one movie, and it would yeah. be just. Pretty easy to do since I heard they're doing the LHE LED screens. That's when I was checking out that, and it was like pretty easy yeah. to do that. So if they just do one movie off of that, I'll be pretty good. But it just yeah. depends on Warner Brothers because they've been effing up this whole universe. So I just want resolution. I just want, like I said, with with all the in game movies, oh, even. You know what? I'm not even looking at this. <laughs> I want to continue oh, to talk, boy. even with 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 all the um. All the movies that Marvel's put out, even if the ones I didn't like, there was a resolution to their story right. for the most part. You're moving into a different phase, but we resolved um, Thanos Quest. We resolved it. You, you, you left out of Thanos Quest without 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 wondering what's going to happen next, what's going to, you know, you know, it, it just didn't, uh, it just oh, didn't, uh, didn't even want to. So. Jesus. So, so yeah, there, there, there's resolution. I think resolution in whatever form it comes from, as far as that in the Spider Verse, uh, I'm okay with it. Even if it's in cartoons, if it's in a comic book, I just want to know how it ends. Or how <laughs> it this is how it ends right here. This, <laughs> this, is, how the, this is how DC's multiverse ends. Right oh my! Say, I'm trying to, I'm trying I am impressed. <laughs> like, I got this in the, in the background. Hilarious. I love how William just really just barreled through that without correcting <laughs> anything. I know, so I was laughing. I'm like, he's really just talking over. He just pushed like, through it. <laughs> he was not phased. I told not you, William, all. no one is safe. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Hartwell with the five dollars super chance. This is Saggy putting out his face on Forrest Gump's body and have a box of chocolates be all be all of you guys. <laughs> That's your next challenge. Oh my gosh! Because you never know what you're gonna get here at the Point Dexter Lounge. Uh, for, the record, for the record, I did make William sexy, so I I kept my word. You did <laughs> you, you did. did you made me more horrifying than I already am? Right? <laughs> I, I, I gave you booty. She gave you curves. I mean, and, you, you, you've only seen me from the neck up on these screens. So you don't. You know. But I I, I, okay. I made it. I I I made you beautiful. That's all that matters. 
Man, yeah, I, I, I gotta yeah. stop. Put, I gotta stop putting faces on people's bodies. I'm gonna get in trouble someday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm Andrew, Christi, that, though. Andrew, Andrew Christie with a with a five dollar super chat here says uh, exactly. Uh, Will that? Excuse me. They just need to see the Snyderverse though, or Snyderverse through. Uh, uh, it would solve so many other problems. And consistency yeah. sake, like it or not, it's just messy. It, it just it, it has to be one move. I feel like it's gonna be one mini series or just one series, not a second season. It's gonna be one movie or one mini series. I don't feel like that's the realistic approach of it. And you can do it really easy. You just you won't get your like maybe I don't know, like uh Zack Snyder, he might change the story up. So no, which is I would prefer because pretty much we already know. You know what his his plans were, and I think if he continued, he would probably change it up, just make it a little bit flat. But like I said, if Warner Brothers or not even Warner Brothers, if HBO Max said we're gonna give you, we're gonna give a group of sock puppets together, and we're gonna use them to finish the story, his vision, I take it. I would take it. I at this point, I want to know a how it ends, and my second priority is for it to continue. But you can't have one without. You have to have one first, and then the other. You know, I would love, like I said before, I would love to see Amazon and like in Spartacus blood and sand uh, fashion, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. I would like to see the vision continue, but one thing at a time. And you just have to when, when you hold the press conference and say we're going to unveil this movie, the people in the audience and across the world need to know they're going to do that movie. They're going to finish that movie and that movie's going to get done. Well, I'm like, I just I just want to see the Snyderverse continue. I can get Ray Porter in here. We'll do the voice. I mean, like. I'm a real fan <laughs> of justice. <laughs> Don't ever say that line again. <laughs> oh, but guess what? Doing guess his what? Backyard. My version? My version? Oh, boy. <laughs> this uppercut. And, and, and by the way, when you hear the word Stop. multiverse coming from, from Warner Brothers, they don't even know what that is. They don't know what the multiverse is. They, they they took the concept from what Jim Lee was saying. They don't know what a multiverse is. If if Warner Brothers truly embraced the multiverse, then you wouldn't have a problem with Zack Snyder's Justice League or anything that derived from it. Sure, the, the you know, only... you'd, be able, you'd be able to move on in, in parallel universes. They don't understand, and it's sad because DC Comics created the concept of the multiverse. They created the concept of parallel universe series. They created that, and the fact that uh, you have the company that owns them. You have the company that owns them that doesn't even know the intricacies of their own company. I give up. <laughs> yeah, the, the only, the only the old school Steppenwolf DC stuff is the animation movies, DC animation universe. That's only that's that's only been a consistent portion of DC related. For uh, sure. That's because Warner Brothers doesn't that Warner Brothers doesn't see them on the level to where they have to interfere. They don't. They don't. They don't regard the animated universe as as big screen movie stuff. So they don't interfere. It, it, you know, whereas us comic book guys and people who actually know what a multiverse is, we can accept those things running alongside each other. They they hear the word multiverse is something that they heard from us geeks. You know, it's like the it's like the really the un you know the the, the cool kids sitting at the cafeteria table with us nerds. And just, you know, just for the hell of it. And then he picks up a couple of words and he goes on and says, oh, yeah, you geeks are cool. Let me go back to the jocks. That's what that's what Warner Brothers is. They're the jocks that don't understand us. But they want to that's use like, the terminology. Like, just, what you know, the heck have I just walked into? <laughs> I'm seeing Saggy doing well, deep fakes. I see Enos with a yeah. wig play with his toys. Mind William your business or you're next. next. Stop talking or I'm doing you next. Hey, Saggy, you've threatened me three times already and you still have never yes. done it. So I don't Pull the trigger, Whoa. Saggy. Pull the trigger. It's going to... Don't Lord. don't test me. Don't and test Andrew me. Christie with a five dollars super chat says CW verse really ended with Arrow when Arrow finished, uh, and even then, or even in that, ran its course by season five or six. And, for Andrew sure. Christie, yeah, for sure. Andrew Christie, you're next. Yeah, but they, you know, with the Arrowverse, <laughs> they could do a lot with the Arrowverse. Not even Arrowverse. They, the CW still has a future if they actually wanted to do things with it. By the because, way, Arrowverse. Uh, well, they set like it crap. up. Look, Arrowverse can kiss look, my ass. Right. Arrowverse ended like crap. Well, sure. sure. Ladies and gentlemen, it. welcome back to the DL show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Arrowverse. Oh, here's another hot Wait, take. That, Arrowverse. Who, okay. okay. Who okay. was that who said oh. that? Was that that was you, DL? Was it? That, yeah, was, that was me. That was me. That was okay. me. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. 
Okay, okay. Hot take. The Arrowverse is trash. Everything is trash. The, <laughs> like the, the the least awful thing from that universe is Black Lightning. And even then, it's not but, that great either. I'm no, sorry. No, but, the, but, the, but the Arrowverse you, was You good. do you, boo, right? The Arrow <laughs> Ryan. The Arrowverse was good until like the last few seasons and then it went, whoa, what is I, happening? I, 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 I gotta say, I gotta I, say, I, at least they at least they carried on with a plan. Oh, Some for sure. oh yeah. True. They were consistent. They, they, didn't stuck with consistent. It. <laughs> they did stick with it. I'll give them that. But no. even, even though actually. their plan is garbage, but they did give they did stick with the plan. They stick with you the plan. Know, That's why it's so know. hard trying to replicate Marvel, but that they're freaking the one thing that Marvel did that was so that was right, at least. You know, they had a few bad apples in the no lineup, but the thing is they stuck with it and they drove through it. And that's what DC and Warner Bros. just don't get, you know. They just gotta roll yeah. with it. Why am I so like I don't know right now? The, he's just he's just beautiful. I don't I'm sorry, he's just a beautiful person. I won't deep fake you. You're beautiful as you are. I don't think <laughs> you like, what do you like the, the YouTube cougar or something? What's going on? Uh, yeah. Okay, I mean I, I would like to see my body or my face with some curves on it. I mean I, I'll roll <laughs> with it. I'll, I'll accept what it. in the hell? <laughs> hey, hey. I'll embrace it, William. I'll embrace it. All right. I'll embrace embrace it. it. That's see, that's what I do. I embrace it, man. You see, I love I love William. Oh, sorry. So we got we got much. Inesh with the golden locks over here. And then we got Sega with the D fakes. Just gotta roll with it. I absolutely love it. Oh, because there's William. two crazy people out of out of the seven. Go <laughs> 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 with the minority nuts. Okay. Ah, sounds like a plan. By to the me. way, I just wanted to mention, since you guys are talking about Captain Marvel. The government got the Cosmic Cube after World War II in the first Avenger. Yeah, the Red Skull had it. So no, that it was, was in the, the ocean. Skull, they found it there. So why, RJ, why? I love you too. Thank why? you. I know you do. Thank so, you. So for you sake, sake of time, sake of time, this this is what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna bring uh, the next two people who were uh, who are in there because because I want everybody to get a chance to be in here. So uh, the next two people who were in line, I'm gonna bring them in in the order that they were in, and uh, so. And then we'll we'll try because we got a couple more people. I am going to shut it down as far as bringing new people in because I got I still have some people in the back and I want to make sure that we get everybody in. Uh, but I'm going to bring uh, two people in because I can bring two more in into this uh, conversation here. So uh, we're going to bring Ryan uh, hopped in and uh, Master Jedi in and uh, we'll, we'll give everybody a chance to be able to, to talk about what they want to talk about, too. But then that way, at least everybody can get in here. And uh, and then I got Tony back there. I got Nick back there and I got Quan back there. And so uh, uh, guys just kind of bear with me here and we'll get you guys in. OK, um, I see Tony back there. Tony's Tony's like raring to go. Tony's been a trooper, man, this whole time. Tony, Tony's been laughing along with us, having a good time with us. I feel like Tony's been in here with us because I can see him. But uh, it's like, I'll, ju <laughs> I'll just show you like to Tony's been having a good time. What's up, Tony? Uh, how's it going, guys? All right, I gotta take you back out, but because you're running in order, but you, you just no, bro, look like I'm, you're having a good time I'm back there. High real quick. I'll, I'll wait. All you're right, like it's just a tease of Tony. It's a tease of Tony. It's just a tease. Just got a you gave, gave you a tease of that Tony guy. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then uh, and then here are Master Jedi uh, Wanderer and uh, Ryan Hop. What's up, guys? Good to see you. What's up? Hello. Good to see Hello, you guys. guys. But uh, but yeah, so uh, so I I, I noticed that I'm seeing a couple of people trying to still jump in because we're we're full in the back, it, and we're not gonna. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes, we're full. Of <laughs> <laughs> so I've got I've got I got this group Keep of people coming. who are on right here, and as we uh, and as we uh, in the next few minutes uh, rotate uh, three three people out here, uh, we'll eventually bring in Quan, Tony, and Nick, and then that will round out our our evening. Okay, so if you're trying to get in. Sorry, but uh, even if somehow you, you get in the backstage area, we won't be bringing you in tonight just because, uh, um, yeah. Jarbo. Jarbo's probably trying to get back in. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> once you're out, once you're out. Look, I will say this about the CW-verse, and, and then we can talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Uh, but the CW-verse, for, for me, um, I felt like, like Crisis on Infinite Earth set up something that could have gone so cool going forward. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, like a where, where they could have gone. Uh, but what really disappoints me about that is, is first of all, they set up this, this idea of the justice league kind of in that world. They even have a hall of justice. They set up the possibility of the wonder twins even. And 
nothing literally not a peep not a word not anything like look i'm all look as much as i love the snyder verse and i love that darker tone and i love that realism like why not have that lighter fare for you know for the tv projects right because i'm i'm a believer that we can have it all so and i like it all i'm not even against you know like like all these people trying to pull up you know old videos of me like hey, enosh liked something else back five years ago yeah i like it all i've I, like spoiler alert i've been here the whole time saying i love it all okay like just because somebody doesn't watch my videos and they don't know what I say on the regular basis, like they hear something and they're like, Ooh, got him. Like I, what? Like, this is what I've been saying ever since, you know, I can remember. And so, so the thing is, is like, I'm, I'd be fine with like the CW verse being this lighter version of these characters. Uh, but, but then go with it, you know, and, and they're not going with it. They're, they, they they did all this setup in Crisis on Infinite Earths and they haven't done any payoff. Like nothing that happened so far on Crisis on Infinite Earths has really, I mean, there's been a couple of things obviously, but there was so much promise with some of that stuff. And and I just feel like they didn't really go anywhere else after well, that. And and like we, we, we haven't we haven't seen we haven't even seen the the yeah. the uh the um uh whatchamacallit the hall of justice, you know since since that episode like what the heck like really they, they could have done so much with that and with the new gods with dark side because the new gods in the fourth world exist outside of the multiverse so they could have really built everything that they're doing around that and that would have been the one constant and then you could have branched off in these other universes they really didn't have a plan and that's where i think jim lee needs to be involved at the level of putting all this together tv shows the tv shows can be cohesive with the cinematic universe, even if they don't blend, they can still be co a cohesive plan. And right now, there's just no plan. It's just no plan. Oh, I, I will say this: Shifty Gizm, oh, you are so right. That yeah. show. There's a lot of these shows that have so, that had so much promise back in the day, like that first season, and even parts of season two of Heroes yeah. were fire they were must watch tv we were rushing back to our screens man every week to watch it think about the first couple seasons of lost that like Why? lost was fire like they were they were introducing things that got your attention you wanted to know what the heck was coming next what was going to happen and then it just got to be where it was all a tease so it was like yes we've we've given you literally a million things now and we're not going to answer any of that stuff and no then bail. like do you remember no when bail. siler you remember when siler sure, no uh bail. from from hero season one was like like the worst villain ever like he was just like i mean when i say worst i mean like like awesome <laughs> right like siler uh, yeah. siler was he was cutting beat the tops of people's heads off and stealing their powers and it was like an amazing thing and then like by zachary siler, quinto right? and yeah zachary yep. quinto was fabulous in that role mm -hmm. and then like by the end like they literally made him a sympathetic good guy. Like what the heck? Michael, how Michael, do you Michael. take, how do you take your, this most awesome villain that could have like really transcended the whole thing, really been the, the, this awesome villain throughout the entire series. And I don't know. Did anybody try to watch the, the, the revamp of that? Like we got 18 minutes into it. So, so no. one episode and left. Was really? it hero? Was yeah, it so heroes reborn? Yeah, he was. Yeah, a I saw okay. one episode. And I was we like, watched. Yeah. We watched the first couple episodes, like the first few episodes, and then it was just like, I, I can't even watch this anymore. Like, what? <laughs> what the heck am I watching? Uh, and not Christie, really. That concept had a short shelf life, though. To get, in all in their defense, that that was never going to be something that was lengthy. It was, but once their story was told, that was it. They blew their wad. It was kind of like with X Files. After season four of X Files, everything else is just there for the ad ad money andrew christie here with the five dollar super chat says bang on enosh it's about loving the lore and loving all the different iterations all good stuff absolutely man like that's what i'm about man i'm just about good stuff good stories like look like i said like i, I still haven't put away all my super friends stuff from the other day when i when i brought all these things out and stuff but like look man like this is my childhood right here and and i still watch this stuff I, I still turn on uh, the DC section of, um, of stuff and like watch, you know, um, uh, this stuff. I mean, you know, even old school Aquaman. I don't know what he's doing there. Why? <laughs> yes, please don't explain. <laughs> great prediction. <laughs> he's great a seahorse. <laughs> a seahorse. 
legs just just chilling out there like <laughs> he's going a figure figure doing skater. its own thing yeah he's doing a figure skating I wonder what he's doing with these figures off screen oh boy we are, we, we oh, know no. we've, we've on max's stream we know <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> you know i don't know i just uh you know, I'm, uh, I, I just, I love it all. I, I really do. I really love it all. Um, and so it just, it, it bothers me when, when, um, they don't let you love it all though. I know they don't yeah, let you love it all. Sure. Listen, I would, I would buy some of the stuff that I'm not into. If I knew there was a cohesive doorway for me to get through, there's uh -huh. no doorways for us to walk through any of this other stuff. Uh -huh. It's just them trying to guess what we're going to like. You know, there's no doorway into the cinematic universe, into the cartoons, into the shows, and there should be. There should mm -hmm. be a central point that we we have a doorway to everything that DC has ever done. And how hard is it to figure that out? There, there, there's no, no attitude era like that. Read, there's no attitude era over there. Like we've been getting this we in, in the in your house era from that. Read, we're mm -hmm. not getting the yeah. attitude era from, mm. from here. We're never not getting the new stuff. Like we're not getting the stuff that should like. It's like Austin not being pushed. Like this dude is really people like this guy. Why are you not pushing Austin to be this <laughs> oh, yeah, huge yeah. face? <laughs> if you don't push this guy, WCW <clears throat> Marvel is gonna this destroy us. Push him, man. Just do it. Nah, <laughs> bro. <laughs> nah, bro. Let's let let's let Sean do his thing. Like, dude, come on, man. Come on. Man, that was the started on WWE. Right? That was that was the hardest question. <laughs> yeah, we for bring me. up wrestling, well, and then Williams well, to go off for two hours. That was that. <laughs> okay, well, that was the hard one of the hardest oh, questions. Face. That was one of the hardest questions that Dave Batista asked me back when I first started with with him in that in that interview, and I was like, "Hey, you know, Dave, uh, you know, my kids used to be really big into WWE because I've loved wrestling my entire life. You know, I've really loved it, and I but I've gone through these these times, right? So there was the times when I was a kid." You know, with the Hulk Hogan era and, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. All that stuff. And mm -hmm. then there and then there was the changeover where it's like for there was a there was a little bit of time there where it's like I wasn't like watching it all the time, but I would catch it, you know, like I would still watch a little bit of it, you know, and and things like that. And then, you know, uh, and then I didn't watch it for a couple of years and then I'd get I, something would happen and would draw me back in. And I remember I hadn't watched it for a couple of years when Hulk Hogan, you know, went to um, uh WCW. WCW. WCW yeah. And when he went to WCW, like that got my attention as well. But like, then all of a sudden after a couple of months, it was like, okay, so he's just the same Hulk Hogan. Everything's just the same. I I'm good. And then when he went heel and the NWO started, then it just like totally sucked me right back in. And it was like must and see TV again. W -O. Just, just, yeah, just, just push Austin. No, we oh, need nice. Sean. Push Austin. No, Sean needs to do it. What do you mean? Austin's hot. No, no. But that was the hardest thing, man. When Batista, when Batista was like, "Are your kids, are your kids still into it?" When Batista asked if my kids were still into it, like, and I didn't want to have to tell him, like, uh, no, when they dropped the ball on CM Punk, my kids kind of tuned out. And when, and when they went to three hour oh, raws, yeah, when they went to three hour raws, and there was like literally like, and and that's the problem with it is right now, it's like such oversaturation where it's like you can't just tune in and watch wrestling and just enjoy a few good matches and stuff. You get like literally an hour worth of filler that's like, hey, remember what happened 15 minutes ago? We're going to show the repeat, <laughs> like, and, and not even speed it up or show a clip. We're going to yeah. show the entire yeah. thing of what happened 15 minutes ago because we got to fill time for advertising yeah. space. All WWE yeah. is right now is free matches, it, it, too. It's you know, matches every it, single it, week. You know, God. Yeah, what's the point I, of buying I, the pay-per-view? They're going to do it this, the next it, it, day. It, yes! I, 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 <laughs> you know, I, I was in the that same boat, bro. I, I was a CM Punk fan. I said, like, I can't wait for this guy to be the super. I mean, I can't wait. The Cena came in. I was like, oh no, don't let yeah, Cena. He, no, it was a it wrong. Was that title really shot. Yeah, yeah was it was a rock. It was not Cena. It was the rock. It was a rock that kind of screwed him up. No, because no, remember, no, he held that title for four hundred and some odd days, I, and I then know. he lost yeah. it to the Rock. So that Such they could set up. You know, I almost got. I almost got to interview John Cena. God, God, I almost got to interview CM Punk. And, uh, man, I so wish, I so wish to God. So I worked with a guy, uh, years ago when I worked at Kinko's, uh, I worked third shift at Kinko's and there was this guy named Tony and, uh, Tony was straight edge, like completely tatted up. Like when I first met Tony, I was like, 
because I had to work third shift alone with this guy, right? And when I first met Tony, I used to tease him all the time about it later because when I first met him, he looked really kind of rough and like he looked like he had been through some stuff, man. And uh, but he was so tatted up and just angry looking and everything, and he had a really bad temper. And like his favorite words, his favorite word was the F word. Like he would just like customers would be there and he'd just be like, F this, F this, F this, F this. And um, and I'll and I'll just say this one day he looked at me and he goes, he goes, you know, you know what my favorite word is? And I'm like, I got a pretty good guess. And he's just like, F. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I figured that. And he goes, no, wait, 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 wait. I, ch- I take that back. And let's just put it this way. You know, you know, our, our favorite guy to talk about on Two Cents on Nonsense, Mr. Doomcock, like <laughs> put the F with his last name. And, uh, and you got, he's like, no, no, you know what my favorite word is? Is F. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, and so that was, that was Tony. And so I knew Tony for the longest time, but he was so much fun to work with. And uh, once he brought in a, a DC version of uh, Trivial Pursuit, and uh, he thought that he was going to get me with some question about uh, Osriel, Batman, you know, and uh, it, like he was so frustrated. He's like, how do you know all this DC stuff? And I'm like, because I love DC, man. But this was back in the early 2000s. And uh, so he moved on. He was from Chicago and he moved back to Chicago. And uh, one night I'm like watching one of the wrestling pay-per-views. I can't remember what pay-per-view it was. And we're, we're talking and stuff. And, and uh, I had tweeted out, you know, or not tweeted out. I had put on Facebook that uh, me and the family and some friends were watching whatever pay-per-view it was. And Tony just leaves a message, like leaves a comment on it and said, said, you know, it's crazy. He says, the only um, connection that I have, like with any celebrity or whatever is WWE. And I don't even really care. And I just looked at that and I was thinking, Hold on a second. Tony knows some WWE guy. Like who the heck? And I was like, oh my God, he's from Chicago. He's straight edge. Like, and I, I wrote it back. And I'm like, Tony, do you know, do you know CM Punk? And he's like, yeah, I know CM Punk. I'm married to his ex-girlfriend. And I'm like, wait, what? Uh-oh. And so like, like CM Punk's ex-girlfriend is, is a, is a chef. And she had a show on food network for a while. And, uh, Tony ended up marrying him. Like they're all friends. And like Tony's son, uh, he was like, starts telling me like Tony's, his son, like thought it was super cool because, because CM Punk was, you know, his uncle Phil. And he's like, I think it's so cool that, you know, my uncle, you know, I have a action figure of my uncle Phil and stuff. And I'm like, dude, Tony, (laughs) I had a radio show at the time. And, uh, that we did this podcast radio show once a week. And, uh, I was like, Tony, I would love to interview CM Punk. I would love to interview Phil. And he tried to work it out. It just didn't happen. Cause like, like it was at the time that Phil was like at the height of his career there at WWE, the right champion. in the middle of his title. Right. And it was like, so he was impossible to get to, uh, but he almost did it. He almost did it. He almost, he almost came on our, uh, on our show, which would have been. Oh. I, I always got scared every time a wrestler I liked went against Cena. Cause I knew the end result was gonna be get buried. Yeah, I was so scared. I was like, they "Oh no!" You'll say I love the match between AJ Styles and John Cena, though. Like in oh, 2016, 2017. That was a great. Yeah, AJ. I'm an AJ Styles fan. Yeah. John Cena. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I will always get scared. When I see, oh man, hey, see Punk is doing his promo, and I hear that music. I was like, oh no, oh no, because I well, know he, he got the better of that one though. It was like I said, it was when he dropped to the Rock that was really sent things spiraling. I, I will, say, yeah, I will say this though, like in terms of wrestling, like I've mentioned this before, like I was like falling out of WWE for a while, then AEW came along. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. I remember why I love wrestling. <laughs> like AEW isn't perfect by any means. There's still stuff that they need to fix and do better, but they, it, 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 it's a lot of fun. That, that, yeah, that's any, red, down red, that's any federation. Any that. federations like that, even New Japan, but none of them are awful to the degree that WWE is. And I hate to say that because I think they got a lot of, they're loaded with talent, but it's an awful. They have awful, one of the most talented rosters of all, of all time. Yeah. And they and never the, utilize them well. The booking, that, the booking is bad. The that, structure is bad. The lack yeah. of title respect is is bad. They, that, they, that I mean, it's just an me. awful product. That, that reminds me of Warner Brothers. They got all this talent. Yep. Got everything in front of them. They just won't push them. Push them. No, we're not going to push them. Why? 
No, because you know, Sean, he's doing this thing, you know, we need him to be, <laughs> be the guy. I'm like, dude, come on, bro. Oh, that's like, that's like the Roman thing Reigns, of the night. Man. No, we ain't pushing Sean. We're we 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 ain't pushing uh, Steve. We're pushing yeah. Sean. No, <laughs> that's a great comparison because WWE makes more money than they ever made before. They're so profitable. Same with WWE or not I'm sorry, um WB and AT and T. They make so much money. It's like, yeah. Eh, can, can we talk about something? Can we talk about two things real quick? Two things. Uh first of all, uh um the fact that peacock is now offering everything like everything is five bucks you remember when like like to get like wrestlemania was like 80 dollars for a pay-per-view yeah that's the last like, time it was good it, when it right. was actually good. Yeah. like and it's crazy and now it's two days and it's like it's not half as good as it used to be and yet it's like it's like four times as long and it's like what the heck and then and then on top of that can we just talk about the way vince mcmahon pronounces wwe uh yes, Michael Cole W W W W W W W Michael Cole. Did, did you guys see, like like I don't know like I had never really noticed it before. I I guess I hadn't just thought about it in a while. Maybe I maybe I noticed it before, but I just hadn't thought about it in a while. Uh, because I saw uh, uh Vince McMahon's intro to WrestleMania this year where he had like oh, everybody yeah, yeah, out yeah. there, and he's like he's like. Welcome to WD or like was like like W Universe. It's like is that just one W? Like what? What in the world did he just say? Like, and he's if that was the worst thing about the program. I would I would, I would that would be great. He's looking he's his age though. Too. Hey, the quality he's, drops, so the W had a drop. He's yeah. looking his age though too. Uh, Peter Peter that. Rabbit's defender with a four ninety nine super chat says look. Uh, look like I'm uh, too new for S. I think my stream yards. Stream yards. Oh, yeah. oh, for stream yards. I didn't click enter the room, and now it kicked me out. Uh, hoping the next time uh, would be my luck. I feel better now. Thanks, guys. Uh, oh, you got to click that thing that lets you in. Well, I didn't. I Peter Rabbit's defender. I never saw you as as your screen name. So, are you a different screen name? Because I never saw you as Peter Rabbit's defender back in the in the. Uh, in the back room, I, I never saw you back there because I still I still got the same three guys. So I don't I don't know, man. I know I knew that you said that you were back there, but I I, did, I thought maybe you were joking or laughing, you know, about something like that. I thought you were like making a joke or something. Um, so I'm I'm sorry, hey, man. Hey, um, hey, hey we, we we should push Dolph Ziggler. You know, he he was saying he's the next um. Shawn Michaels. No, let's push Fandango. No. All right, cool. Uh, oh, Fandango. Let's push a dancing guy. And now he's in a silly gimmick tag team on NXT with um, Tyler Breeze with Brizongo. They do a different gimmick every week. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's, let, 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 let's push um, Bobby Lashley. Nah, man. Let's go with Fandango. Well, well, I'm scared. Range, range, huh? How many people actually let's do watch the AEW? Let's joke. Huh? I watch it. I watch it. I do. Okay. Yeah. I'm just I'm I'm just curious because like I feel like a lot of people who like hate WWE still won't make the jump to AEW for some weird reason. They're just like Bella's I'm just so still burnt talking out. About this? Yes. Yeah. I Somebody literally walked call away. My mama. Listen, I don't do Don't wrestling anymore, mama. so I walked yeah, away. Bring up Zaggy. Zaggy, you got into wrestling. I watched this. Watch this, about this, about this bro. I'm, I'm well, when Zaggy, if you got into either. wrestling again, your channel would pop off huge. No, yeah. I'm, I'm wrestling so, fans uh, love hearing female opinions on wrestling. I, I stopped watching in 2014. 2014, I stopped watching. 2014. I think that's been. I literally took like a break because I was like, all right, they're talking about wrestling. It's my time to use the bathroom, get a drink, you know, check what's on. Mission. TV, right, and intermission. I come oh. back and I just hear RJ. So this is a thing about wrestling in the WWE, and I'm like, oh my god, they're still talking about this, bro. Yeah, I don't know too much about wrestling. I mean, I watched wrestling when I was kind of younger, but then um, I don't know the quality kind of dropped, and I don't, I don't know when it when I stopped watching it like fully. But uh, I kind of moved from that to like UFC, and oof. Yeah, yeah UFC, UFC, man. Yeah. At See that one UFC fight UFC yesterday, was, though. Was, Oh, today. are you talking about the Weidman fight? Uh, who, whichever leg. guy's leg got yeah, that's the Weidman the kick. Yeah, yeah. Oh. that was that was nasty. That hey, was nasty. Chris Weidman. Hey, hey, sorry, real, real quick. I just want I just want to echo. I just want to echo this. No, hey, I'm I'm. Look, if I could, I would. I wish that there was like a huge room that like we could all just get together. Which which that's why I'm saying. Uh, maybe uh, you know, sometime soon we'll we'll all go meet out at this guy's place out in Vegas. 
and we'll have the point Dexter, we'll have the point Dexter uh, con where we can all just hang out in a room. His, shop, and, his shop's pretty big, yes, man. Yes. On Vegas, so we all, cool. we'll all just get a you know a cheap flight out to Vegas, and then that way we don't have to worry about you know all that stuff, man. But, so guys, uh, Steve Carbo and Saggy there though. I, I don't know. Wow, <laughs> I can't oh, be oh, responsible boy. with those two What's dudes. That? Yeah, it would they have to be not- eighteen wow. plus. It would have to be That's eighteen messed plus. Up. I'm yeah. I'm very upset. Well, I'm gonna. Uh, it's four thirty in the morning for me. Uh, I'm gonna dip out so other people can come in. But thank you guys uh, for having me. I love all of you. Thank you all so much, including William. Even though William's been low key throwing shade at me all night, I see you, William. <laughs> I see you, William. Uh oh. Uh oh. But I, I love William. Deep fakes. Thank you. You, you know. You know what we need, Saggy. You know what we need, Saggy. We we a need the, we well we need a well we always need bonus. Bonus. but bonus. but but Saggy Saggy we, we need we need we need this redone with like with like your head on on this uh on this and like <laughs> like a couple a couple other people like oh god <laughs> <laughs> but I I absolutely love William I just want to say that. I love William to death William is one of my favorite people in the world so dude he's always dropping facts. That means yes, something I, awful is coming no, my way. No, nothing. I swear, William, I'm really going to bed. I promise. No more deep fakes. I just had to do that because I want to prove to you that I can make you beautiful. And I did. And I feel. Just like to tease okay. everybody a little bit, just tickling it a little bit. <laughs> I, I also love Dawson. Okay, you guys have a great night. I'll see you guys later. See you, Bye. Right, we'll yeah. see you. Bye. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it kind of funny that Chris Wyman leg broke in. Andrew Silva, Lake Bro, uh, why he was with him too? It's kind of like karma. Dude, it was like the <laughs> first. It was, it's the craziest thing though, because at least in that, like the first fight where they fought, you know, it was after a little bit, but it was literally the first strike that was ever landed in that fight, and it just snapped. And it was, it was, it was bad when it first, like when he first landed it, but then when he tried to take a step back and it just crunched. Oh man, the nerve damage oh, and all the. Yeah. Am I Jeff? Oh, yeah, we brought Tony oh. in. It's the return of Tony. Look, it's the premiere. How's it going, guys? <laughs> What's going on, Tony? Is that a periodic element shirt that you're wearing? Yes. Uh, Star Wars. Wow. Yes. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's I don't know what to say. Say. That is great. Welcome, Tony. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Thank you for being patient. I got I got two more people in the back. I got Quan and Nick. And uh, oh, Peter Rabbit def- found his way in, dude. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get you in, man. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes, man. We'll see how the, the night goes, but uh, hey, I can dip out because I, I need to go to bed anyway. So, you guys all right, get Peter Rabbit in. So, that's well, well, I got well, he would he just he just, 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 he just got here, so <laughs> so <laughs> so if this guy has um, bunny ears, that's it. <laughs> he doesn't have bunny ears. Why not? You know, you, Why not? What, what, exactly. William, William. Thing you know, William, you, know, William, you say these things, but I think secretly you want these things to happen because, like, <laughs> you're just like, hey, uh, you know, like, what if Pee Wee Herman dropped in here? I mean, not that I would want Pee Wee Herman to come in here or nothing, you know. And then there's like, Pee Wee Herman. Icon, yeah? Imagine if Seggy brought the puppets. Imagine if Seggy brought the puppets. Imagine, yeah, no, and it's Seggy bringing up the puppets. puppets. Oh, don't I can't believe she brought the puppets. I can't believe she brought the puppets. And they go, well, this guy's got bunny ears. Oh, I wouldn't want bunny ears. I secretly, Wait, are you stalling for him to put them on? Is that no. what's going on? No, here? no, he doesn't have bunny ears. <laughs> Not that I know of. I mean, I don't not, know. Now that you I said it, he's going to do it. Now that you said it, now he's going like, oh, to go he's find gonna, it. He's going to have bunny ears. If, have bunny if he has them anywhere just lying around, that's even creepier. But it, it, He's going to go find them. He's going to find them. <laughs> Vegas, we got furries, so, you know, he kind of finds Oh, them. Lord, yeah. Hey, hey, Vegas, Vegas is an there. interesting place. It's an interesting it place. is. Oh it my is. gosh! I I went to go visit. I uh, went to go vi- visit Vegas because uh, I'm originally from there, and so I went to go visit some friends of mine. And I was going to speak at a conference, and um, it was like this church conference thing. And I literally showed up, and I got in Vegas. My, yeah. Oh yeah, dude. There's more churches in ca- per capita in Vegas than anywhere else in the world. My home there church. We my, got a lot of that that is interesting. Yeah. My home church yeah. is right right across the street from Cashman Field, the the church that I grew up in. It's right across across the street from Cashman Field. My friend Godwin pastors that church still, like right by the municipal uh, buildings, right there, down there where Fantasy Park used to be, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, oh yeah, man, that's where I, that that was like. Uh, I lived over by Cashman Field over on Bruce, and and then we we lived uh, off of uh, Las Vegas Boulevard up there. The apartments are still there. The first time I ever saw um, uh, a lot of different movies, man, was like in that in that little place. First time I ever saw Wrath of Khan 
was right there at, at uh, Washington and uh, Las Vegas Boulevard. There, there's a little like apartment. Oh, you, would, you wouldn't be seeing any movies like that there now. It's a little bit dangerous in that area. Well, That's yeah, I mean, I mean, it was, it was like one of those. You know, it was just like this little like you know studio apartment place, but and it's still there. Like I, I, we, I was just there this last summer. Um, yeah, on the DMZ there. Yeah, but uh, but the but the funny thing is though is that uh, uh, was oh so I uh, I stayed at a hotel downtown and uh, my buddy dropped me off at the hotel and like I literally got there you know I signed into my room and everything and we're walking across the street and uh, we had to make a phone call and as we were walking across uh, the street to make a phone call I was going to a payphone this is this is a while back. But I, wow! I for, yeah, I know, right? I was walking across the street to, to this payphone, and as I was walking across the street, there was there was a prostitute. This this sounds like a Matt Jarbo story, but it's not. Um, there's a oh. prostitute. There's a prostitute standing uh, next to the payphone, and she saw me and my friend, who's a six foot four Nigerian guy, and uh, we're walking across the street together towards this lady of the night, and uh, she sees us and she thinks that we're coming to talk to her, so she starts walking up to talk to us, and uh, and she's like. Hey boys, how are you? How are you doing? And we're like, uh, no, we're 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 good. Um, we're I just need to go use the phone over there. She goes, Are you sure? And I'm like, Yeah, no, we're sure. And so, like, we pass her and she starts to walk away. And just as we're getting up to the phone, this other guy walks up and is like, Hey, you want to buy some coke? <laughs> and I'm like, I've been in Vegas for 35 minutes, and I've already been offered a prostitute and some cocaine. That's Vegas. I used to live in Vegas. Vegas, man. Uh, it was, cr- it's like, <laughs> you just, you just some crazy stuff you're gonna see over there. But you know, you get used to it. They yeah, cracked down a Sin lot City? of that stuff though on on the on the strip though. Like, on the strip, down a yeah. lot. The yeah. strip, yes, you can't. The strip I, is its own country. I I, I remember, um, yeah, downtown? I remember. I remember when I was a kid, I saw Chris Angel. And I was like, like how's this guy floating in the air? Like, damn, okay, well. Yeah, then he did <laughs> a show that told you have all the secrets. Breed. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's what kind of magician were you? He yeah, told like, all the secrets. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Benson's here. That's our good friend Mark with the five pound super chat. Uh, he's the one who's always talking about Condor Man. We are going to do a Condor Man watch party. Oh, I cannot wait. Next for month. I, I, I awesome. just have to pick a day and we're going to we're going to watch Condor Man. And for May the 4th, um, I'm really thinking about doing this. You guys tell me what you guys think about this. So I have a copy of the original Star Wars trilogy without the special editions that I'm trying to figure out how maybe we can do a tr- trilogy, original trilogy watch party on Twitch of the original Star Wars movies without being specialized. Would you guys be interested in something like that? For sure. Yes. For sure. Okay. That sounds sure. Like awesome. I got to figure it out because Please. I don't know what, what day is because uh, I haven't even looked. Somebody, is it? It's a it's Tuesday. Uh, see, I don't know if see, I don't know if it'll work because it's a Tuesday because that's kind of hard. Um, I'm, I'm, but, I'm showing Star Wars the original and then in the in the drive-in. So. Oh, are you? So so maybe though, maybe though we can either do we can talk about it. Maybe either for that Saturday before because I know it's because sometimes it's easier for people, especially when you're talking three movies because I mean that's six hours, you know. Um, which is just a normal live stream, I guess, for me. Um, <laughs> I mean, we could start, you know, we could start at like 6 p.m. my time and go to midnight, maybe on a Tuesday, I guess. Uh, maybe we'll see. Okay. Um, but you know, what? I'll probably put it out as a poll for everybody and see what they want to do, you know, what works out for everybody, you know. And I understand, look, we're, we we talk to people all over the world, so it's probably not gonna work for everybody, you know. But, um, anyways, Brian, Brian, master of none, and I were uh, we're discussing this and uh, how we could maybe uh, make it work. But hey, Benson's with a five pound super chat. Thank you, sir. Says, how are the haters this morning? Uh, you know what? They're, they're kind of quiet because it's amazing when like there's nothing really there. Um, I, I, I like mm-hmm. like seriously, like like I was just kind of, like today. I was just kind of like, oh, yeah, that's right. They're supposed to like release an expose about me. I wonder what that's going to be about. And then when I saw when somebody showed me what it was, I was nothing. like, wow. Yeah. OK. Expose. Like, like literally you could have watched, you could have watched a week's worth of Poindexter Lounge shows and seen that I've revealed all of that stuff on a daily basis. So, okay. Um, but anyways, uh, never been ashamed of your, never be ashamed of your success. Ah, oh, Benson's Mark. I appreciate that, man. It says, remember them chewing the broccoli. How do you reg- <laughs> remember them chewing the broccoli? We, we had a joke back and forth. Benson's he was like, cause we were talking about like, you know, people change their opinions over time, you know? And, uh, and even if like I had, 
And I didn't. And that's the thing that I don't understand. Like I have loved Zack Snyder's vision ever since the beginning. I'm sorry that I had a little bit of a difference of opinion about Dick Grayson. Oh my God. You know, the, the, I love that, that that got nailed home. Like this guy, you know, you know, saying that he has a love hate relationship with, with Zack Snyder. Means you're a fraud. You're a and, and, and you know, you know, you know what? You it's forgot the love part. I didn't say I hated him. I was just like, I, I don't like the, the Dick Grayson part. Like, it's a, it's okay? a logical, it's a logical disagreement too. For right? sure. You for sure. Jason Todd, why not Dick Grayson? Yeah, like, like, like it's not like I came yeah. up with like some weird thing, like you know, like I, I don't even know what the equivalent would be, just like some weird thing to that. But it's like I, I literally was just talking about that, you know, and I don't know, it's so crazy, it's so insane. But anyway, why, 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 yeah, why, why, why can it be this Dick Grayson? It could be Jason Todd, like, yeah. like, just like they, you know, know, even so, though, even so, like now, I was, I've just been like, you know, well, you know, look, as much as I don't like it. It's whatever story that Zach wanted to tell, right? And I re and see that's the other thing too about going back to like not just jumping on and harping on some kind of crazy um you know thing where it's like, look, I know that one day there'll be other stories, right? So like why am I gonna get all pissed off about this one telling of this? Even if it was Dick Grayson and they did something with that, I would still watch it and just enjoy it for what it was. And you know what? Who knows? I may end up really liking the story that Zach is telling <laughs> with that narrative. It wouldn't WB be, lets them. Yeah, right. It wouldn't be my first narrative to go to. You know what I mean? But it doesn't mean that, like, you know, like I also like I also have oh my gosh, I'm surprised that they didn't they didn't pull this up. Like that that I usually like it when Pa Kent dies of a heart attack. Because I've said that many, many times here on the channel that I disagree. I think with you that. said like a week ago. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like so, like, God forbid that I said that, you know, but then you know, just I don't know. It, I don't know. People are just just when it's they're silly. looking for something, That's when they're silly. looking for something, they're they're looking for something and they're going to they're going to interpret, you know, anything to be, I guess, the, the way that they want it to be, you know. And so, yeah, you can love Zack Snyder. You know, I he's personally one of my favorite directors, but it doesn't mean you have to like every decision that he makes. Like one example, what other examples um, when those like those the scripts of what he was going to do for just League two and three i didn't like the decision of doing that whole romance thing between oh, lois and oh, Ruth. Exactly. i didn't like that sure. exactly no so, well well you know what that just means uh dl you cannot be a leader in the snyder cut movement that's what it means you're a fan is it a cult or a fandom i mean what the hell i don't know what the heck I, is going I, on. I, I i still I, didn't like the like when they kill Superman in the second movie i that was, like that was that. wild that was wild. Like, I, I didn't kind of like the nightmare scene because it came kind of for me it came out came out of nowhere. But I know where it goes. But it seems like Bambi Superman kind of came out of nowhere in a way. Mm -hmm. I just wish they kind of like I don't know. But it just I guess yeah. not. I'm not part of fan of it. In this case, I don't like it just, no, just gave me just the same vibe. Yeah, that was back to my my thing because uh, Mark here Benson's had had mentioned the fact that uh, he's like, yeah, when I was a kid, I didn't like broccoli either. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, but like you know things grow on you things change you know whatever and uh actually as as how how you register to uh come on this this live chat uh how that works is is usually i have um i i man mark i know i said i re really wanted to talk to you sometime too because I, I really like mark um but i i usually have a, i had a link in the chat pinned and you basically just follow that link you pick a screen name and then um if you want to be on on camera, you have to have a camera and everything. But uh, if you just uh, doing sound, you just pick an avatar like, you know, a couple of guys here and, you know, hey. and you're yeah. good to go, you know, yeah. but um, and it, it's simple as that. The but glowy eyes. I got, but I hey, got, you know, I'm going to bounce. Uh, okay, so man. I can get more people in. Uh, thank you guys for having me real quick. If you ever go to Vegas, go to the mob museum. The mob museum in Vegas yeah. is amazing. It's very cool. Yeah. yeah. Very, yeah. Very, so I just want to say hello part. and pop in real quick. Thanks, guys. Right. All right. We love you, RJ. Yeah. All right, man. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop in next here. Uh, so I got I got three guys in the. Well, hold on, do I got three guys? Well, I, I, I gotta go too. All right, uh, I'm about to play Among Us right now. Um, All righty, tipsy. So we see how that works. So <laughs> got it. You crack open that beer. I see. <laughs> All right, White Claw. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy, the White Claw. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All, All right, right man. Well, hey, it was good. It's good having you here. Absolutely, you're welcome anytime. You know that, buddy. Okay, All right, man. Let's push Sean, okay? Let's push Sean first. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, now that he's 60, yeah. We'll, we'll get him. Yeah, he, yeah, he can main with He's 60 now. That's what they're doing. He's, he's I love it. Shot. I All love right, it. I love it. I love it. All right, man. We'll see you. Okay. All right. So then what we're going to do is, whoops, hold on a second here. I got to stop this screen here. I got to do all this. Okay. All these things. All right. So we're going to bring Nick in. We're going to bring uh, Quan in. I don't know. It might let me bring. It does. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. It, it wow. is a party. It is it's a party. party. It's a party. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Mark. Uh, Hello. Hey, what's Hello going there. on? What's good? So, so I'll tell you this, Mark. Uh, in a couple minutes, uh, we'll cycle uh, somebody out. Hello. And, uh, and you will be my last person. Hello. Hello. Uh, oh, anyway, Mike. Hello. Um, yeah. I, we can hear you. Hello. Peter. Hello there. You hear me? Sorry, my mute muted. We can hear you, man. Hello. My mic. My mic. Hello. My mic was muted. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Hey, Peter Rabbit's Defender, we can hear you, man. Hello? Can you hear us? Can you hear Hello? us? Hello? Uh, that's, I'm, I'm, oh, my gut feeling hey. is no. Hey, man. Yes, hey, I can hear on? you. Good to see you, Peter Rabbit's Defender. Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, shit. We can hear you. Yeah, oh, we can hear you. situation can you hear that we're having with the oh, Eddie earlier. Or Sounds like you've got thing. an earpiece problem there. It's another AirPod problem. Yeah, yeah. I think... I think, is, I think it in, that, is it in a private chat? I don't see anything um, in the private chat. Unplug your earpiece and plug it back in. That's why okay, I want okay. the earbuds, not the AirPods, because I didn't want to have that issue. Uh, okay, while we're trying to figure that out, if somebody, if somebody could message, oh, uh, if somebody could message him then in the back then and just uh, uh, tell him, yeah, thank you, thank you, William. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, Andrew Christie with another five dollars super chat. Thank you, Andrew. Says a uh, hot take. Don't like the Martha scene. Didn't need Wonder Woman or Doomsday and BVS. Still love the Snyderverse. Shocker. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what, man? It's, look, you know what? There's there's something <laughs> for everybody. You know, um, and and that's the thing, man. And that's OK. Like, you know, like I, I, I don't know. Um, I love the Marx scene. But that's one of my favorite scenes of the whole movie. It's really too. interesting. I do, too. I do, too. But, you know, the thing is, like, I'm not going to I don't hate on somebody who has like a differing, um, you know, a differing opinion about it. You know, I mean, like, and I wouldn't yeah. try to tell them that they weren't a fan. You know, like, I don't think a lot of people truly understood the context of it, though. They just see it for the the text, and they don't they don't realize the meaning of it sometimes. Because when yeah. I hear people say why they don't like it, you know, I don't hate on them, but it's like I'm so disappointed that that didn't get through to them in the way that I think Zack Snyder meant it to get through to people, because there was so much going on in that scene, and it just seems like he hears a name and snaps out of it. But it's not they over it's oversimplified. It's like mm -hmm. no, there's a lot more. There's so many layers to that 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 whole that whole little conversation that they're having. And you got to read, if you read Kingdom Come uh, towards the end, you'll understand what I mean. It changed Batman. Yep. It, 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 re, it restores why he got involved into what he's doing. He didn't, he never wanted anybody to feel the type of pain that he had to feel as an orphan. Mm -hmm. And now he's looking at Superman who's about to lose his only living parent who's about to become an orphan. And so he's, he's, he goes back to his core of wanting to stop that. And that's what I was like wondering about the new Batman movie. Like, what? How are they gonna? What are we gonna do with um, that whole story? Like, are we gonna see like you know Robert Pattinson's Batman kind of like deal with like that? Because I don't know well, what the story it's a year line two. is. Well, it's a he's he's in. It takes place at the beginning of his year, his second year. Oh. Um, I don't know, I don't know if they're gonna tell an origin story or they could just do flashbacks or something like that, but. At this point, because of the previous incarnations of Batman, you really don't need to articulate an origin story anymore. You could probably yeah, just for go sure. on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just be uh, flashbacks. Real quick, for sure. real quick, guys. Uh, Mark uh, Benson's. Uh, if you could do me a favor, man. If if you want to try to come in, uh, uh, hit me up on Twitter, uh, real quick, and I will send you the link. I'm uh, I because I, I took the link out of the chat and I'm not going to put the link up for for others to come in because because we we have been going three hours and eleven minutes right now and it is four thirty nine okay. and uh, <laughs> and so we're not going to go too much longer 
Uh, cool. It is a cool, fun party, and uh, I love having everybody in here. Oh, it's great. It's great. Great to see a bunch of new faces and and uh, and and new, new avatars. New avatars. <laughs> and new avatars as well. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and so, Mark, if you if you want to hop in here for a couple of minutes, I, I'd be I'd be happy with that. Uh, so. Uh, uh, if you want to uh, send me uh, send me a, a private message on Twitter, you know, um, or whatever, I'll uh, I'll get you hooked up, man. All right, cool. That was all. That was all. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, do we know anything else about like this new Batman movie? Besides, like, what you just said, like it takes place. I think you said year two. Year two, the Riddler is the main enemy. Um, a Batman is in a transitional period where he is gaining the trust of the police department, but there's still a lot of people on there that don't appreciate the fact that there's a vigilante out there yeah. uh, doing their job. He is just at the beginning of his trust relationship with Jim Gordon, and there are a lot of rogues gallery characters that come in and out of there, but the primary villain is the Riddler. Uh, and it's just basically kind of an introduction to his rogues gallery, but it, it pinpoints on one per, one particular person. And you're seeing him develop his technology. You're seeing him in the raw form of what you would see Batman in five, six, seven years at the line. You know, so you see his his car looks like a Dodge Charger type of car. Yeah, that but, looks sick. you know, it's 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 a it's a stripped down version of Batman because he's just now be, he becoming what we, we we will know he'll be. Mm-hmm. But mate, yeah, it, it's a, it's a Riddler acting like a serial killer, telling jokes or doing his riddles and you know the tape face and all that. But that's pretty much what I glean from it, from what they put out. Yeah, and I, I, you can tell because um, you look at like what we've seen like Ben Affleck's Batman, where he you know he's been doing this for so long, you know he kind of knows and has like that Batmobile and all that. But you know it's like year two, he probably doesn't have the, the, that knowledge of like. Up, like the upgrades that he wants to do, so it's just by him figuring out and learning. You know, I'll say, this, I'll say I'll say this. At first, I really didn't like the the new Batmobile. I didn't like the car. Um, and then you know, I had to take a step back because I'm always I'm always on the side of being comic book accurate with things. Like you know, if in doubt, right? I'm not saying that everything always has to be 100 percent you know from the comics. But I think that it does help because you got to know where you came from, right? And you got to know what your source material is. Yeah. Well, and so here's the thing, though, is because I because at first when I first saw it, I was kind of giving it a hard time because, you know, yeah, it's got a windshield. What? Because we've been so accustomed to seeing like these Batmobiles that have very little windshield, right? Oh, yeah. You know, very little windshield uh, because, you know, obviously he's out fighting crime and, you know, bullets and everything like that. And so I've been kind of used to that idea and that kind of thinking. I mean, we we had the freaking Tumblr, for God's sake, right? And yeah, then, that's and what then, I was going to say. You know, and, then, mm-hmm. and, then even, and then even this, I still got this here from, uh, t- tells you how often, like, I clean everything, right? But, um, from yeah. my, uh, and who knows? Patrick, Patrick Totopoulos, you know, interview, Ooh. you know. Oh, uh, that's nice. That is, that is nice. With, uh, with the Batmobile. <laughs> You know, but I mean, you look at look look at that. I mean, it's like you know, even if that is windshield, it's like fortified windshield, right? It's like you know, and and it's like mm-hmm. all this all this uh, you know armor and everything like that. And so, mm-hmm. but so we got that. Well, here's the thing: is like, I I was like a lot of other people, and it's kind of looking at it, going, well, you know, Batman wouldn't just have you know this uh, you know this regular muscle car kind of thing. And then you know what? I had to pull out a couple of my old comic books. And I was remembering in the Mm -hmm. '80s, Batman had a freaking just a just a black Lamborghini or a black uh, uh, Corvette Stingray, you know. Um, Yeah, and I mean, and so and so when he met Jason Todd, he literally was out that night in a um, in a Lamborghini, I think it was, and uh, and you know, and Jason Todd stole the wheels off of the uh, off of the Batmobile, and so, you know, I'm just I don't know. I don't um, mind it because it, it gives you a point that he can evolve into as a year two well, exactly. Batman. He exactly. doesn't know what kind of and, violence. Know, and that's be up. that. That's kind of science mm-hmm. fictiony, you know, kind of cool Batmobile kind of thing. But like once I started thinking about that, I was like, well, you know, Batman had that in in the comics. Um, I I guess I can I can be okay with that. Like I I still don't like the um, I don't like the cowl. I just yeah, don't like the cowl. The cowl and the cowl. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still the, the cow, you, yeah. it looks I like kinda, it has pointy mm. ears, and I, I, I don't know. There's, there's some, some, something weird about that. But again, I'm also willing to reserve judgment until I see 
the film. If I see that, the film and I don't like it, you know. Thinking, I mean, like even if you look at like the Batmobile and it's kind of like you know it's like kind of like what you see in like the original stuff, kind of like a more simpler thing. Yeah. You know, there's always you know this is like him, you know, year two. You know, yeah. I think probably so the Riddler's gonna be his first first like real like threat, and so. Maybe over the course of the movie, we see him like you know take some take some losses, and then he comes back stronger, makes some upgrades, and who knows? Maybe in this film, we see a new Batmobile possibly, or upgrades to it, or upgrades to his suit, or I even heard that they're potentially already you know green lighting a, a second film. So maybe we'll see all those new upgrades, new Batmobile in the second film. Yeah, he evolved. And another thing that you see in that um, the smite snort. Um, another yeah. thing you'll see. You'll see in that. Um, you okay, Nick? Bobby fell asleep. One of the things that you saw in that trailer is the yeah, rage. Just... He doesn't seem to have the composure that we know Batman to have. Like when he beats the hell out of that guy, uh, the Batman brutal. that we know at a certain point would not do the violence for violence sake thing necessarily. That Batman seems to have a lot of rage that is probably going to take him to year three or four to contain and control mm-hmm. himself in order to, to administer. Law and order. Otherwise, yeah, it's just sure. over violent. So you're at it. You, you got to appreciate where they're coming from with this, and that's the problem with with DC's characters and their fandom is that people want the pop tart version of all their superheroes put it in the toaster. Two minutes, it's done. Instead of understanding that each storyteller is going to tell this from their perspective, their different points of time, you know, and you the end the end product may be something that you are. Um, familiar with but you got to get there nobody wants to nobody wants to go on the journey they just want to get off at the finish line exactly it's the same thing like what i think of like with the the whole justice league trilogy i mean like you start off with like all these different movies and you know you got you just gotta roll with it you know like when i first saw bvs and like the theaters i was like okay uh this 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 is okay but it could be better but then like i watched the, the ultimate edition and it just it was just that much better you know it's just like yeah. you, they keep building, you know, and that's what they just got to keep doing with that WB. They got to cons- be Let the storytellers tell their stories. Exactly, because they really know what they're doing. At least Zach does, you know. You see it in his films and the passion he does. He's even like, you know, he's saying like he was going to film in his front or backyard. Like, and I bet he would if they just would give him, you know, a chance. They would have. And, yeah. I mean, there's Mar- so Marvel much opportunity with that, it. Yeah, Marvel learned something at the beginning that DC didn't learn. You don't fans don't tell stories. Storytellers tell stories. Exactly. Right? Fans can have whatever opinion they have, but when yeah, at some point you have to draw the line and tell your story. And Warner Brothers has, has not been able to do that. They are reactionary, and that's a problem. Whereas mm-hmm. Marvel is not reactionary. Marvel's going to do what they're going to do. They don't give a rat's ass. What exactly. You, think you know, and they're going to they're going to go from point A to point Z, and they're going to get that story done, and then they're going to move on. They'll make minor adjustments, mm-hmm. but um, but like I said, DC films lets fans you know, have way too much leverage when in regards to John. It's one thing to have an opinion. We all have an opinion, but I'm not a screenwriter. I'm not a director. I didn't go to school for that. I am not the storyteller. At some point I have to sit back in my chair and let things unroll. And that's, that, that's a problem with uh, DC's uh, whole situation. Yeah. They just, I don't know. Like that's the thing, like rewatching these Marvel movies, you just see them make slow changes over time. Cause you know, they, they, they have a set plan and they just go with it. But then along the way, they make those slight changes that just make the story better and make their build on those characters. You know, like in the first Thor movie, he was, you know, blonde eyebrows, you know, blonde, long hair. And then over time, like in the Avengers movie, like I was just watching a little while ago, you know, it's not, you know, they still got the long blonde hair. Cause we all know that, you know, the Marvel stuff, but like, you know, they, yeah, and they they uh they changed it a little bit. They don't make it, you know, don't got the blonde eyebrows or as as blinds like a little toned. But like, you know, I just think like DC what they got to do if they want to keep, you know, getting the fans, they just got to yeah. roll with the punches and just got to be more consistent cuz you know, you see the backbone. differences in story. Yeah. Have backbone, have some spine. Mhm. Don't flinch every time some fan, you know, some guy on a on a blog says it's not my Superman, you know. So what? It'll be someone else's, and you can come on for the ride after you, after we're done, you know. Yeah, they just gotta. I mean, they even have like 
like I don't know if they like truly realize it. Apparently they don't, but like they have such like a good foundation for what they have and they've been building on the you know, they got the Shazam, they got all the Aquaman doing Aquaman too, but you know, I just don't know why they're not continuing with it. I just I just don't get it because there's just so much stuff they could build on, especially, you know, with Zach introducing, you know, the Green Lantern that we never saw, which I think would be amazing to see, especially with like the concept art that we've been seeing. I think I think it would be amazing to see kind of them going forward with all these things. Well, they think they know better than the people who, who do this for a living as far as as far as combo goes. And that's where the, the clash comes. There's, there's no intermediate there that can tell the filmmaker, OK, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to take your structure. I'm going to feed all this comic book stuff into a, a mainline producer and we're going to get this done. But th- it has to be all or nothing with D.C., so mm-hmm. the, if you have the studio, the studio has to trump out and drown out the, the storyteller, which should be Jim Lee. You know, yeah. there has to be a working relationship between because Jim Lee doesn't know how to make movies. But he, he, knows how like to, he, knows how, yeah, he knows how to pick up a cell phone or, or give it, type an email to to get producers. There are people in Hollywood that are just hired to go get you the right people, to get you the infrastructure, to get you the producers, the screenplayers, all that to uh to do that so jim lee doesn't have to know how to do a movie but once he gets these people in place here's my story here's my nuts and bolts now go make a movie and that they don't have that right now they they have they have executives and guys from new line and guys from this they don't have people that are intimate with the comic book property and there's no intermediate to 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 know to run the show you know so and that's the sad part because it, it's all laying out there for them to to be wondrous, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. And they have, like, such passionate people, like, wanting to make this content. Like, they have Ben Affleck with, you know, wanting to make that ba- the, that Batman movie with uh, Deathstroke. I, I I mean, I played the, uh, was it, Batman Arkham Origins game. Like, I think that movie would be amazing. And, like, just, like, the passion behind that project, like, with Ben, I think it would, I think it would be really something. But I just don't know. Like, they even got Zach. He's so passionate about it, too, you know? Just, uh... It's really uh, those are kind of filmmakers. See it. Yeah, those are Ben Affleck is an Academy Award winning filmmaker. Yeah, he knows how to stuff. he knows how to do this. Chris Terrio is an Academy Award winning screenwriter. He knows how to do this stuff, you know. And and you have those people under your employee, and you do everything you can to chase them off because you think you know better. Um, it's it's kind of sad because they still are trying to move forward with no plan. I yeah, mean, what's I mean, the plan? What, what, what is the plan with Black Adam? Are we gonna, are we gonna create an entire universe around Black Adam? If so, you don't need to be waiting until Black Adam comes out. I need to be building anticipation about the Justice Society and all these things right now. And right now, we don't have anything. What yeah, are we looking it's, forward it's, to right now? You know, it's mm-hmm. kind of, uh, it's kind of weak. Yeah, and even if they like do kind of try to bring the Black Adam stuff and all that into, like, where are they gonna put it into? Because apparently they're done with the Snyderverse. So what type of where are they going to put that into? Like, are they going to continue going with like the Justice League if, story? Or what? If they're going to continue with the with with Black Adam's universe and make that the basis of their cinematic universe, I don't have a problem. What I would have a problem if it's done so at the expense of all other realities. When we have these several platforms, if I have several platforms to put content on, why am I excluding one? just because you've made a decision to go with another, okay? I never see Je- uh, Zack Snyder's vision on a big screen again. Guess what? I got I got HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Put it somewhere. Don't do not do it at the exclusion of. That's where I think they screwed up is because they've, they've gone in a different direction at the exclusion of the fans who supported that and, and the mm-hmm. stuff that was done. So it's, I can't support your, your new vision because you shut me out. Why should I go give you anything when you're basically saying, you know, you're not listening to me? Yeah, and you know? it's just it's just like I don't I it, when I like think about it, it's kind of like crazy because you know they're doing all this multiverse stuff and yeah, but like they're they're clipping off part of that and doesn't doesn't really make sense because I mean it's a part of the multiverse and you know I mean yeah. they can have alternate realities and all that stuff, but I mean you can't just all of a sudden build it up and you know support this and then all of a sudden just cut it out. I mean not really they didn't really support it. Well, they think we're stupid. And they, they think that because there's a one Superman or two Superman somewhere else that it's going to harm their project. No, it's <laughs> not. That's, that, that's like saying that because Superman appears in action comics, that Superman Black and Red, which takes place in a different whatever, or, or Superman Year One, I'm not going to read those if I love Superman. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat up any content that you give me. If I love Batman, I'm watching Ben Affleck's Batman, and I'll give... Um, 
I'll give Pattinson's Batman a shot. But I can't I can't build that goodwill if you're constantly taking the rug and the carpet from under us, you know, at every step. It's like why why I have every, there's a lot of people who have a bad taste about Battinson without ever seeing it. Or they're never gonna yeah. see it. But because they didn't get Batfleck, they're not gonna give Battinson a chance. Is that right or wrong? No, but that's human nature. Yeah, that means yeah. that would be they give you something and then they just pull it away. Yeah, you can't trust them, you know. Kinda sad. Mm-hmm. Can't trust studios. Oh. Okay. Good. Um, he said he'll be right back, so I don't know if he's back yet. Or, or he'll come, probably come yeah. back. With oh, jeez. Who knows? He might hair. come back in another costume. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, early in the morning. I that, think that, that sound is him putting on a mask or something. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, no. As long as he's fully dressed, we're okay. Yeah. Speaking of ba- speaking nope. of uh, speaking of Batman, I've been <laughs> put anything on. I'm I'm sorry. Some of us like drank like three different things tonight, man. And it's like sorry, I, I had to go pee. Deal with it. No. <laughs> what been cooking that? that? You get all the flash gear. <laughs> been cooking. Yeah, that. Got, it's a bucket for us here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got. I got. <laughs> Ooh, but oh, no, don't don't send don't pee in that. Send me that. In the <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no! You sent, you sent me. The, Speaking the, of that, the thing. <laughs> no, I will marry them up when I get that in the box. <laughs> you don't need that. You don't have any room. Look at around here. Where are you going to put that? There's no room. Give it plenty of room. I got plenty of room. <laughs> And I want yeah, the yeah. Cobra Commander helmet too. Uh, there's some, there's still some white on those walls. You can definitely add some stuff. I'll pay for the shipping when you send the Cobra Commander mask. The helmet there, right there. Yeah, that's mine too. You don't want that. You don't want that. Yeah, Enosh. I'll wear that. I'll wear that Enosh. on the screen. Enosh. Yeah. Enosh. Yeah. I hear you. What? <laughs> what happened? I don't know. Somebody call, somebody I think that you can man uh, see Like, Hello? and I can what? You think that uh, I can what? Yeah, it's me. I'm lost. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I think that you. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Somebody's getting their ass kicked in the background there. Are you a chair or a chair shot? That, that was definitely that was definitely a chair adjustment. If you're alive, say you're alive right now. Somebody, somebody, somebody. <laughs> turn into ECW in somebody's house. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, okay. Hold on a second. All right. Chill for just a second. Uh, uh, Peter Rabbit's defender. What were you saying? <laughs> He's on a delay. Uh, I'm gonna say that uh, I think you should, uh, you know, ma- <laughs> you should make the, the museum, you know, for the toy. Oh, museum, oh yeah. museum, yes, 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 yes. Well, you know, maybe one day, maybe one day, you know, we'll, we've been talking about like, yeah, 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 you're on a delay, oh, yeah. you're on a delay, that's the problem. Uh, but you're okay, you're all good. Uh, we, we've joked because, yeah, uh, yeah, the sorry, guy. About the guy that, uh... <laughs> Now you're good. The guy next door is wanting to sell his house. We said we could just buy the house next door, turn that into the Poindexter Lounge, and then we could just uh, do it as a bed and breakfast. People could come stay there, and we could like just put all of our stuff in there and make it like you know the Poindexter Lounge museum. I'm gonna jack so much shit or so much stuff out of your face, dude. <laughs> do you we know? would lock it down, William. I we would really lock it mean. down. How much? How many? Are you, I'll be like, joining, I me a number of how many characters or how many action figures you have in there because I can like you can tell in the background there's a ton. Oh man, I you know what? The last time I I tried going around and counting, I got up over about six hundred, and I and oh, I had to geez. stop. And I well, and that was just the out of package stuff. Too many. Man. Good. That means you won't miss the stuff I take since you won't. <laughs> yeah, you you you'll forget you. you won't and that oh, and by the way, that was just Star Wars. That wasn't even the uh, GI Joe the, stuff. Uh, yeah, that wasn't GI Joe. That wasn't uh, uh, DC. That yeah. wasn't any of that. Thing. Jacking that helmet. I'm jacking both. You of ain't know it. You don't know. And there you go. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to be careful, William. <laughs> I'm gonna have an Uber wait for me. Just, say just, what? Be- just between you, William, me. and Wonder Bag, oh, man. I tell you what. 
Well, Wonderbag actually lives in, the, in your proximity, though, so I'm going to you got to worry about you got to worry about her big time. She can just show up at your doorstep. Damn! That's wow. True. Yeah. Me, what you kind of like no oh. I'm coming. That's so creative, man. <laughs> That's Silverhawks, baby. That's oh, Mon- dude, that has Monstar. The best, best intro of any cartoon show is Silverhawk. Yeah. Only cartoon, only cartoon to ever have a guitar solo that, to, for its intro. It's not a guitar solo. It's a synth solo. Whoa. Whoa. Mm. <laughs> uh, are we talking about the same point? Mm. Yeah, Whoa. when uh, when Bluegrass is playing his uh, his, it's supposed to be a guitar, but that was, but that's the eighties. The eighties did a lot of that stuff where it's like it was it would be like synth, and so like it would be like a guitar synth sound, but it would be okay. like a guitar, and they would and you know yeah. The other one was uh, Wheeled Warriors, not the intro song, but the outro song. Keep yes. on rolling. That yes. was a kick ass song. I'm like, how the hell does this end up on a cartoon? And I, I have like the MP4 version of it, and it's a long. The long version of it, I'm like, dude, th- some, somebody, everybody who wasn't in a hair band or wasn't able to make it in a band mm-hmm. in the 80s, they found ways to get their music out, and they did it in these damn cartoons, man. I'm telling you, man, they just don't, they just don't make, they, they don't make theme songs anymore like they used to. I mean, every sitcom had a recognizable theme song. Oh, every yeah. every yeah. TV Back show had had a recognizable yeah. like at, at least like a like. Do you guys remember Auto Man? I had that stuck. William, thank you. William, you are my spirit animal. Like, okay, look. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. There, I there. There's one thing that I want so bad, but like, I would never buy it for myself because, like, I can't justify it to myself. And that is an Auto Man action figure. Uh, they made an Auto Man action figure. Auto Man, for those of you who don't know, was an old '80s TV show by. Uh, Glenn Larson, and uh, and it, it would only did one season. It was a takeoff of Tron kind of deal, where it he was in the computer before the season even wrapped. Exactly, up. it was it was back part. then when they I when cried. people it was back then when people didn't really know what computers really did. So like this, so Desi Arnaz Jr. is a cop, and he makes a uh, a simulation hologram out of this computer, which is Auto Man. He's the perfect automatic man. And his he body is, quarters. Remember yeah, his, his body was very Tron esque. It glowed and everything. Oh. And then he had this little this little thing called cursor. Of course, it was a cursor, and it could it could make anything. So it could make uh it his could car. make a car. It made the auto car, and the auto car was a Lamborghini that was outlined like Tron, and it was really cool. But it took all the corners. It took at ninety degree angles. Yeah, it actually turned with the corners. It was so cool. Yeah, so it'd be like. And you know another show that premiered on that that same year that that had no business ever being greenlit, Manimal. Remember Manimal? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Simon oh, yeah. McCorkendale. Oh my oh, god. Oh yeah. But but the thing is, is like so they made they had they had a plan for a full line of Auto Man uh, action figures, but they only made one. So if you look on the back, the other action figures are stupid because they're just like like detectives at the police station. <laughs> like it's That's so That's really all it was. <laughs> That's all it was. But Auto Man was like kid. the cool guy, right? But Cursor could make anything. So he'd make make a car. He would make a helicopter that also was out was black and it was outlined like that. And you and you could make a motorcycle and all, anything basically that Auto Man needed. But the thing is they made an action figure and the action figure is super cheesy but you can find it on um uh ebay they got it out here the toy stores have it out here do they yeah. so you can find it on ebay but uh the thing is is that uh people want so much money for it and and every once in a while i find one that's like around maybe you know like a hundred dollars loose like 80 to 100 dollars loose but like to Too find much. to get one on the card there's somebody somebody's got some noise going on here guys um Somebody, so, somebody's being snuffed right now but go ahead <laughs> <laughs> um oh, okay i think i found it um okay um anyways uh yeah but so to find one on a card people want over 200 dollars for that action figure and it's just like a it's just a little action figure like on a card and it's and a I, shitty it, or it's a crappy oh it's the worst action crappy, figure. actually you know let me see if i can find it I, i'll show it to you guys but like it it's is. like it's like one I of those it. things i bought it as a kid from from uh fedco a place called fedco in california it was, it was I, and i was so excited at the point and the week after i got the figure they canceled the show man Glenn a no. larson Glenn A. Larson created so the average lifespan of a Glenn A. Larson show was 1.5 seasons. He, he, some people look back at him in retrospect. 
Battlestar Galactica is this big legendary show. Two seasons. He got he he he, he was paid to throw things up against the wall for the networks because they were so starved for content that he just they just greenlit everything he did and they would cancel it and then they would hire him for something else. But as a kid, it was great, man. I mean, yeah. Battlestar Galactica got four or five years off of what uh, Ronald Moore, and it literally got canceled in mid season second. Remember Galactica eighty? Ah, oh, it was the Flying Vikes. That was awful, but Buck Rogers. And then his big hit, I think the big hit was A-Team. I think A-Team was the only one that really took off and lasted, you know, four seasons. Yeah, this, this action figure is just so horrible, but it's... It's brutal. It, oh, boy. Oh, yeah. boy. It is but awful. It, but, it's, but it's my childhood, man. And it so is it's mine, like, too. So, but, but I was saying that because, like, the theme song was so mm-hmm. recognizable, and no, but none of my friends remembered it when it was growing up. I was the only one, oh. but that was stuck in my head, uh, William, for the longest time. Just da 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 Yeah, man, it was just, it was so good. Just clip that for us. Oh my gosh, yeah. It just does the Arnaz sitting at that 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 giant ass computer that did absolutely nothing. I know, man. It's so stupid. So, it didn't even. I don't even remember it glowing in the dark because I took it right out of the package. I think it was supposed to glow, but mine didn't. That was such oh, a disappointment. Oh, it looks like somebody. Well, this is interesting. So somebody has created, uh, like, you know how like they have these like uh, reaction, uh, you know, figure type of uh, deals, like where they. Hold on, I'll show you guys. Um, got 80s hair on that thing. <laughs> oh, I know, dude. What's his name? Who played? Uh, who played him? Was like so great. But check this out. I might have to look into these. Wow. Look at this. Oh, so they retro. Look at that. Yeah. Some somebody retroed this up, man. And oh man, I would look love... at the Auto Man in that picture versus the, the crap we got as as ten year olds, man. Right. That was that was robbed, what I was dude. thinking. I was looking we at the difference. Oh. Yeah. But from our point of view, when we got this stuff, we were like, we was like the holy grail, dude. I felt like Indiana Jones when he got that golem before he got crushed by the ball, you know? I wonder how much they want for these, man. I, I'd settle for these all day long. <laughs> gotta, I wouldn't even want that the other ones collection. if I could get those, dude. I know, man. Look at that card. That card looks amazing. Yeah. Wow. Design Auto Man, Manimal. It still it still I mean, has the same it still has the same stupid uh just like other guy action look, figures. Like look at the just, detail though on Jesse Arnaz's character though. The detail on the trench coat of that that's actually a pretty good deal for that that mm-hmm. scale of figure. Look well, at that, the car. That, you got the car never right. See. Yes, that's Lieutenant Jack uh Curtis. So th- this is uh Captain Boyd. Walter th- this is this is uh Desi Arnaz's junior's character. Oh, was horrible. Walter Walter Nebaker. Walter Nebaker. Mm. What a great show. The mid '80s. We're gonna spend the rest of our lives on this planet trying to explain the mid '80s to people. I know, it's, man. It's, it's just not gonna. There, no one will ever appreciate it. And it's like, and it's like, I, I feel like I'm on an alien planet sometimes trying to explain our childhood to some of these people. <laughs> it's because you can't, you can't understand. You look at the cheesy stuff that we had, and but but to us, it was like, holy cow. I mean, just the thought of getting it, not even getting it, just the anticipation. When you veered off into the Toy Story, you're like, oh, is this my moment? Is this my chance? And then you get the cheesiest thing now. You look at it now, I'm like, oh, that's what excited me as 10 years old. But at the time, it was like, hell, man. I got it. I tore it open. We, you know, packages today, we're, we're, we're sacrilege if we rip these things out of the package. Hell, yeah. we didn't even get to the car before I had figures open, man. Mm-hmm. You know, I was I'm just like, thinking about the Transformer toys. Like, it was way before, like, for me, I was born in like 2001, I, but I still grew Holy up like that. Holy cow. <laughs> Hold up. What are you showing right there? What's uh, that? It's an Optus oh, hold on, Prime. Can, you, hold on, can hold you, on. you get some light on that? Because I can't see anything. That looks Zoom really dark. In. Yeah. I had the original on one. I re- oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Dude, that's what, that's what oh. I was trying to get into. Oh, shoot. Look at that beauty. That's oh, nice. Cool. Does he transform? You- Nice. No. No, no, they don't. Uh, oh, that sucks. I, I got that. I got I got the original Optimus Prime for my birthday, and that was one of the last um, die-cast ones that they were making. Uh, <laughs> every, everything every, In Generation 2, if you notice, in Generation 2, and from 86 on, 
they they stop with die cast. It's all plastic because it's because of the um because of the movie because they kill off half the toy line. Yeah, and I know a lot of people who hate Warner Brothers for that. People just sat there for that movie, and I, I saw that movie the first day it was open, and just watching my childhood get just blown apart. I mean, I, holy cow! All my I, I like the that movie. I had died. Every figure I that I had died in that in the first ten minutes. Ooh. I'm like, dude, Ironhide dead, Wheeljack dead. Yeah, I had Prime. I had gotten Prime my previous birthday to that dead. I know, you know? man. And I had to go out buy a bunch of, I had to go out and buy a bunch of different Transformers now. So you fleeced me of my childhood and forced me basically to debug my parents to get everything else. So you know, and I had I had like a little little thing where all my dead Transformers. I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> and they brought Prime back the next year, and I was happy, you know, because I hadn't thrown them away. Then I got Metroplex, and Metroplex came with the black guys, came with Slammer, and then Crypticon. I got Crypticon, and Crypticon walked around. I'm like, holy cow! And then I had to wait what 50 years for a Unicron toy to come out. Which oh, was dude. ridiculous. Uh, that, was, that somebody should have been fired. No that cool. oh, guys. Orson well, hey, Orson mm-hmm. Welles, last role. Yes. Unicron. Yes. So, so there was so Leonard Nimoy. Oh, Leonard Nimoy. Oh, my gosh. So many great names. In, hey, listen, uh, please, Leonard Robert, Nimoy. Robert Stack, mm-hmm. Leonard Nimoy, Robert Culp, Judd Nelson. Judd Nelson. Yep. You know, Star uh, so Stream, this, rest in yeah. peace. Oh, I know, man. It's so sad. It's so sad. Uh, so uh, I want to do a couple things. I want to give uh, people who uh, have to go uh, a chance. I, I know Nick just had to go. DL, uh, brother, we're going to have to have you on more often, man. So, uh, so uh, Saggy's toy. Saggy's toy. Hey, you're Saggy's Melon. Change your name when you come on. Have that as your name, Saggy's <laughs> Melon. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah. 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 What's up? That delay again. The delay. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I just want to say that thank you so much that you mentioning uh, show with Bossman. Oh, of course. (laughs) Of course. I I changed your name for you. There, there it is. There it is. Hey, oh. screenshot that, please. Screenshot that, was, that uh, you know what? I don't know how long I've been doing this, and I didn't realize I could change people's names until like a couple of weeks ago, and I changed yeah, Jarbo's name. Yeah, I did it to you. Yeah, yeah. it was fun. It was fun. Well, we're we're gonna we're gonna start wrapping up here, anyways. But uh, but I want to give the people who who just came in a chance to say whatever they want to say. But uh, but man, if you got to go, DL, um, I mean, you don't have to go, but if if you got to go, you got to go. Um, yeah, but. I mean, uh, yeah, if if you're if you're about to close it out, I, I can I can stay till you till you close it out if you're about to. Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah, I just I just wanted to get uh, 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 some uh, some different. Uh, whoops, um, oh, I'm just I'm just looking at what's going on here. Uh, so, uh, I just wanted to ask real quick uh, because they did wait for a while. Uh, our our three other guests who came in here uh, towards the end, even uh, Master Jedi. Uh, well, let's start with you. Did you have something specific that? Uh, that you uh, had on your mind tonight, or did you uh, just come in to say hi? There was quite a lot, but I guess you guys went through a lot of topics, so I had to wait. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, man. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Master Jedi, because uh, I know you and I have been talking, man. So when I, when I do my next call in, I will get you right up to the front, okay? That's what I try to do. It, it's kind of like the, the Johnny Carson syndrome. It's like, well, we have went over a little bit, and so um, next time we'll we'll get you on first thing. So, uh, so I'm hope- not worried about it. I know. Well, we we've had you on, and we'll have you on again. So, so uh, I just want you to know that. Uh, what about you, Tony? Did you have uh, something real quick that? Uh, yeah, I guess. The, um. Yeah. Um. This is something that I talked spoke with about Matt a while back. Okay. Um. And um, I know we were talking about Star Wars a while back before I came in. Um. What makes you uh, think? Um, why do you think the prequels are getting a lot more love now and the sequels, seeing as how people crap on them for so many years, suddenly a new trilogy comes up? They're not so bad. What do you, what's your take on that? I gotta take the wig off for that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, plus, my head's getting really warm in there. Um, we anyways, uh, well, well, I, t- I tell you what my, my personal opinion about it is, and that is, okay, so we don't think about this, but, you know, episode one came out in 1999, right? So that's 22 years ago, right? So, all those kids that grew up with the prequels, that's that's what I'm seeing most of all, is like all, all the kids that grew up with the prequels, and I and I don't begrudge them this. 
Uh, because for me, for my generation, growing up with the original uh, trilogy, we look at that, and that's that's what brings some magic to our to our eyes again, right? It puts a sparkle in our eyes again, and and uh, and we remember that because we have these. We can look at a bad movie that was even you know from our childhood, like Howard the Duck, for example, right? Like I like Howard the Duck. You know, like I, William hates it. William hates it. But I have good memories of Howard the Duck and like watching that and having fun with it. And so is it a bad movie? Yes. Absolutely. It's a bad movie. It's a horrible movie, but I still love it. Superman four is a bad movie, but I still yeah. love it. I still love I got a special place in my heart for Superman four. It makes no <laughs> sense whatsoever. Nuclear man flies, you know, the uh what's her name oh, out boy. into space and she survives. I, it doesn't make any sense. Superman moves the freaking moon and the planet doesn't, you know, crumble. So, you know, like what are you gonna do? He has bridge building powers with his yeah, eyes. With his eyes, yes. He, he has rebuilding bridge. the Great Wall of China vision. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> yes. So it is what it is, right? But the thing is, is that what I see is, is that I think a lot of those kids who grew up with that man and now, Robin was my guilty picture. There you go. There you go. Right, and that's a, and that's that. a horrible movie, right? But you what know, movie but like, did you say? Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. Yeah. Batman and Robin. Yeah. <laughs> so so like, even I, even I, even I, yeah. even I can look at Batman and Robin and find things about it that I that I can enjoy, you know, of, of it. But the thing is, is that. To me, it's about it's about those kids who grew up with the prequels. Those have a special place in their heart. And so now that they're they're getting older, all that generation that crapped all over the prequels and like like literally pushed George Lucas out of his own IP, right? I mean, you know, people keep forgetting about that. I don't know why I don't know how people keep forgetting about that. That mm -hmm. like People hated the prequels. Like all these people, like all these, you know, kids who coming up after me and stuff. And maybe I'm just getting old. And that's why like all these fandom ministers hate me or whatever. I don't know. But it's like, it's like all of a sudden they're just like, oh no, no, no. People, people always loved the prequels. Like, shut up. It's very I was the only old school guy with my like I love I love like episode three. Well, and that's things like I, I'm not saying I don't <laughs> love, like like look, the, look, I have developed a huge love for Attack of the Clones that I didn't have before at first. Okay. You know, it's still hard to watch some of the fandom, Men the phantom menace, but I love the phantom menace as well. I love all star Wars, but if you ask me what my preference is, it's the original trilogy. I really love the original trilogy, but that's what I grew up with. Right. And so, and for me, the sequel trilogy feels more like the original trilogy than it does the prequels. But I don't begrudge anybody now who, who looks at the prequels and they're like, look, that's what I grew up with. That's what I enjoy. And let's be honest. Things just get better sometimes with age for people. People look mm -hmm. at them differently. They look at them nostalgically. Uh, and, uh, you know, that that's just how it is. Look at Batman v Superman, for example. Everybody hated on Batman v Superman when it came out. It was like it was the worst thing, and now people are discovering Batman v Superman in droves. And you know what? A lot of that is the Ultimate Edition. Yeah, you know what? You know what? A lot of that is though, television. Yeah. Television. It's because it's on TV. TV. Pe people are at home on a, on a Saturday afternoon, and guess what? BVS is on, or or they they're at home, and guess what? Star Wars episode one is on and they watch that and they watch or they watch Star Wars episode two and it's repetitive viewing like that of even something that's cheesy. If it's, if you get repetitive viewing of it, you start looking at it in a different way because now there's different parts you like, and you're looking at those parts instead of looking at it critically. When a movie first comes out, everybody looks at it critically. Right. And it's like, Oh, this movie, these are all the good things and the bad things. And everybody thinks they're a film critic these days. Right. <sighs> so, you know, so the thing is, it's like, that's what I attribute it to. If um, I may, if I yeah, may, to yeah. add on top of that. Go ahead, Saggy's Melon. Yes. <laughs> I am Saggy's Melon for the time being. I, I but, threw um, that up. <laughs> but um, I think another reason why people are starting to, like, appreciate the prequels more is also because of the Clone Wars and Rebels TV yeah, show. That's also. That. Oh, that, yeah. that, that, that's I also, grew up with also, that. Yeah. I love those shows. And that has solidified it. I will, I will give you that. That solidified it because, because yes, that legitimized it. Because there was this nostalgic feeling towards it, and that's why those people start the people who started making those things started bringing some of those elements back, and then that solidified it right there. Absolutely, and you're absolutely. Well, right. And plus, I think it might be safe to say that 
time. And this is a point I know you've made before, Inash. Um, I think when it comes to fan bases, not just Star Wars, which is overall, I think some people are victim to their own expectations and then they're disappointed when they don't, when they don't get what they want. You know, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pe- people are always vi- victim to their own expectations. Hmm. Yeah. It's like we, we get ourselves ho- so hyped up for something, and if it doesn't meet every expectation, oh, yeah. we. We lose our freaking minds, you know. Can I ask you guys something real quick? Because this yeah, is something sure. that Can something I say that, something? No. Hmm. Oh, was that the delay? <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. Uh, uh, yes, Peter Rabbit's defender. Yeah, go, go ahead. Uh, I'm bro. gonna say that uh, I believe that Rogue One is not gonna hold up in the next ten years. Right, it, it doesn't hold up now, in my opinion. <laughs> what hold, what doesn't hold up? Rogue, Rogue One. One. Oh, the the second best Star Wars movie. Honestly, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Rogue, Rogue, Rogue One is going to hold up for Rogue a lot one longer than ten gonna, years. It's, it's not no, hold up in what way? That was actually one of the only ones on 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 Disney ever did good because that was actually nah, right I, I don't Rogue One so. before awesome. Episode no, Four no, happened. No, 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 no. Rogue, Rogue One is awesome. <laughs> no, really? No, 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 no. no, 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 okay, no here we no, go no, with some disagreements. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I love it when you have nine people in the in the stream. Rogue One hey, is one of the better Star Wars movies made. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it'll be built upon and reinforced with this new series. That yeah, I, 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 I like it. It needs nothing like else. To be honest with you, it needs nothing else. I like the third act. The, the third act is awesome, but it's just like. <laughs> Hey, look! Hey, look uh, the, the Darth Vader scene at the end. Oh, mm-hmm. oh my God! Literally, yeah. oh, that's great. Well, that gives that's, you chills. That gives you chills for sure. Great. But you just have to sit through two hours of boring shit. Yeah, but, that's you know, awesome. I, love, I love that movie. <laughs> that was dope. Yeah. I, I the most memorable. Love Rogue One. I'm sorry. Everyone knows yeah, that I'm part not, of the whole movie. I love Rogue One. You know what? Look, look. Even, even I, even I love it. Even I love Rogue One, but I don't love Rogue One. Yeah. Like I, I, I love the idea of Rogue One. And I love many elements of Rogue One. But again, that's why you can love parts yeah. of films or, or you know, um, the idea of a films, uh, you know, of a film, but not necessarily, you know, love that film, you know, completely. I love the characters. I love the story. You, you know, love I'm the sorry, I miss, I... You love the characters? <laughs> yeah. I actually love the in the con- Hold on. In the context of what they Woo. were doing, in the context <laughs> of where their story fell, and the Star Star Wars mythos that gave their characters underlying value for me because I knew they were all going to die. I knew these right. people were all going to get crushed. For and sure. the fact that I knew that, and the fact that they were still able to tell me an entertaining story <laughs> with depth, I, I I thought it was fun. I loved it. I okay. love World One. I'm One sorry, I, I missed this. I miss I missed this. Uh, Ryan Hartwell's five dollar super chat. Thank you, Ryan. Says, have you ever heard of the documentaries In Search of Darkness and In Search of Tomorrow? I've heard of those. I watched a horror I one. Saw, I, I, I'm familiar with these two. Like, oh, shoot, he. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on those two things? Because I've heard of these two before. I don't know where though, but I. Um, I'll explain. Um, Search of Dark is about the horror movies about the '80s, and Search and Tomorrow. Is about- and I think I saw that. I was. Well, that sounds very familiar. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. uh, no Hellblazer. I'm not uh, familiar with Anomaly, uh, but uh, I would definitely uh, take take a take a view. Now, hey, uh, so Dial, you were saying something. Uh, so, there, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. The question. So this was something that's been on my mind for a while since the Rise of Skywalker came out, and everyone's just like so mixed on it. And people mm. like are so quick to being like, we, we want to cancel the sequel trilogy because they didn't get it right. Prequels are better, blah, blah, blah. What, do you think people would start to warm up more to the sequels if they did some sort of similar treatment that they did with the prequels with the Clone Wars and like um, Rebels? If they did like an animated show that expanded on the lore of the sequels, do you think people would warm up to it more? Because I feel that's like- what they're trying to do. What do you think they did to Mandalorian? I don't mean to cut you off, but I, I will answer this. Okay. They they are trying to do this. That is their plan because we saw what they were up to in Mandalorian Season 2. We saw Soki Katano and now there's something... You know, help me out with this one. I don't know for sure we're going to get a Soki Katana show, but 
that's in November where we go. Well, we're going to get uh, a, uh, we're, get, we're, we're getting us an Ahsoka Tano show. We're getting uh, we're getting this, a this Rangers, Rangers Rangers of the New Republic. We're getting uh Rogue uh well uh, not a Rogue One. Uh, uh, Lando Calrissian. The bad squadron. One. There's a bad batch. Um, oh the, well, the the squadron the the, the Rogue Squadron but, uh, movie enough, that's a movie, enough. isn't that? Uh, I, I oh, that's sounds good. Uh, I heard something about Atlanta. Well, 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 batteries, well you know? here's 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 what I'm talking about though. It's like yeah. Well, all hold those- on a second. Hold on a second. Peter, what, what were you saying? You got to go. Might be already gone with the delay. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to go now. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, my iPhone is low bat. Okay, no, well, hey, it was good. Yeah. Good having you on here, man. Good having you on, buddy. Thank you, Peter Rabbit's Defender. Appreciate you, man. I'm gonna get a better equip next time. Okay. Sounds good, man. Thank you. Oh, nice no, to talk behind. to you for the first time. It's See good to talk to you. to you as well, man. Good to talk to you as well. I need to all find right, out buddy. what that screen name's all about, too. Why does Peter Rabbit need defending? Oh. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, but. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So go ahead, DL. No, it's okay. Um, so what I'm talking about is like doing like an animated show that focuses more on like the stuff with Ray, Finn, and Poe. Since we are not, we're we're not sure if Oscar post I- post post sequel. Well, you know what? I, so yeah. I I think that that like would something work. that takes place after. I, the I think Rise that of that would work. I think like that would work. But okay, so that that's one of my problems with the arguments that like I've gotten from, for example, the, some of the people that I debated this last week. Okay. Uh, and and uh, and that is that uh, they're taking a break from that as well. They should, right? Like like when when they did the original trilogy, even did they go and do like a they did a droids cartoon that had R two and C three PO, right? That had mm-hmm. side side characters Yo, from the original right? trilogy, but and then they did Ewoks. Right, they they did did these Ewok adventure movies, and they also did these Ewok cartoons, but they didn't use the main characters. Okay, and I think that that's the same thing that that you know if they do something, you'll see that even with the sequels. Like because when you start getting into whatever happened after the rise of Skywalker, now you're now you're creating whole new lore. You're 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 yeah. going, you're going in a forward. You are you're forward. going in a completely oh, different. I I know I know, but you're moving in a completely like unearth you know, uh, area right. And so I don't know I don't know if animation tells that story. If As Clone well, Wars and Rebels could tell us, I know, story, you I know, know, I know, I know, I know. I and I, I'm not saying I disagree with you. I'm yeah. just saying, like right now, they have they have definitely committed themselves, and I don't understand why people can't see this. Like I, all these, you know, like and we talk about a lot here on the channel, but I mean, like this idea that you know the that the sequels are going to go away, right? For example, yeah, right? I know, right? Like that's not going to happen. Like, and I don't understand why they can't see that. That's what Lucasfilm is doing is filling in the gap. Because you got thirty some odd years worth of stuff there, so we're gonna see the rise of Thrawn. We're gonna see the Thrawn War, and then we're gonna see the birth of the First Order. It's all right there, but it's gonna take time, right? And they've said that that's what they're gonna build up to is is that these all these shows are gonna build up to one big event, right? And so I, I just don't understand why people don't like look at it logically like where they would go off on some tangent and go oh no where they're going to undo the sequels and they're going to do and we're going to go off on this totally different timeline and it's like that's just that just doesn't even make any sense at this point you know like like, even the the guy you did you notice like look i i get it people who like me are going to say i won that debate and everybody who likes jeremy is going to say that jeremy won that debate right and i i get it okay uh, and and so it is what it is. But but did you notice that when I brought up actual Star Wars stuff beyond the debates of like you know geeks and gamers and what they represent and all that stuff? But when we talk Star Wars, did you notice not even he defended all those Doomcock uh, uh, theories and all that stuff? You know about you know the sequel trilogy and you know this person and that person. Even Jeremy didn't. And I've noticed some of his content lately. Like he's he has distanced himself from from those like crazy notions. You know. Hey, you know, so I'm going to skip out real quick, man. I'll see you next time. Great meeting all you guys. Yeah. All right, buddy. See you, William. Good, good, good seeing you, William. See you, William. See ya. All right. 
I mean, that's my whole thing, though, because like this whole thing of people like hating the sequel trilogy and wishing them not to be canon. This is the same thing I've heard from the prequels. And then, mm -hmm. like I, as I said, the, when the Clone Wars and Rebels came out, people started to get more appreciation. Stuff was able to be fleshed out. Things started to make more sense. So I feel like if they did do like a sequel animated series that focuses on the events with Ray, Finn, and Poe and the other people after the Rise of Skywalker, and they're able to you know, have more time to like make things make sense that people didn't like in the sequel trilogy and expand on stuff that people wasn't really sure about in the sequel trilogy. I think people would warm up to that, you know, warm up to the stuff that happened before, you know? Yeah. Well, well to here's be my two. I'm sorry. I have to say this. I don't want to come out negative here, but I, I have to put this down here. And I want you to understand what I'm trying, what I'm going to try to say here, Enosh, because you, you want people to be honest. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. The the gentleman above me. That's Dial. The problem. Dial. <laughs> Dial. Okay. Yeah. The problem that they've made, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, that, and this is the problem that I I struggle with. Um, is that they made a huge mistake when they were taking these movies. They should have kept JJ on board to do all three of those movies. And they should have made a direction where it was going to go. And then, after they were done, they could have filmed in the guess what happened before that. And then that probably would have gotten people to understand and move. Um, what was the word you guys were going to use in this way? In this uh, way, uh, you were just saying it, DL. Um, getting people to oh, get people to, 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 to warm to up. You warm up and understand more the right. Or but eight that didn't make ruins sense. all that. Because I, I, I watched it three times. I like it bits and pieces, but it throws out the whole thing that I don't understand where the whole where that whole trilogy was supposed to go. And then we all saw episode nine. We saw what happened there, but that raises more questions. To me, it does. And I'm not going to get answers. I moved on. But That's I want something new. I don't mind getting the guests filled in right now. That's great, because this is like right after episode six. I'm excited for that. I gave Mandalorian a chance for that. I love that. We got a whole lot more stuff coming out of that one that I ever saw in, in the movies, period. We got a Kree Dragon. We got new creatures showing up. We, we got, what, a Dark Saber that shows about out of nowhere? I mean, that, there's all kinds of crazy stuff just coming out of, you know, out of imagination right now. Well, the Dark Sea Rose actually already existed prior to the Mandalorian. I know, but no one's seen it during the time Luke. What Luke, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. No one knew what happened to it until now. Yeah, and I, so, that's why I'm finding what the Mandalorian started is starting up to do. It's picking up some other pieces and it's putting them into play to the bigger event, like the lab we saw. We know what's that all about, and I gotta say, I grew to understand where this is gonna go. So, um, you know. But I want to move forward because I hear they're still going to do another three movies. Okay, but let's do something new with that whole new story, whole new characters. Give us something we haven't seen before that sh what Star Wars is. Please. Look, I'm, I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for that, fun. too. I'm all I'm all for that, too, and wanting to see something new and everything. Um, I think I think the only the only the only concern that's there right now, to be quite honest with you, is. People, people say they want something new, but then I think one of the problems that has been, especially recently, is is the second that they're that they're given something new, they go, well, but not that. I can understand That's that, okay. but I'm very easy to forward, please. Not, <laughs> you, you want to move forward, but it's like you still, you still, we still crying and weeping at Luke Skywalker <laughs> yeah. taking down these things. So it's like oh, yeah. nostalgia still plays a factor to Star Wars to a certain extent, even if people want to move on. And I'm just saying, it's like I know people are just, I know people, I understand people's criticism oh, yeah. of the sequels that they did stuff that that was, you know, that people didn't like, stuff didn't make sense. But I'm saying this is the stuff. That was that people were complaining about with the prequels. A lot of people saying that stuff was un unredeemable. Stuff didn't make sense. It exactly. ruined the lore of the original. The same argument could be done with the sequels. The and sequel like, kids mm -hmm. will grow up as well. Oh yeah, the right. sequel quick kids will grow up as well. And what you'll see is is in the next fifteen years or so, there'll be a resurgence 
in in those as well as far as what people like and stuff and then all of a sudden you'll see probably a um kind of a backing off of this like that it's so evil you know and bad and you know and um i th i think I, th I think eventually people will just get around like their star wars will always be controversial okay mm -hmm. like like yeah. i i've just i've just gotten to realize this in fact i was just uh i just messaged somebody just a few minutes ago and i just i joked with them and i said you know i said the the two things that i love star wars and superman couldn't be more controversial if they tried right i mean like nobody knows what they want from either one everybody oh, says yeah. they do but the second that they're given something that's a little bit different than what they deem is the classic version of whatever that should be they they freak out right and that could be said for any fandom yeah oh, yeah yeah and and so i just i don't know i i i just hope that my thing is, is i just i just hope that people just stop acting like everything is getting destroyed because everything uh, is not getting destroyed just because they're do they uh, do something a little different or take it in a different direction or or whatever like you know um you know and the, and that and that we stop that we stop um what's the word i want to look uh exaggerating everything oh uh, yeah i mean if you did that you know you'll take away from mike zero and uh doomcock's content you know? <laughs> for sure that that that's very very true that's very very true um, right I, Which I, got, I got in trouble for making fun of Mike Zero tonight, too. So, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I was laughing at the one two cents on nonsense when uh, you're doing Doomcock. I was just laughing because I'm like, where are they getting these sources? You know, like, come on. The... Oof. I know. It's... If you guys want something interesting, Bioware did an online MMO, it's still going on. I probably, I'm sure some of you have heard of it, but Star Wars The Old Republic. They threw something in Star oh. Wars that no one, not even me, could come up with. It's called the Eternal Empire. You learn what that expansion was all about, what these characters did, who the villain was, where it plays into the rest of the whole story, what that thing was, and how it goes to Knights of the Old Republic. That whole thing. That's a great story. Yeah, that game was I great. will not deny that. I mean, I love what they did there. And then... Because of that, that really kept me into Star Wars, even though I don't care who, what others say. That, you know, <laughs> the game, the story, the hard work that was put into it, you know, the same, that's what I got from 4, 5, and 6, 1, 2, and 3. Mm -hmm. And I love episode 7 because I like where I feel that where things are going to go from here. Mm -hmm. 8 and then 9. Especially. Hey, we got, to see, we got to see Palpatine back in a weird way. Yeah, but hey, he was evil. <laughs> yeah. well, it's like, let me let me ask you this, um, Ma Master, okay. Je Master Jedi. So, like, okay. say I. So, like, if if they had, if you had, like, I'm not saying this for sure, this will happen, but like, say you had like Dave Filoni take, you know, you know the the lore of the sequels and made something, did something with that. He was the one writing and overhelming what ha happens with those characters. Do you still think it's not redeemable at that point? Even if they had someone like Dave Filoni reached working these characters, I'm going to give him a chance because I loved what he did. I did not see clone. I did not see uh, what was that TV show? The 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 Clone Wars. Yeah, Clone Wars. Right. Yeah. I did not see that, but I saw some of Rebel, so I know he doesn't work with that, and I appreciate what he was doing there. He also worked with Resistance. Saw, he did, he did the Resistance or no? He did, yes. The okay. two season resistance resistance series. Yes, I loved what he did in there. That some of those parts are really cool. Um, and I've seen already what he was doing with Mandalorian season one and two. I love yeah, that. Daniel. I mean, I, I'm giving him a chance already. I mean, he's giving me surprises, little gems. I, I showed up for a nerd report every time an, an episode came out, and I would just talk a little bit because they had to be limited. But you can tell I was excited just to talk about a little bit each time something came out. And season two, I'm sorry, was the best season we've gotten so far. I didn't expect that, but wow. I mean, the surprises, um, everything. So, hey, we're going to be getting some cool stuff coming in. Different characters, <laughs> what their story's going to go to, then where it leads up to episode seven. 
Yeah. So I mean, and that's we're going to get all this. It's all, it's all going to lead in and, yeah. and it's just a matter of time and, you know, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, look, I just love star Wars. I just want to see good star Wars stories and it doesn't all have to necessarily be my, um, the, the story that I think it should be, you know, or depict the characters the way that I think that they, they should be. Hey, Quan, you have been, uh, uh, pretty quiet since you came in. I know we, we brought you in. Uh, was there something uh, real quick before we go out to the, tonight that, uh, that you had in particular that, that you wanted to talk about? Oh, uh, so basically I just wanted to come in planning to talk about like the character. If you just don't know about the Batman who laugh. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, like, I don't such know a about cool that. character. Like the design is all oh, that's so cool. I yeah, don't know so, how he sees. Yeah, like that's so like yeah, that's something I always wanted. Like I've got the figure. Oh. I've got the figure. It's a oh, nice. wait a minute. Was he the one? Hold on. Okay. You should pull up a picture. Uh, I'm getting something. Yeah. I'll, he I'll, was... pull yeah, I'll pull up a picture. Okay, th there was something I've seen recently. I think it was on Young Justice, or it was sometime in the future, and they have someone in prison. It looks like Batman, but it looks like the lower half was like a Joker smile. Like he was laughing, he was sinister, he was evil. That's yeah. a smiling Joker? Well, it's the Batman who laughs. It's it's a it's a um it's an alternate universe. Somewhere. It's a, it's an alternate universe Batman. Here, I'm, I'm pulling up a picture here, right? Yeah, I'm they trying, kept throwing him in Young Justice for I'm some trying, reason. I'm trying to find like, the best picture to... Uh, it's there's, uh, there's basically so Batman and Joker combined. Yeah, it's it's oh, basically dear. basically it's Batman from another, um, another universe. And what happened in that universe was Batman finally broke down. Like, he, he was fighting uh, 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 Joker. He killed Joker. But the problem was, was the Joker had this fail-safe where uh uh if batman ever broke down and actually killed joker that uh this toxin goes off and it infects batman it's like the arkham knight game yep and basically turns him into Ooh. into another version of joker but here's the scary thing about this joker is that this joker has all the smarts of batman <sighs> yeah so oh, no. so so this joker that's what started the uh what did they call it the the dark or was it the, the dark knight metal and then dark, like well, dark knight metal but it was also like the dark universe uh multiverse oh, you mean, thing yes so so what this batman does is is this batman decides uh cuz he's the batman who laughs he decides that not only first of all he takes over the entire uh uh world that he's on he defeats everybody cuz remember batman has a contingency plan for every superhero so he knows how to defeat everybody oh yeah right and so he does that and then he decides you know what i'm gonna go i'm gonna take over the entire multiverse and he starts going multiverse to multiverse uh world and uh and collecting the evil batman versions from all of those worlds from you know from whatever and basically trying to bring that to uh to the main earth to take on the main Batman. And uh, that it's a crazy story. And I know that they, they've gone in a whole lot. I, I don't know that much about like the, um, the, uh, the metal uh, versions. I know that I know that because there's a whole other story now, right? With the, yeah, with the death metal. And they uh, like, because of him, they kickstart the future state storyline with DC. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, that that the the metal thing looks weird like because i got the figures on uh pre-order like superman and stuff with uh with long hair looking like danzig oh, and, nice and uh and then uh batman's got it comes they, they come with a guitar like do they, what's the what's the inspiration for that because you obviously know more about this so i haven't read that all that story so, so just, what, what it, can you tell us about that it just basically because it's like death metal, so you know, like death metal is some kind of like a pop culture music genre. Yeah. Where they play rock music, so yeah, that's why there's that's the guitar inspiration. Okay. Do I mean do they yeah. actually does the music like play a part or a role in? That? No, it's just it's just uh kind of like a marketing thing for the comic series. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I just noticed that the figure, like the Batman figure, comes with a guitar. I was oh, like, okay. well, I got to get it for that alone. I mean, as a musician, I got to have a Batman that has, you know, guitar. I got a ton of other Batman figures, you know, so. 
Is there an oh. animated series on this? Oh, like, oh, uh, no. Not People yet. were demanding awesome. to make one. That would be um, awesome. There's going to make a sequel about Batman the Animated Series. I hear about that. Yeah, I heard about that, but they already made Batman Beyond, so I don't know why they're... Can someone explain this? They made Batman Beyond already. Like, what What are they trying to do with the animated series? Like, they're going to redo the whole thing? Um, I think they're no, going to put on HBO. Think- yeah, it's just a continuation. It's just a continuation of. Uh, oh, okay, of okay. Yeah, it's 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 not undoing. Uh, um, okay, I know. was afraid of that. Ugh, I didn't want yeah, them no. to. No, no. I love um, the animated series. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You guys are talking about toys and stuff. Um, Enosh, I know you're a big collector. I saw something at Walmart that will pique your interest. Um, in the aisle. For me, where they kept, where they keep the Transformers and all these other figurines on the other side, is Hot Wheels and model cars or whatever. They have these little, um, they have the set. Each of them is a different Batmobile with a little figure of Batman inside of it, and it's like ten bucks. I don't remember what the brand was, but it was Batman versus Superman. There was animated series, Adam West, Batman, and eighty nine Batman. I saw all four at my Walmart. So, if anyone's looking into collecting one of the movie vehicle cars, you heard this from me. It's out right now. I and they it. look really good. They really do. I saw the one from 89. It looks really, really good. So, let's keep that as a note. <laughs> oh, and Enosh? So, uh, so I, so, uh, based on Master Jedi, you are a collector and you're on, and, and I noticed you're wearing a flash ho- hoodie and a flash, uh, hat. Uh, do you want to do like a flash figure show off? Like, show off your best flash figure that you have right now? Ooh, my best flash figure that I have right now. Do you have any new ones? Because I saw, I know you just showed the the cartoon one, but did they release the ones from the uh, CW verse? Uh, well, yeah, that I mean they've long had those. Uh, I, mean, I haven't seen one in stores. So, so, I wanted to see Gus and Grants. <laughs> so, so I just got a new one. I don't know if it's my. It's not. It's a. It's a new one, but it's not my best one. Uh, and I've got that in the room. I can go run and grab that real quick because that one just came in. I really like this one. Oh, nice. nice. That's, That's nice. nice. That's that the McFarlane neat. one. They just released the Injustice one, and the only thing I don't like about him, he kind of looks a little stocky. Okay. Um, but I'll show him to you. Uh, but this one, yeah, this is still in the package, and uh, I've got the uh, him and uh, Red Death combo one as well. Nice. So he did have the full yellow boots. This is my uh, best Flash figure right here from uh, Justice League himself. Oh yeah. Can you get oh, some yeah, light yeah. on it? Uh no, I, not I, really. It's, it's it's like eighty bucks. It's just made for figures where you can easily move it, right? You know? Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. I've uh, seen his figure. I've seen some of them. Give me just a second. I'll be right one. back. I'll be right back. Speaking of the Flash, I was a big fan of the CW show. I'm still going on with the series, but I have to be honest with you guys. The worst thing they ever done to that actor was putting was getting that horrible suit they gave him. That came out of the ring. She's wearing a, a fucking onesie. I'm sorry. Any man who would wear that would be uncomfortable in 10 seconds. Yeah, that's one of the many bad decisions. Of this. Yeah, I mean, just I can't stand him wearing that suit anymore. It drives me nuts. I'm like, bring back the old one from season five. You had the yellow belt around the wrist. It was a jacket with some gloves and some pants there. You know, that was what you guys were doing. That was a better look for the dude. But bring that back. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> Get rid of the onesie. <laughs> dude, I've been I've been I've been praying for um Stephen Amell to grow the, the proper goatee and he still refused to do oh, so. Nice. So I would not Ooh. I would not give my goatee. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what I'm talking about. Wow, look Ooh, at that. that. Oh, he's a little bit of a I like the way he looks. That's, oh, a, that's a really nice looking flash. Is that from the video game? Yeah. It looks yeah. Like a, uh, I was about to say, he looks exactly like it. Yeah. If, they, if, they can, if they can take this suit that you see right here 
and give that to the one on CW, I wouldn't complain. Because that actually looks like a soup, but it, you know, you could tell there's, it's not an all one suit. It, it, it no. looks, it looks very, it looks actually a lot like that suit. It looks yeah, a but lot it's more updated though. I mean, you can tell like there's pieces you got to, you know, it's all separate, like the pants and the, the shirt is all separate, you know, the gloves and the boots, you know, if you really look the way they deal to detail the figure, hmm. you know, and of course the cow, you know, that comes with a thing, but well, I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all one piece. It's all one piece. It's all oh, one it piece is. tunic. Yeah. It's all one piece tunic. Oh, but, that's right. He does a whole suit ring thing. So I forgot. Yeah, so I, so I don't I don't I don't know. Um, I know a lot of people have griped and complained about this figure because of uh, it because of how stocky it is, but literally people gripe and complain about every figure that comes out. <laughs> I'm sorry, Hellblazer. People, people I gripe the... and complain about everything anyway, so you know. I'm sorry, well, Hellblazer. Anyway, um, what I mean, <laughs> Hellblazer, was the one before Noah gave him the ring. Mm-hmm. It was when she was showing up now and again, but he was wearing the latest of the older trend. How it, how it was all in pieces before she gave him the ring. That's who was one I'm talking about. It was a brighter red. The the look was coming together much better, but around the waist on the jacket, you could tell there was like a yellow lightning thing going on. That's what I'm talking about. I think that was like season four when he was going against uh, the thinker. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the one. That was my favorite one. one. The one where like he's got like all the neck room in. Okay. I hate I, that one. I hate that because it doesn't I make like any chin guard. What? Because what, what I? Well, no, no, no. Wait a second. Hold on. Chin guard or no chin guard? Wh- which chin guard are you talking about? Because I like he that one. It. I like the one with the chin guard. But he had I, it all the way till he got the new. Uh, I don't know if it, if they kept it with when he got the ring, his own ring. I don't know, cause that, cause the one season where they cut it off here and you see his neck, but and and like when he moves, it like it opens up a little bit because it's all loose. Like that one doesn't mean that one's weird. That one's weird because like if he's running, wouldn't it fill up with air? Like it would it would actually be like anti aerodynamic. It would like rip his it would rip his his face mask right off. But I don't know. I don't the know. new one right now in the show this current season, it's. This was actually better. I hear you. Yeah. I agree. So it's it's an improvement somewhere. Yeah. Well, hey guys, uh, we got we got through. We're at the four hour and twenty three minute mark. Jeez, that's a long um, time. Uh, yeah. I I appreciate all you guys coming in on the call in show. I love I love how these things uh, take a life of their own and uh, and and go in different directions. Uh, uh, you know, we can go around real quick if you guys have channels and. Uh, Point people to your channel. Uh, start. We'll start with DL here. You got a channel? Yes, I do. So um, I, uh, my channel is DL Vince. Uh, it's pretty much a channel talking about movies. So if you want to hear discussions about how I feel about movies and a uh, bunch of hot takes, then go ahead and subscribe. You know. Absolutely. Absolutely. So guys, go go check him out. And then uh, anybody else? Uh, Black Ops, you got a channel? Uh, no, I do not. I just uh, casually stroll streams and all, all that. Rock on. How about you, Ryan? Uh, I have a channel, but I don't use this so much time. So most of the time, I think, ah, like, gotcha. Sometimes I hang out with the streams, too. Do gotcha. both. Gotcha. How about you, Tony? Uh, I do. Um, um, my channel is called CoolMoD21. It's just a goofy nickname I came up, came up with. I'm I've got sporadic in my uploads, but you know, check me. I just talk about stuff, you know, whatever's on my mind. If I've got something to say, so, uh, so if you're interested, go check it out. So cool. cool. Uh, Quan, how about you? Uh, so I basically started ch- a channel like a while back, but I made like three videos and I quit. But if you guys want to check it out, you guys can like uh, type in superheroes fandom. That's the channel. Okay, you so okay, so that's you. All right, superheroes fan. Well, hey, welcome as the newest member of the uh, of the channel, man. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Yay! 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 Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. And of course, uh, Jedi Master Wanderer. Uh, I, I mean, do not. This is not my main channel. I'm not looking for subs. I just use this name because so Enos and 
some of us pals knows who I am. So okay. there you go. All right. All right. I thought you had a, I thought you had a channel. It is, but I'm not keeping that up. I'm that's gotcha. No problem. I, it's, it's not a how do you put it? It, it everyone has a channel to use to use YouTube, but I use it as an account only. You that's know what fine. I mean? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I totally get it. I totally get it. Well, guys, uh, you know what? Thank you guys all for being here tonight. I They're appreciate really all of you. Thank you. Thank you for all your input and your great topics and, and the things we discussed tonight. And thank you to everyone else who was on uh, tonight. You guys are all fantastic and awesome. And, um, Hey man, you guys, you guys make all the, all this worth doing. And so, uh, so you guys bring a smile to my face and every time I see your names pop up in the chats and stuff like that, I go, ah, yeah. Especially after I meet you guys, you know, stuff, but I see you guys in the, in the chat, like when you guys are commenting and everything. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, I love, uh, I love seeing everybody and seeing your comments and, and, uh, it's like, it's like all of us friends just getting together and hanging out. So can I answer the chat uh, just a little bit quick here? I noticed something here. What's that? Uh, OG Steppenwolf. You're talking about the original actor? I mean, there was two that played Eobon Thon. Are we talking about the one that came from the future? Well, Kavanaugh is the best, as far as I'm concerned. Is that the... Is that yeah, the uh, not, that's, that's uh, the original guy. Well, I mean, it depends on how you look at it originally, but he was the guy who played Dr. Wells. He... Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was um, Thon for a little while. He came back as a spirit the previous season. So, in theory, he's still around. He's not dead. I'm expecting him to show up any time right now. Oh, he's talking about Matt. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're talking about the other one, the blonde-haired guy, right? No, 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 no. The one who posts, the one that looks like Dr. Wells? Yeah. That's yeah. the one I'm talking about. No, I was talking about OG just commented. Oh, oh. Oh no! I don't okay, know which yeah. one he's okay, talking no, about. No, he, he was talking. He, yeah, he says I was talking about Matt Lesler. Yeah, um, I just man, I I don't like him. I just I don't enjoy him. Is he the one that's with the blonde hair? Yeah, he was okay, but I like the other one being fun a lot. My more. my he family my family me. likes both. My family likes both, but uh, I um, yeah, I just I prefer Kavanaugh. I I just mm -hmm. really do. I like I like the way he. Uh, um, I, <laughs> which totally go. I didn't even notice this, it. Totally goes against your comment, which I'm not trying to just like go against your comment. But um, I just I I don't I, don't, uh, I didn't I I just prefer Kavanaugh. I I like the way he plays him. I just feel like he gets yeah. in. Uh, I I feel like he gets in Barry's head more. Um, and and is more. I I feel I feel like uh Matt is more of a of of a uh of a, a side villain well no i mean he's 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 reverse flash but he's the reverse flash for like legends like for other characters not mm -hmm. barry when i think of like barry's uh nemesis that's uh kavanaugh because kavanaugh gets in his head the fact that he took on his the the look of his uh mentor and got you know and like messed with him for forever man that's that's good stuff that's good stuff right there. But. Like all the recent reverse flash uh, appearance are all Tom Cavanaugh because I think like they see the fans demand so, so. Yeah. Um and, you know, and this is fine. I mean, you know, uh Hellblazer, that's that's I fine. Do I mean, too. Grant I like Gustin, Grant Gustin, Gustin. I like Grant Gustin myself. I I grew more into learning the more of the flash with this guy. He grew on me, you know. Uh, but, but I mean, but I mean too, in all fairness, he's had six seasons. To do that, yeah, seven now. Shit. Yeah, well, six seasons saying. of messing up the timeline over and, and over, over and over and over. And like, over we all, and we over. all love the Flash. Look, Landon's favorite character is the Flash. We all love the Flash here in in this house. And uh, and I will just say, like for a while, we had a real funny, like it was just a running joke that was like, "Here's every episode of the Flash." Um, hey guys. We got I got to face this villain, but I got to do it by myself. I know we have a whole team of people, but I've got to do it by myself. No, Barry, you need to work together as a team. That's what we're all here for. Barry, I love you, and we're Team Flash. No, I've got to do it by myself. I'll tell you what, guys. All right, I'll do it with you. Psych! So I'm going to do it by myself. Oh, I screwed the whole thing up, and I messed That's everything so up, and it's all shot to hell, and I come back, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, guys, I learned my lesson. 
I shouldn't have gone up on my own and done Bad that. I, sh- I should have. I should have. I should have used. I should have. Like all episodes. of us. All of us should have worked together this Every whole time. Of- but I. But I thought that I had to do it on my own because I just feel so responsible for Sound everybody like and everything. Dread, so. And it's like, <laughs> hey, hey, guys. You know what? I tell you what. Let's work together. All right. Let's all work together. Yay! We work together. We <laughs> beat him because we figured out a way to beat the villain. Now in five minutes, when we all work together and we all did it, and now we're all gonna sit around and. Oh, man, didn't we learn our lesson? Yeah, Barry. And you know what, guys? I just want to thank you for sticking with me like that, and I'll never do that again. Awesome. Cut to commercial. Next week, there's a villain. I have to take him out all by myself. Oh, I can't. Leave. It's like, come on. And that, and that is why I am Team Ezra all the way. Fuck Grant Gunn. Me, me too. Oh, I'm also Team Ezra. <laughs> Look, I just, I just want to see just more. Like yeah. I want to see more great. of Ezra Miller, and I will say this: I will say this. <laughs> if they if if they give us, I will say this: if they give us more of Ezra Miller as seen in Justice League, screw that. No, oh. no. Oh. screw oh. that. Thank you. Oh yeah. No, thank you. No, I don't want. You. I don't want bumbling, falling over everybody, unsure of himself, an idiot. Uh, Flash. If oh, you yeah. give me if you give me more of the flash that's heroic and actually stood up to the challenge and yes was a little awkward but worked through that like in Zack Snyder's Justice League, mm-hmm. I'll take that all day. That's the Ezra Miller I want. That's the Ezra Miller I saw that I wanted that more. I'll that take was that a lot all day. better. I'll take that all day. All right, guys. Well, I, I'm going to send you guys out, and I'm going to close out the show. But thank you guys all for being here. Appreciate all of you guys. You guys rock. Thank you all for uh, for what you mean. Uh, to me. All right. All right, guys. We'll see All you. Right. Take care, guys. Yep. Oops. And Oop. and we'll see you, DL. Yep. I will follow you on Twitter and then we'll figure out how to get more streams. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Follow me on Twitter. All right, buddy. All right, guys. Well, hey, that was fun. I hope you guys had fun uh, with that. I always love doing these call-in shows, and it is now 6 in the morning where I am, and we're at the 4-hour, 32-minute mark. <laughs> oh, man, what a night. What a night. All right, guys, uh, I think that's about it. Um, you know what? Just don't forget, we will be giving uh, this bad boy away on Wednesday. Do, 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 do. And, uh, and thank you to everyone, uh, who contributed tonight, uh, just in the chat and with ideas and everyone who came into the show. Thank you guys. And, uh, everyone who gave a super chat and, and, uh, our newest member, uh, just so grateful to all of you guys. I have so much fun with all of you and I appreciate each and every one of you. So remember till next time, don't anybody tell you that your fandom doesn't matter. And, uh, don't tell anybody that their fandom doesn't matter either, but strive to have conversations, even when people want to act weird to you it's worth it and look you're not going to make everybody happy and there's going to be people who question you and there's going to be people who don't like you and there's going to be people who will never defend you or never stand up for you but you know what that's life but you got to know who you are and so uh you just keep being you and uh keep just treat people with respect and as long as you do that there'll always be a place for you here in the poindexter lounge all right, until next time, stay nerdy. We talk about bands, but I still bust the heat. We've been going on for like four hours now, like Zack Snyder's freaking Justice League. Yeah.